just staying <laughs> in Auckland. Uh, Indra, I'm going to start with you. Which one of those is a lie? So I am uh, thinking based on the knowledge of our great friends in Samoa, I would, <laughs> I would go with the number one because they usually don't get their visas rejected by New Zealand unless I totally have not met people who have had it <laughs> because I'm pretty sure they all got their visas and staying back, I'm pretty sure some decided to stay on. In New mm. Zealand. So I'll go with the first one is the lie. First one's a lie. 11 out of 15 visas were rejected. What do you think, Lisa? Um, I think I'm going to go with Indra. You're going to go with Indra. Okay, so I, I did apply, for, and this was one of the first jobs that I did when I moved over to Samoa, and 11 out of 15 visas were rejected initially. They they actually were, and I couldn't believe it. Uh, all visas were approved? Absolutely not. That is the lie. They were not approved at all. Um, and the last time the Samoa men's cricket team toured Auckland, yes, five players didn't return to Samoa. That's why I had so much issues trying to get visas for the Samoan team because the uh, New Zealand embassy were like, we don't trust you. Uh, but anyway, we convinced them we did get uh, most of the players. I think there was only two players that couldn't go, including the wicketkeeper, which was devastating. If there's only one player that you want to be over there, it's your wicketkeeper. Uh, but yeah, uh, the lie was that all visas were approved. Uh, all right, look, that brings us to the end of the show for this week. Uh, a big thank you to my co-host, Indra Singh, the news director of the Fijian Broadcasting Corporation. Thank you, Indra. Thank you, Bobby. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure indeed. And Lisa Osafello, news anchor for Tavuli News in the Solomon Islands. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Bobby. It's, it's good to have... Um, thank you for having me again. Of course. And now I'd like to take a minute to give a massive thank you to Nelly Moa, who has been producing Fresh Off the Field since we started in August last year. Uh, she's helped me build the show to what it is today, and for that I'm very grateful. So thank you, Nelly. Uh, on that note, I'd like to thank and welcome Declan Byrne, who has taken the reins as producer of Fresh Off the Field. Uh, thank you for listening to Fresh Off the Field, the Sporting Pulse of the Pacific on ABC Radio Australia. I will be back next week with two new co-hosts from across the Pacific, talking all things sport in our region. This episode was produced on the lands of the Gadigal people. This program has been funded by the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. It's the most magical time of the year, right? Footy season! This season, you can get your footy live and ad-free on the ABC Listen app. Unbelievable! AFL, NRL, men's, women's. Whatever you fix, we've got you covered. Every goal, try, mark and tackle. Called by ABC Sports expert commentary team. A wonderful goal! Game, set, bingo! 100% pure footy, live and ad-free on the ABC Listen app. This... Good evening, Jesse Thompson with ABC News. Prosecutors have decided not to appeal the sentence given to the man who murdered Melbourne woman Celeste Mano. Zilla Gordon has more. Luay Seiko cyber-stalked 23-year-old Celeste Mano before breaking into her family home and stabbing her to death in November 2020. Seiko was handed a 36-year prison sentence with 30 years non-parole last month. That prompted Miss Mano's supporters and her mother, Aggie Di Mauro, to campaign for Seiko to be given a life sentence instead. But late this afternoon, Victoria's Office of Public Prosecution said it had carefully considered the prospects of appealing the sentence and read details held in thorough submissions from Ms Mano's family, but ultimately decided not to go ahead with an appeal. Australian wine will soon be back on the shelves in China after Beijing lifted tariffs on the product. Political reporter Stephanie Boris has more. The crippling penalties were imposed in 2020 amid a diplomatic stoush between the two countries. Beijing claimed the tariffs were targeting anti-competitive behaviour from the Australian wine industry. But both Labor and the Coalition were always adamant it was an act of political retribution. At the time, Australia was exporting just over $1 billion of wine to China a year. Today, China's government announced it would lift the tariffs on Australian wine, offering a potential lifeline to an industry which has been struggling with low prices and global oversupply. The tariffs will be lifted from tomorrow. 
Tasmanian Senator Tammy Tyrrell has announced she's resigning from the Jackie Lambie Network. She served as the Senator's office manager before being elected to the Senate herself at the 2022 federal election. Senator Tyrrell says she'll now sit as an independent. Jackie has indicated that she's not happy with the way that I've been representing the Jackie Lambie Network. So I've made the tough decision to step aside and let the network shine in its own light, right and me to shine in my own right. A federal inquiry will examine problems in the country's live music industry. Here's Evelyn Manfield. Splendour in the Grass announced yesterday it's cancelled its annual multi-day music festival at Byron Bay with revelations ticket sales weren't as high as they needed to be to cover rising costs of putting on a festival. It sparked further concerns for the future of the live music industry and calls for the federal government to provide funding relief. Now a new federal parliamentary inquiry will look at the sustainability of the industry, career pathways for musicians and audience behaviour. It'll also also invite submissions from stakeholders. The World Health Program has repeated its warnings that famine is imminent in northern Gaza. Israeli attacks have made land deliveries of aid challenging across the territory and health officials say children are becoming malnutritioned at a record pace. Israel denies it is intentionally starving Gazans and has blamed Hamas for commandeering aid. The WFP's Matthew Hollingworth says it's a desperate situation. There is nowhere else in the world where so many people face imminent famine. Here in Gaza City, we're at the epicentre of the crisis here in the Gaza Strip. They themselves are desperately seeking every day the aid that they need to survive. And we are simply not getting enough. Staying overseas and investigations are continuing into what caused a container ship to bring down a major bridge in the US city of Baltimore. Thunmaya Navida reports. Salvage crews and accident investigators are working on the scene at the Patapsco River where the Francis Scott Key Bridge once stood in Baltimore. Chair of the National Transportation Safety Board, Jennifer Homendy, says crews have been assessing the damage. They did a walkthrough of the vessel, including the bridge and the engine room. Divers have recovered the bodies of two workers, but the recovery mission doesn't come without challenges. Sonar scans show the vehicles that contain the remaining four bodies could be encased in concrete and other bridge materials. Divers will only return to the water once the debris has been cleared. And in sporting news, North Melbourne coach Alistair Clarkson has described this week's conciliation talks with former Indigenous players involved in the Hawthorne racism saga as really productive. The sessions at the Human Rights Commission were the first time that Clarkson and Brisbane Lions coach Chris Fagan met with the complainants since allegations regarding their time at Hawthorne were first aired in 2022. Both Clarkson and Fagan deny any wrongdoing. Tomorrow's weather in Melbourne, a cloudy day clearing to a sunny afternoon and a forecast top of 25 degrees. That's the latest from ABC News. So, what makes us Australian? Just be whoever you want to be. And who's the obvious person to ask how that's transforming? Welcome to Broken Hill, Miriam. I'm on a quest to learn what it takes to change and adapt. Occupation. I'm actually an escort. Oh, an influencer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Miriam Margulies, Impossibly Australian. You are changing the world. Starts Tuesday, April 9 on ABC TV and always free, always entertaining on ABC iView. This is the 2024 AFL Premiership season. On your radio. On digital. And the ABC listener. Look for the AFL button. Something big is coming, I know. The Easter feast begins with the most tasty of footy treats. A grand final for the ages. Well, frankly, it seems ages ago now doesn't it? Because the two teams that fought it out for the Premiership Cup in a most memorable decider at the MCG last year haven't got a win between them through five games of the 2024 season. Welcome to Thursday Night Footy on ABC Sport. My name is Quentin Hull. Come with the ride with us here at the Gabba, a fixture which has certainly become a regular across the last 20 years or so. Easter footy kicking off at the Gabba did many moons ago when these two teams played in grand finals at the early part of the millennium. Then went lost as footy north of the Tweed entered a period of irrelevance. But now 
with the Lions back among the contenders. They've earned yet again the right to host the biggest club in the land at the start of the Easter weekend. It's Brisbane versus Collingwood. Grand finalists without a victory. And in a week where all the attention seems to be on anything but the footy, we'll touch on all matters, tasting your fancy as we get into this Easter weekend. If you're on the roads, eyes on the road, ears on the radio, take care take your time we're here to keep you company if you're already somewhere nestled into a restful weekend we'd love to hear from you on 0467 uh, 0437 774 774 that's 0437 774 to get in touch with the team here at the Gabba which I'm pleased to say includes Michael Price to call the action with me, former Port Adelaide coach and captain Matt Primus and the former number one draft pick Jeff White. We're all here in the box. Ain't Bojack's down on the boundary with about 33,000 fans moving in. Pricey, welcome to Easter Thursday footy. We've been lucky enough to do this on a number of occasions to start the Easter weekend, but what a build-in to this one. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing very well, Q. It's buzzing already and a privilege to be here on one of the... This is one of the best nights of footy in this town. Collingwood always bring the crowd. They always bring the noise. And this week they're bringing the pressure as well. The pressure on them, there's pressure on the Lions, there's been pressure on both coaches, there's pressure on the stadium. Oh. <laughs> yes, the the antiquated Gabba. Oh, we see how it holds up. Oh. Dare I mention? And it's it's not a, a flippant mention, but we spend a bit of time here, so we get to know the people who know how the Gabba works. Um, already, Energex has been tending to a few little issues around lights before tonight. I'm just going to put that out there mm. in case things happen. I'm actually putting it out there in the hope that everyone says you're a fool, Holly. What you said the lights weren't any good. Yeah, so then they can. So we get through the night. It's the reverse curse. Um, Jeff White, how are you? I'm, in, in our pregame, we're going to be hearing from Will Ashcroft in just a moment, the injured line. And Jeff, we, welcome. We'll hold our powder about what it's like to be someone who's around the Melbourne Footy Club and who has a young man who's uh, hopefully on the brink of uh, entering Australian football. We'll get to that in a moment. But that's that's your welcome. How are you? I'm good, Q. Uh, and like Pricey, and uh, you introduced Matty, I love this night. It's great. Great, and, and what a spectacle. You know, you summed it up perfect there, Pricey. Issues of the Gabba, <laughs> both clubs are winless in 2024. Uh, I'm really excited about this game, and the, the crowd is, is, you know, it's going to be electric. Can't wait. Uh, Matt Primus knows a thing or two about being around premiership clubs that, weren't able to back up the next year and he also knows a thing or two about getting close and keeping the hunger so you're well versed in the story of these two clubs tonight matt how are you i'm i'm great uh, boys great to see you I love easter thursday nights and uh yeah i'm looking for you know i think everyone's spoken about both these teams what they lacking in you know the ball moving and certain players are down but in the end the footy specifics don't really matter it's the the want and intensity that's what's lacking from both teams because these ball players can all kick, mark and handball exactly like they did last year, but they want to run hard back to defend. They want to put their head over the ball for 120 minutes over two rounds for Brisbane and over three rounds for Collingwood is dropped off significantly, and that's what the coaches are trying to find, and uh, that, that is the hard thing to do, to back up year after year, and that's why we laud the teams that win, you know, Brisbane, three flags, Hawthorne, a generation, you know, four flags, three flags over five or six years. It's amazing to stay at the top, but it's bloody hard to do, and these teams are finding out at the moment it's like that. Uh, to the news, uh, of the teams here, no changes to the originally selected 23s. Kyle Lohman is the sub for Brisbane and Jack Crisp is the sub for Collingwood, which, interestingly enough, sees both teams with 19 of the 23 mm-hmm. men that played at the MCG in the grand final last year. Uh, but it, it's been the talking point of the footy world for the last 48 hours and we'd better start with it. The uh, revelations of the uh, the happenings within AFL football of the illicit drugs code. So uh, there's there's a link here. We're about to hear from a young man who's gone to his his father's club in Will Ashcroft. We'll get to that in a moment. But I just thought we'd start with the story of the week and and something to remind you around the Melbourne Footy Club, something that Jeff is very passionate about and knows very closely. So if you missed uh, Sean Smith speaking on 3OW in the wake of these allegations that were uh, uh, spoken about in Parliament, here's a reminder. Well, I mean, obviously Joel's responsible for himself, but 
if, if, if you create a workplace environment that's toxic um, and you know about it and do nothing about it, it's, it certainly doesn't help. Oh, I think they need to be on top of it. Uh, you know, if they test um, twice a week for it, and I'm pretty sure the players won't be doing it because they won't be playing. Um, but I guess it just boils down to money, I guess. Uh, I, I don't know what the uh, exact answer is, but if, if you know you've got an issue with uh, with cocaine, which is, um, it's right through society. Mm. Uh, it's, it's a horrible drug. If, if my son was 17 right at the moment, I'd be saying, you know, I can't have some footy because just because obviously there's a, a bad culture there. So, you know, they feel need to, to fix that fix that problem ASAP because it's not just the player it affects, it affects family, it affects um, friends, partners, everyone. So that was Sean Smith speaking uh, earlier this week. Who better to get a reaction from than a dad? And a, a dad who is uh, a, a champion of the Melbourne Football Club and has a son who, uh, if all goes well, could have a choice between his dad's footy club or the footy club that uh, he's currently with. I speak about Kalani White, Jeff, uh, your son, who uh, it's been wonderful to see him pop into the box over the years. He's a he's a young man now who seems to have the the footy world at his at his feet. But outside of that, I want to ask Jeff White, the dad, what he feels about when another dad comes out and says that about. 17-year-old boys. Yeah, well, I know Smithy really well. I know Joel quite well as, as well. Um, and, you know, my, my feeling for that is, I, I mean, Clanny and I have chats. We've had chats about that. So it's all about the education sort of process. And Clanny was as shocked as anyone when he heard out about Joel because Joel has always been the one that's always gone to Clanny at training. He's always been the one because of the father, father-son connection. Um, but Clanny, like, no, I'm not going to stop him doing anything that he wants to do. You know, whether it's tennis, basketball, and AFL, that's what he's pursuing. Um, so, but as a dad, it's about having that open com- conversation with Kalani uh, and my other boys as well, you know. So, and it's just it's just relaying that message and talking about it and making the right choices. And, and Kalani has made those choices throughout his, you know, his teenage years already at school. Um, and, you know, one of the things was that there's a few kids at his school that weren't, weren't on the right path and he... He, he removed himself from that. So, um, you know, i always going to have that open conversation with him, I think, is the most important part about it. Um, and, and then support him in his pursuit of playing in the AFL, you know. And you've always been really respectful around your, your boys and, and what the future lays ahead for them. But uh, you were happy enough to chat about it uh, this week. And it just, it just struck me as, as someone who's become a good friend of yours over the years and as a father myself... Whether or not hearing Sean Smith say those things this week, whether it changed your mind, whether you think, well, he's got, if all goes well, a choice to be made, whether he follows the father-son route and plays in number 34 for Melbourne or as a member for the academy, he could stay closer to home. Yep. So do the revelations of the week, do you hearing those things from Sean no. Smith change your mind? No, not at all. Not one bit. Um, and it's, uh, like I said, it goes back to the edge. It's just being open and honest with him. Being open and honest with my kids, uh, and that's, you know, it, it, you know, just making sure that we talk about it. He asks me questions, and I think it's that's really important as a father, son, father, daughter. I know Maddie's got daughters. Just openly talk about it. You know, don't hold back. I think, um, you know, listeners out there, you know, you want to know, you want to have that open communication with, with your, with your, with your kids, and, um, and you know, that's that's the most important thing I try to focus on and when Joel was found you know that obviously this stuff happened uh, over a month ago whatever it was Kleine and I sat down and had a chat about it uh, this week this has all come about we sat down and have a chat about it so just having that open communication but I'm not going to stop him from going to the AFL that's his dream that's what he wants to do and from my my point of view uh, with this stuff that's been in place since 05 uh, you know we've known about it Maddie's known about it all that sort of stuff uh, I think the I, I think I heard that the positive from this is it's really helped you know people if they are struggling you know it, that's what it's been put in place for and I commend the AFL for doing that. And thanks, Jeff. Uh, seems for so many years you've had uh, the twins and Kalani around the box and we never speak about them on air, but I think tonight was the right time. Yeah, and that's fun. And, and, and thanks so much for for doing that. Uh, Matt, 
promise you coached during this period of time since the, the code was in. Mm. Should footy people buy that coaches don't know what's going on? Oh, absolutely. You, you have no idea. It's just the, the player and the doctor and, and that's it. And, uh, yeah, it's a real unique situation because there's probably half the population, it might not be quite half, but want to throw the book at somebody if they get done for drugs and the other half go, well, it's everywhere in society. There has to be leniency of it. And I think that the upsetting thing is the secrecy behind it. So the AFL can say, well, this has always been our policy, but nobody's read the thousand dot points. Should the, the coaches know? Um, no. No, I don't think so. But the, the hardest thing about it, the AFL is... Their number one thing is integrity, isn't it? They, they beat on about that, about everything. Integrity, and, and I think this cuts at the heart of the little bit of the integrity. But how do you... you either got to be black and white with it, which creates its own set of problems, or you have to be pretty loose with it. I'll throw this hypothetical at you. Um, for example, player midfielder A... 150-game player who is a late withdrawal from a hamstring injury, mm. which may be the cover yep. for a positive drugs test. Yep. You've got to then manage him the next week. If you're out there thinking, oh, how do I go with rotations for a guy that's got a hammy? But he might not have had a hammy at all. That's why I ask him. There is the, the professional diligence part of you are responsible. Once they get out on the ground, the coach is responsible. Hey, it's that's difficult. why I'm wondering... The difference between plausible deniability, confidentiality, yep. and also the responsibility you have as a man for your men out there. Absolutely. And the hardest thing is, and why do you know this? And I don't want to come across an old man. When I played, there was never a one-week hammy. You did a hammy, it was three weeks. Yeah. Now there is one, for the last 10 years, there's been one-week hammies. So it just makes you think, hang on, what's going on? So, yeah, it cuts at the integrity and the team ethos, and, and it makes it hard for the doctor. He knows that and then has to tell the high-performance manager and the coach, a lie. So where does that sit in the, you know, he, yeah. he's got to say, yeah, he's, he complained of a hamstring and he's out. So where does that sit with your teamwork and your fabric and all those sorts of things? And uh, it's, a, it's a real grey area. And it's because the AFL weren't honest about this is happening. The same when they had the three strike, uh, the self-reporting. That was allowed, but nobody knew. And then it blew up. And then they were saying, oh, this has always been here. But the, the not being honest with what's going on, that, that's what tears at everybody, the public and the fans and the players and teams. If you've got a thought, 0437 774 774. Collingwood's just entered the arena. Brisbane's not too far away. The bounce is about 10 minutes away. But uh, a chance to just catch up with one of the brightest talents in the game. Will Ashcroft, the number two draft pick, uh, deemed by many the favourite to win the Rising Star until he hurt his knee late last year. I was able to have a chat to him a short time ago and ask about how his recovery's going. Yeah, it's going well. It's obviously a very long process, as you know, and um yeah, it's not always linear. There's ups and downs throughout the process. So, um, but yeah, I'm just trying to uh, yeah, get myself right now. Definitely at the back end, looking forward to starting to build up and, and get ready to play around mid-year. So, uh, yeah, lots to learn from games like tonight. And I can, you know, start my preparation now and, and get ready to go. Mid-year. Okay. Um, have you got a target? Have the doctors, uh, have the physios, have they told you yeah. a, a space to, to look at? Yeah, I'm pretty uh, impatient, so I like to look at a specific date. But they try to say uh, a little, you know, a bit of a spectrum. So you know, a three to four week period where we sort of aim to get back by. So that's why it's sort of put as mid year, maybe potentially a little bit before, maybe a little bit after the buy. Um, just sort of yeah, in that sort of one month period. So as long as, long as I do everything right and I uh, get my my body and my mind ready to go, then um, yeah, I'll be ready by then. I'm glad you mentioned the mind because it's a part of anyone overcoming injury. And then you see what happened to Tom Duday yeah, yeah, yeah. this week. Have you spoken to him? What's the, the reaction been in the club? Yeah, I sent him a message. You know, I want to give him his space. It's obviously a difficult thing to process. But, yeah, the club, as they were for myself and, and Kitty as well, they've, uh, they've been awesome. Uh, and, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll rally around. We'll all rally around him again. Um, yeah, it's, it's obviously devastating for him. But one thing I, I learn off him throughout the process is, you know, have a holistic mindset and, um, don't get too down, have a positive outlook on things and that's something I've tried to adopt and he was so good at that uh, when he was going through his, his last one. So yeah, he'll, he'll definitely bring that when he's back and can't wait to have him back back around the club. So what's different about the Will Ashcroft that stands here today compared to the one that ran out to play some footy that night yeah. against Geelong? Outside of the fact that yeah. your knee's been banged up and repairing since then, yeah. but the holistic thing, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Just appreciate every moment, I think. Last year, I was pretty fortunate to come in round one and play every game up until the injury. And sort of 
potentially just took it a bit for granted and you know the whole process of training throughout the week reviewing the game uh, being around the club with the boys is, is so awesome because that is our job and when that was you know stripped away from me very quickly uh, I, I soon realized you know how much I value just the process and um, and everything that came along with obviously playing on game day but the whole process of being a footballer and I love everything to do with it and that's why I can't wait to get back out there and appreciate it and just be be grateful each week I play and put my best foot forward. A, B, C or D, hardest things of the injury. A, missing out on playing footy in the finals. Yeah. B, realising that Harry Shuzel overtook you at the end <laughs> of last year when you couldn't play for the Rising yeah. Star. Or, or C, all the rehab. Uh, oh, A is probably, yeah, playing finals. That's what you want to do. That's, you know, I was starting to get my mind around, you know, preparing to play in a final series. Brent and I did mine around 18, I think it was. You know, we're pretty, pretty set in, in the finals picture. So, you know, I was starting to probably look ahead a little bit and look forward to cause that's, how you, well, that's why you play the game you want to play you know strong finals football and, and win a premiership with your best mates so that was the hardest bit and that's why I'm uh, don't, don't really mind what round I come back as long as I'm ready I can get a, enough games out so we can um, hopefully make a push into the finals that'll be the ultimate the ultimate goal for anyone and that's why I want to get back and play my best footy Will Ashcroft with me planning a mid-year return from his ACL now around the footy team uh, how close are you to the guys preparing and how close have you been during pre-season and the first couple of weeks which haven't gone to plan on the field yeah it's, it's uh, a difficult one I've got to try and um, you know especially early days you sort of obviously remove you're not training uh, you're not around the boys as much so you're a bit removed which is uh, which is difficult but um, I've just tried to integrate myself more in, in the last or well, the start of the season now that I'm starting to build up and, and get ready to go myself so um, everyone's just really positive. Everyone's, uh, we know the process that uh, is required to win and a big game like this, um, even more so. So, yeah, the boys have just been obviously out of the bias. So everyone's itching, uh, itching to go and uh, looking forward to seeing how they respond. It'll be a uh, good game. What have you noticed watching on in the first couple of games that you've seen the team play? Um... Oh, just I think what we need to get just get back to what we do really well. It's like obviously I'm involved in the midfield group, so we've re- reviewed that heavily around um, some of our key pillars, contested ball, um, and, you, and you can break it right down. We just haven't been haven't been there yet uh, with with what we expect. So yeah, we've got to bring that, especially on big games. The pressure's on. Can I play devil's advocate? Um, it seems that in the big games, I mean the percentages are there. If Lockie Neal doesn't get as much of the ball, they're the games that you're more likely to lose. Do you need some help? Well, yeah, as a midfield group, we uh, we all need to step up. Everyone needs to step up. Um, I'm obviously watching on tonight, but there's a lot of we have a lot of guys rolling through the midfield. Obviously, Lockie's back tonight, which is huge. But we have yeah a lot of guys rolling through there who um, you know they'll take it on themselves to to lift and uh, step up when they're needed in that role. And yeah, I've ultimate faith, and we all have ultimate faith uh, in each other. And yeah, I can't wait to see them all do that tonight. And around the club. <laughs> Interesting, we're here in Brisbane and last week we had the, the Broncos doing the whole... We're not talking about the grand final and I know that yeah. footy in this city is different to footy in other parts of the yeah. AFL world, but, I mean, you guys seem to have embraced the review of, of what happened. It's a new game, you'll never get that opportunity again, but how would you describe the mindset of the guys running into this opposition for the first time since that day? Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely centred around what we can do right now and how we can uh, put our best foot forward session to session and week to week. You can't look too far ahead... Um, yeah, obviously we reviewed that heavily and, and what's come of that is hopefully going to help us this year but you've got to look week to week and yeah, everyone's focus is heavily on round, this round three game and that's a long way away. We don't worry about that until uh, we get down the line but yeah, looking forward to seeing them respond tonight. Well, I'm sure no one more than yourself looking forward to getting back out there again but a lot of footy fans keen to see you return. Uh, thanks for your time, Will and good luck in the next few weeks to get yourself ready. Perfect, thank you. Thanks for having me. So that was a short time ago. Great to have a catch up with one of the young stars of the competition, Will Ashcroft, targeting targeting a mid-season return from his ACL injury. Quentin Hull and Michael Price to call the action with Jeff White and Matt Primus up in the box. Let's get down to Zane Bojack just for a taste of conditions because the houseful sign is up, Zane. Yet again, the black and white army are in town hoping that this premiership defence has got a flicker here at the Gabba against the Lions. How are you doing? I'm going all right, Q, and I tell you what, there's members of the black and white army right next to me, so we could have some interesting um, comments in our <laughs> microphone tonight, can I tell you. Uh, look, the surface is superb. We've had rain all week here in Brisbane, 
But as we know, this Gabba ground, it drains superbly. And I haven't seen uh, any divots in the ground during the warm-up. It looks uh, absolutely uh, beautiful and can't wait for it. It's 24 degrees here. Why wouldn't you want to play a for footy uh, here in Brisbane on Easter Thursday? It's going to be a great game. As you mentioned, great atmosphere. One thing I am a bit worried about, Q, and I want to ask you this because we both played tennis growing up. I always thought if I hit them well in the warm-up, I played poorly in the game. Eric Kipwood hasn't managed to slot one yet. He's hit the post a number of times and he's missed it again to the left-hand side. Is that good news for the Lions? I, I don't think poor practice is ever a good sign. <laughs> Say no, but I get what you're thinking. Yeah, poor old Eric. He hasn't had a, a great time in the in the warm-up. That's one of the talking points. Uh, there's been so much talked about these two teams. Brisbane 02, Collingwood 03. I'm going to start with you, Matt. What to you... What, what what are the stats? What are the the what, what's hunger look like to you in a footy team? Oh, hunger for me for Collingwood. They've, they've been the easy side to transition the ball against, and they were impossible to do that last year. They were the, the best in the competition, and now they're the worst. So that's significant. And teams might be playing a little bit differently, and they've been both these teams have been hunted a bit more. Q, but that just shows you that their team defense is off, and they haven't played. You know the top three teams from last year. They've you know had a bit of a, a tough couple of games, but some easy games that they should have won. And Brizzy are still dominating inside fifties and in their contested ball stuff, but they're getting slaughtered on the ground. So that's the effort and the want. And I think that's what both teams are missing. You only have to talk to their coaches, you know, listen to their coaches. Sorry about from their press conferences about uh, you know, looking for some sparks, some changes, um, those sorts of things. And it's getting pretty close to. Um, especially for Collingwood, who've already played three. You zip and four, your chances of being top four, where it's yeah, you've got to do that to win a flag or have a chance to win one, it's going to be pretty difficult. Well, they're flat out making the finals if they don't win tonight, Collingwood. And I say that from a pure statistical point of view. Yes. I did some numbers in the AFL era, so 1990 onwards. Yep. I looked up all the teams that started 04. There's 47 occurrences. Okay. of teams starting 0-4 in the AFL era. How many of those have made finals? Made finals since then. Uh, two. One. 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 Who was that? Sydney. In 2017, actually started 0-6. Wow. But then won 14 of their next Oh, they what? They got 16. in a row, yeah. Yep. So, of the 47 occurrences, one team has made finals. Wow. Wow. Two have got to ninth. Uh, Melbourne in 1995 started slowly, got to ninth. North Melbourne in 2011 started slowly, got to ninth. But there you go. Yep. If... if if indeed, I mean, and I saw in some of the Melbourne press today, tipsters going all the way towards Brisbane. No, no one tipping Collingwood, which is extraordinary to think it, that they're the is. reigning premier and no one yep. tipped them in the, the nine press yep. that I was, I was reading today. Um, Jeff, I, as a player, when do you, if, if you've had a deep run the previous year, do we just, is it human nature that sometimes it takes a while to kick into gear for the next season well we are we making this up or is the deep run for last year for both of these teams outside of the, the lack of the less preparation but is it real mentally i think that's that we want to know about the headspace yeah it's a bit of the mindset look i, I agree with with maddie on the hunger i looked at some stop plays during the week and i could just notice that some of the collingwood players are sort of a couple of steps off from the stop plays and and a lot of that had to do with darcy cameron and the ruck as well so I think it's a great move that Cox is starting against Oscar McInerney. That's how it started in the grand final. And they started really, really well, Collingwood, in that setup because he's much taller, gets in the way. But I just noticed with some of the stop plays. So for me tonight, it starts with the stop plays. Where's their starting positions? You know, are they, are they leaking off or are they front and centre? You know, so for me tonight, I want to see Collingwood, the numbers around the ball, that's where they get generate their their break they've got so many good players that can you know their day costs and you know all these sorts of players that can break the lines really good that's where it starts for me tonight with Collingwood and I'm tipping them tonight you're tipping the pies yep there's one key what about you Matt uh, I'm tipping Brizzy um, but I think we'll see a better four quarter performance than the pies what we've seen this year but uh, there, there's something a little bit off for them and they might they might turn around tonight but uh, the last three weeks would suggest not I think over the years we've seen the lack of depth in Brisbane's midfield as one of the reasons why they got to finals and didn't progress. Josh Dunkley came yep. to the club last year, was outstanding. But yet yeah, again, the question still remains if Lockie Neal doesn't get a stack of the ball, can Brisbane win the big games? Mm. 
We, I did that stat before the Port yeah. final yeah. last year. 25 possessions or less for Lockie Neal. The percentages of Brisbane win dropped by about 15 to 20%. Mm. He's the guy. And, and, you still, and still don't underestimate the loss of Coleman down back. Such, that's, where they, that's where they generate a lot of their turnovers on the half-back line, and he uses the ball so well. Such a big loss for Brisbane. Yeah, and he wasn't there in that trip to the West last week where, yeah. or two weeks ago. So yeah. Brisbane, having the, the, the bye last week, having been beaten by Fremantle and Carlton, Collingwood, of course, St Kilda, Sydney and Greater Western Sydney getting the better of the Premiers. Uh, thanks for all your texts. We don't have time to get to them now, but keep them coming on 0437 774 774. Let's do Easter footy on ABC Sport. Here's Michael Price for the opening bounce of the grand final rematch. Mason Cox versus Oscar McEnany. Ernie, I'll give that one to McInerney. He'll get a free kick anyway. The umpire's going to bring it back. The big O will take the ball in the centre circles. Immediately lays the big slipper into it. It's a long kick towards 50. In fact, a full forward coming out is Danaher juggling the mark. Dropped it. Picked up by Quainer. Struggles to get a kick out to clear and it's cut off by Zorko. Still inside the centre square. Immediately Brisbane going back into attack. Kicks it to the forward pocket. Can cross Berry. Rode by Rayner. He tries to fend off Moore. Tackled into the ground, holding the ball. Will be a free kick. And the captain bringing it for the Pies. He'll receive that free kick in the left back pocket. Black bandana on with that bleached hair flowing down the back of his shoulders. Darcy Moore in the left back pocket for Collingwood. Long kick to a pack at half back. Cox the target couldn't mark. Rode by Neil of Brisbane. Whistle. Free kick going to Big Mason, who was manhandled in that contest. So Big Cox at left half back for Collingwood. Kicks down the line, presenting my check, got a hand, couldn't mark. To Goey Rose to Collingwood, pumps them inside 50 for the first time, and it's the grand final tormentor again. Bobby Hill marks 20 metres out. Well, it's become the norm against Brisbane, hasn't it? Yeah, that pickup from Jordan Degoe, that lift the side clean, got it on his boot straight away. But I reckon with Quayna down back, they've got to be, they've got to protect the ball. Just don't kick it out willy nilly because Brisbane's going to set up the wall. Tell you what, two number twenty threes at either end could light us up tonight. His hair could light up tonight. We might need it at the Gabba. Bobby Hill kicks the opening goal. Collingwood on the board first. We've travelled two minutes. Really good start by Darcy Moore, who's been questioned with his form and his, uh, his effort. Well, that effort there on that tackle was outstanding, and that started their ball movement. A bit long down line from Cox, but a great ground ball from Dugowie. And then, unfortunately, there's three Brizzy guys behind the ball, but they both they all let uh, the Collingwood forward get in front of him and a quick kick come out and, and play to the guy who got in behind him. Yeah, I... And it's not just about players trying to get an early authority here at the Gabba. Oh, <laughs> Listen to him. This is not the MCG, folks. <laughs> and this is not the last quarter either. <laughs> they realise that they've had three weeks falling further and further behind the chase pack. So we're back into the middle, and the big Markman will go at it yet again. Cox versus McInerney. McInerney gets this one down, but immediately Finn McRae leaps onto the ball, gets it onto the left foot. It's a scrubby kick. Lipinski brings it to ground. McLuggage goes in, tackled to the ground. Umpire's going to come in and ball it up. Still in the centre square, but just forward of the centre circles. The Collingwood are kicking to the right as we're looking at it. The City end, they won the toss. Cox with a big left-handed spike towards half forward. It's volleyballed back towards the stoppage contest. On the deck, uh, Dunkley picks up for Brisbane. Farms out a hand pass to Zorka. Rush kick towards half forward. Great work from Frampton in front of Danaher to win the ball for Collingwood. Kicks it towards half forward. Meyer check marks a kick and a half from goal. Meyer check plays on with his right boot, kicks Collingwood into attack, and Lester going to ground at the back. Read the drop brilliantly, the veteran Brisbane defender, to mark on the last line of defence. He's called to play on, kicks across the face of goal to Jared Berry. Marks and plays on with a kick to the wing. He's got Cameron in space. That's Charlie of Brisbane. Very different size to the one playing for Collingwood. He kicks down the line, marked on the wing by Hipwood. He goes push forward, he's on, he's spare. Yeah. Just forward of the wing is Eric Hipwood, who will kick it around the boundary line, and Dunkley takes the grab, 55 out at right half forward, and they've gone around the boundary. McCluggage to the next target, he's nudged off the 
chip pass by Dacos of the Nick variety and then deliberate out of bounds against I don't think that was um, Darcy Nikos it might have been Darcy Moore yeah Darcy, Darcy Moore. Moore tapped it out of bounds deliberately so it means that Jared Berry gets the free kick but it looked like it was in an actual contest but uh, Jared Berry who will be fortunately remembered on grand final day for a couple of 50 metre penalties that he gave away doesn't go for goal here kicks to the top of the goal mouth and that can only first hand put it mark but Rayner Rhodes and snaps over his shoulder to kick the answering goal for Brisbane before the committee will double check hold on there's hit the post school review we're touched That looks like it's okay. Flirted a little with the in right the we upright. Is not touched, and there's a gap between the ball and the post at all times. Oh, yeah, it's a goal. Goal piece, five and a half play. Poor boy. Uh, um, I think it was Cox that was down there. Just needed to spoil it a bit harder, didn't he? Yeah, well, Cox had to stay on the mark. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the big O was in the goal square. The big O came goal. back, yeah, yeah. That was, yeah. Uh, yeah, poor boy Cox had plenty of time to get down there, but... Both teams are moving the ball freely and um, look pretty dangerous. Brizzy are dominating their inside 50s, but they're both playing their own style of play at the moment. The Pies aren't doing anything different from what they did last year. They're trying to get numbers up and race you out the back, and, uh, and Brizzy is certainly playing a contested style deep inside 50, trying to pin you in. There's a great intercept mark there from Leicester down back. Beautifully read. So back into the middle, the crowd buzzing, a goal apiece, six minutes gone to the first term, live footy here on an Easter Thursday night on ABC Sport. The Brisbane Lions crowd getting behind their team as well, Collingwood with the ascendancy in the crowd early. As the umpire steadies. Darcy Cameron in the ruck now against the big O. Call that one a draw as it falls to the feet of Lockie Neal. Big dummy. He goes around onto the right foot, kicks it long inside 50. Danaher with a two-on-one. Darcy Moore flying over the top. Big fist outside the arc of 50, picked up by Archie. He's dealt with over the boundary. There'll be a throw in at right half forward for the Brisbane Lions under uh, in attack yet again. Josh Dacos making a tackle there right near where he made the offensive player of the year back in 2020 when he kicked goal of the year from that half forward flank against Sydney. Boundary throwing at right half forward for Brisbane. A goal apiece early on at the Gabba. Dunkley's underneath the stoppage but can't burst through. We'll do it again. Quentin Holt, Michael Price, Jeff White, Matt Primus and Zane Bojack, your company, to start the Easter weekend on ABC Sport from the stoppage. Chance. Oh, Dacos had a fumble. Stolen by Neil. Neil has a shot on goal from the pocket but misses to the near side from 40 metres out. It gives Brisbane the lead. Lions 1-1-7, Pies 1 straight 6. That's a set play from the from Brisbane. They, they did it in the grand final, whereas it, just on that 50-metre arc, Oski punches it out. Oh, Nick Dacos, very dangerous kick. He went straight up the middle, but to go, he made it look good. Fended off a couple, gave it to Lipinski. The handball back into Cox. Back to Dugowie who kept running. A speculating, looping handball inside 50. Cut off by Stasevich for the Lions. His handball to Zorko. Now back to Leicester. Now to Jasper Fletcher. The youngster confronted. He retreats the handball at the feet of Zorko. Puts him under pressure on the arc. Picked up by Stasevich. Handball to Dunkley. Dunkley off a step to the wing. Big pack. Brought to ground by McInerney. At the front of the pack, Schultz couldn't pick it up. Nick Dacos in there for Collingwood. He does. Farms out the handball to Pendlebury. Onto the logo. His kick into the corridor. Cut off by Archie for Brisbane. Wants to go quickly. Archie drives a right foot drop. Part the full forward. Two on two. And it hit the chest of Jeremy Howe. And somehow he marked it for Collingwood. More good luck than good management. But very good reflexes. Chips at the half. Back Lipinski marks. Plays on with a short chip to Mitchell. In game 200, Tom Mitchell kicks Collingwood to full forward. Elliott the target. Out the back. Hill a chance. Jack Payne though there for Brisbane to rush it through. And just the boundary side of the pine post. Boundary throwing to take place in the left forward pocket for Collingwood. Right back pocket for Brisbane. Lions 117. Magpies 1 straight 6. Nine minutes played on ABC Sport. Throw in, left forward pocket for Collingwood. Cameron gets it down. Loose handball from Brisbane. Mitchell off the deck, gives it to Elliott. He scrubs a kick a half a metre forward. Picked up by Mason Cox. Tries to kick the miracle goal over his head. It tumbles through. 
for one behind. 1-1-7 one, one, apiece, nine minutes gone, first term. And short inbound from Zorko. Fletcher is the man in the left back pocket to take the mark. Kicks it back to the man who gave it to him. Zorko runs forward, marks it left half back, D50. Kicks Brisbane towards the wing. Andrews is there in front of the pack to mark comfortably in front of Quainel. So the co-captain and reigning best and fairest. Andrews with a short pass to Cameron. And Charlie's a long way from home. Or oh, kicks in field and misses. To Goey on the turnover, picks up for Collingwood. Oh. He hits it off the instep, kicking to a vacant forward 50. Met by Myatek, dragged off the ball. Did he have it? Yep, play on. Picked up by Stasevich of Brisbane, who boots it clear from the right back pocket to right half back. Archie presents to Mark. Plays on quickly, hits the lead of Rayner. Marks on his chest on the outer wing. Well, in front of Josh Dacos, he tried to go inboard. Cut off by McCreary, who shrugs off a tackler in Archie. Handball to Nick Dacos. Over to his brother Josh. He wheels around onto the right foot. Kicks it inboard, looking for Hill. Cut off by Lester, who's on the ball. Hill on top of him. Umpire circling and says no. We'll ball it up 35 metres out directly in front of the Collingwood goal. Been the issue from the Pies just there. They're not about able to connect when they go inside 50. Plenty of looks so far, though. That pressure's good. Cameron actually volleyed the ball with his boot out of the ruck contest. Ricochets to the pocket. Pendlebury has it. He's tackled. Just gets it to his boot. No effect on the kick. Meyercheck applies a tackle to lock it in. The Pies attacking 50. Yeah, Good work can... to ensure no exit for Fletcher. Ball up. Sorry, Q. If they can just tidy up that when they turn it over, mm. if they tidy it up, their pressure's spot on at the moment from Collingwood. Jeff White with you on ABC Sport. Cameron and McInerney tangle. Tap boundary side. McKin uh, McCreary with a hand pass to Elliott. And Elliott runs into an open goal and kicks. Uh, I assume a goal, but we'll get it checked again. Now, Bo McCreary running through that contest found Jamie Elliott attacking side of it in the pocket. I didn't see anything wrong with it to the naked eye. Post to the goal post. It was just the angle that came through. I think it was... Because it, it, it went to the over the goal ump's head very quickly and to the far right upright, he wants it checked to see if it hit the post. Well, the soft calls a goal. Looking at these angles, we can see there is no spike on edge as the ball passes the post. Decision on the scoreboard. That'll be a goal to Jamie Elliott and Collingwood. Take the lead. 11 and a half minutes played. The first term, it's 2 1 13 to 1 1 7. The thing I like about that stop play inside their forward 50, 50 Matty, that McCreary, they had Elliott, two guys on the run. All the Brisbane guys were flat footed. They were, weren't they? So yeah. they had movement on the ball. They had speed on the ball inside forward 50, which is really, it was a great tap from Darcy Cameron. It was nice and soft. It was in the right position, but they had movement. Yeah, the, the, the movement creates nervous defenders, doesn't it? Especially if they're flat-footed. And, geez, to go, he's had a start. Five touches early, three inside 50s. Looks really attacking when he's got the ball in his hand. Ten tackles to five, Collingwood. They'd love that in the Collingwood coaching panel. Criticism of their well, defensive side of their game over the last couple of weeks. Back into the middle, Darcy Cameron in there for Collingwood. And we've got Darcy Fort has replaced McInerney in the ruck for Brisbane. Umpire bangs it down in the middle of the gather. Nice bounce too. This one for Darcy Fort. It's cut off by McRae for Collingwood. A sky ball that ends up just past centre wing. Going back with the flight, Jasper Fletcher. The son of Adrian just chips it back towards the boundary line. Answorth, long down the line, misdirected Jeremy Howe. Just presented, took the mark over Zach Bailey. He's 70 metres from his own defensive goal. And he just takes his time, points... Babe Bruce style towards the middle of the ground. Dangerous kick. It was cut off and read beautifully there by Cal Archie. Now he looks forward. He's got a couple of free players at left half forward. He decides to flare it right into the corridor to McCluggage. Takes his time here, McCluggage. A little indecisive before kicking wide towards the half forward flank. Target is Berry. Got a high contact there from Josh Dacos. Picks up the ball quickly. Plays on with a hand pass to Wilmot. From 60, kicks to full forward and Danaher! Had a big piece, couldn't take the mark. We'll get a free kick, will he? No. No, he won't. That's the Collingwood mob roaring for Noble kicking it clear. Silly me. I thought I heard the roar of the home crowd. Thought that's in response <laughs> for a free kick, but no, it's the Collingwood mob making a noise. Well, it's the Brisbane crowd making a noise as Noble just uh, 
throws out a handball. It was cut off there by Nick Dacos. He scrubs one back into the corridor around the ankles of Elliott, but it's been a free kick awarded down the field as Dacos was dealt with after he got rid of it. And it's going to be to Jamie Elliott, just forward of centre wing on the outer side. And they make things unique everywhere, Collingwood, and they make the sound of this place different when they come here. The acoustics are different. Handball backwards to Maynard. This is a long kick. Top of the square. Darcy Fort skims his knuckles over the back. Was a chance, but it went through for a rush behind. 2-2-14, two, two, Collingwood, one one seven Brisbane, we've played 14 and a half minutes of the first quarter. Yeah, I, ground balls are hurting. Brizzy inside 450, which has been the problem the first couple of weeks. But Danaher then, deep in the goal square, they lost the ground ball, pumped out, and Brittany Collingwood took the ball down the other end very quickly again. Conservative inbound. Fletcher marking in the left back pocket from the chip pass of Wilmot. Is that a bit of it early? Jasper Fletcher runs around New Pie Schultz, who was the man on the mark. Hand passes to Bailey at half back, tumbling kick towards the wing, bounces away from Frampton and into the hands of Danaher. Gallops to half forward, has a bounce, hand pass to Robertson who left it behind him. And Frampton cleans up for Collingwood, picks up the loose pill. Hand passes to Howe, Howe's kick turned over. Straight to McCarthy who marks it for Brisbane. Forward of the wing and takes a moment Lincoln McCarthy. Well, kicks in field dangerously, just beat the handle. Lipinski picked up by Neil on the bounce, hands it to Rayner, hands it back to Wilmot near the bullseye. Now the deep kick towards full forward. Hipwood! Hipwood has a juggle once and twice, not paid. Play on, on the deck. Quayner mops up for Collingwood, hand pass to Cameron, hand pass to Noble, and the pies are out. His little chip pass finds Josh Dacos on the boundary, still inside defensive 50, and Noble ran on and collects a mark just outside 50. Good running. He chips it along the boundary line to Nick Dacos. Again, good ball control. By foot finds Mitchell just short of centre wing. So four quick kicks for Collingwood as Mitchell comes back in board and finds Josh Dacos who's run on. Another 15 metre pass to his brother Nick. They're racking up the stats as Dacos Nick comes across the commentary side and lands a beautifully long kick to Will Hoskin Elliott on the logo. He saunters off now. Danaher on the mark. Oh, he no. chips a kick. He took too much time. Too casual. It bounced away from Jeremy Howe over the boundary line and a throw in in front of the jeering Brisbane Lions members. Both teams are just very nervous. They're, they're they are, yeah. Poor, poor skill errors. Not poor decisions. Just really poor skill errors. But that shows how much he's riding on this game. And shows the pressure from both sides as well. Matt Primus and Jeff White. Who'd have thought they'd be nervous in round three after the last <laughs> time they met and the stakes that were then? From the stoppage, Mitchell with a good hand pass for Collingwood to Lipinski. Hands it to the boundary line for McRae. Hold right. on, there's a stoppage. One of those was a throw. Right. Throw from Mitchell. Free kick to Lockie Neal. There's, there's a couple of child. No, it's going to go to Dar- Darcy Ford. Neal had it for a moment. And then said, no, it's Ford's free kick. So coming in after just seven games last year, Darcy Ford. This is his first of 2024. Kicks to half forward. Goes beyond the pack. Noble roves for Collingwood. Hand pass to Mitchell. Hand passes to Pendlebury. Hand pass to Nick Dacos running through the bullseye. Kicks Collingwood into attack. Spews off the chest of the Magpies. But on the follow-up, McInnes roves his own crumb and snaps the goal from 25 metres out to give the Magpies a 13-point lead. Drop the chest mark. Able to do his own raving. Magpies 3 2 20. Lions 1 1 7. 17 and a half play. I love already McQuainer. Howe's gone into the middle. I know he's he turned it over. They, they're intercept mark, but they're trying to go back through the corridor, Absolutely. aren't they? They're trying to get speed on the ball. And then they had Pendlebury, nice hand pass, still in the corridor, giving them options and getting it down into their forward line really quick that's giving them the options. Yeah, that, that fast ball movement is making Brizzy defenders, you know, they've, they've messed up a few decisions, Whitey, but it's certainly making Brizzy defenders very nervous. And what's that, eight inside 50s for five shots uh, that the Pies have had, and they've had a couple of bloopers going inside 52, so they're looking super dangerous ball in hand. That was good physical work in the end by Reef McInnes. He dropped the mark, but he actually got rid of the opponent's body to do so. Back into the middle, Mason Cox in there for Collingwood, gets it down. Now Dugowie on the left foot. Turns it around the corner, but it's going to be cut off there by Jasper Fletcher. He's mown down, still gets the kick away, but Dugowie cuts it off. In fact, he gives it to Mitchell. A towering ball inside, 50. Good body work from Payne. Got rid of McInnes there, and he took a good defensive mark for Brisbane on his very large chest, the boy from Noosa. One of the quartet of Lions playing tonight that didn't play in the grand final. There's four from Collingwood as well. Payne kicks long to the outer wing. 
Maynard's at the front of the contest for Collingwood and's claimed the mark. I think the lead of Archie was the target. Archie arrived late, but the opposite four given the free kick. Maynard kicks towards half forward on the head of Cameron. A couple of juggles from Darcy Cameron. Couldn't control it over the boundary line. And a boundary throw in. Chalk and cheese, the ball moving though, isn't it? Why do you get busy and slow, happy to go long down the line where the Pies are playing on and taking advantage all the time. And the tools of the Pies are really making a contest. They're yeah. not getting out marked. They bring the ball. They're either marking or bringing it down for their small forwards. ABC Sport at the Gabba. Magpies leading it by 13 points from the boundary throw in. Brisbane get the clearance. Fletcher with a hand pass to Bailey. Tries to shrug a couple of tackles drop that Ump will penalise him. Is it a throw or holding the ball? Six or one half dozen of the other, so give it to number six. Tom Mitchell, the free kick. Playing his 200th game, the Brownlow medalist. Directing traffic. Now yeah, it's a long left footer. It's going to lob just inside the attacking 50. Beautifully rove there by McCreary. Flying shot around the corner. Very lucky to score a point in the end. One behind. 21 plays seven. There's that contest again. Cox and uh, Majacek just bringing the ball to ground, not being outmarked. Jared Berry runs out of the goal mouth for Brisbane. Runs to the right back pocket, kicks the half back, but Cox is in front for Collingwood. Marks plays on quickly to Maynard. Chip around the boundary taken by Josh Dacos. Marks and plays on from 55. Kick to full forward. Andrew spoils the pack for Brisbane. Wilmot Rove took a while, got tackled. Um says play on, ball to deck. McCreary picks up, gets tackled. And the umpire calls for a neutral. The Harris is the one that is the intercept mark. He hasn't taken one yet. So this is the strength of Collingwood at the moment when it's going inside their forward 50. Ball up's going to happen 45 metres out from Collingwood's goal. Slapped down by Darcy. Ford picked up by Bailey. He's immediately claimed by Mitchell for the pies. And the umpire will do it all again from the very same spot. Throws it up immediately. Cox gets to the front position, taps it back into the corridor. Hacked out of midair by Darcy Wilmot and Lux of Fortune. It lands into the arms of Lincoln McCarthy at centre half back. He wants to slow things down and he flares it out to the commentary wing. Puts it in front of Jared Berry who takes a chess mark and again slows it down. Looks back immediately onto the logo. Finds Bailey. Bailey into the centre circles and finds Darcy Wilmot who's run forward. So they're keeping the ball in hand. With a kicking efficiency of around 87% at the moment. Brisbane, it's a long kick from Wilmot now. Inside 50. Pack of players that skims off the knuckles of Danaher. At the back, Rayner tackled without it. The crowd want it. No. Ball picked up by Jamie Elliott. Hooks it out of the defence. It's going to come back with interest, though. You've got Stasevich handballing it to Archie. Off a step now. Darcy Ford has gone back and went through the hands of Hipwood. Toed off the deck. Cut off there by Will Hoskin Elliott on the goal line and saves a certain goal it is a behind eight plays 21 it's a 13 point ball game in favour of the Pies apart from that shot on goal the last five inside 50s for Brizzy have just bounced back out to Collingwood they just cannot lock the ball in at all Brizzy Matt Primus on ABC Sport as Noble chips short to Howe he's just forward of full back Jeremy Howe Magpies on the inbound on a perfect Thursday night at the Gabba long kick towards the outer side couple in the contest there Cameron was the Pies target couldn't mark Row by Andrews of Brisbane, hand pass to Fort, kicks it back to attacking 50 for the locals, bounces away from Charlie Cameron, although Zorko boots it out of the air on the ricochet, but kicked it straight to John Noble. Noble marks for Collingwood, kicks it back to full back. Frampton grabs it, plays on with the chip to Hoskin Elliott. Right on D50 at right half back, and Hoskin Elliott chips to Elliott. It's almost poetic there, not of the TS style, but Hoskin Elliott to Elliott. So to speak, Pricey. 20 metres forward, I heard what he did there. Hoskin Elliott ran forward to collect it off Elliott. It went off his hands. Do I. Zorko, well, he caught one high off Will Hoskin Elliott as well. He accepts the free kick and gives Hoskin Elliott something to go with. That's a pinpoint pass to find Bailey, 55 out. He played on. He was over the boundary line. Should have been a throw in. It's a hook kick. Bounces in front of Charlie Cameron. Off his chest. Rode by Quayner. Oh. Immediately claimed the ball. Bounces over the boundary line. Uh, free kick against Eric Hipwood for that tackle. Lingering, Michael. Oh, he did linger. Well, there you go. The umpire just soft on the signal. It's going to be a free kick to Quayner in the right back pocket. He's Michael Price. I'm Quentin Hull calling the action for you from the Gabba as Quayner kicks in. And Fort decides to knuckle it over the boundary. And we'll see a boundary throw in. Bobby Hill... Jamie Elliott and Reef McKinnis, the goal kickers for Collingwood. Cam Rayner, the goal kicker for Brisbane. 
It's the Magpies 3-3-21 leading Brisbane. 1, 2, 8, 24 minutes travelled on this first game of the Easter weekend round. Round three, which becomes the fourth game for Collingwood after they, of course, were a part of opening round. No clearance from the boundary throw-in. Ground is in absolutely gorgeous order as far as the playing surface. It sort of takes a couple of weeks after the close clip of the cricket season to get the lushness back. It looks in its footy best tonight, that's for sure. They're taking full advantage of Cox against Ford at the moment. Yep. No disrespect to Ford, but he's, he's got to he's got to be mobile. He's got to get, you know, not give up the front position to Cox. Ruck tangle resulted in a free kick to the Collingwood big man. Chips it short to Josh Dacos. Kick around the boundary line. Hill from behind spoils away from Answorth, and it's going to be thrown in. Gee, Matt. I promise you can almost, you can hardly even see the cricket square tonight. The gabble looks so good. It looks magnificent, doesn't it? You wouldn't know there's one there unless you brought it up, Q. I remember your old coach, Choco Williams, complaining about the picture here. Oh, I can complain about it too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throw in comes off the hands of Cox into the to go his arms. He kicks long to the goal square. It's beautifully read by Brandon Stasevich playing his 100th game for the Brisbane Lions. Kicks it to left half back to find Zorko. He's confronted by Hill. Handball over to Answorth. Over the head of Dacos. There's Danaher at the back of the pack off his hands. McCluggage can't rove. Mitchell could. Got the handball away back to Elliott under pressure. He gave it to Frampton who's crept up the ground. Got his foot to the ball. Cut off by Bailey. Handball backwards to half back to Starsevich, Then to McCarthy. Then to Zorko by hand. His kick under pressure. Oh, great body work from McCreary. Got rid of his opponent in Wilmot. The ball spills. Picked up there beautifully by Neil, but he's tackled magnificently by Isaac Quayna on the logo on the commentary wing. He'll get a free kick for the Pies. Not getting ahead of myself, but they're on tonight, the Pies. Every possession that the Brisbane got then, the Pies are right on them. Quayna kicks deep to the forward line. Big pack, no mark. At the top of the goal square row by Answorth of Brisbane. Happy enough to fumble it towards the boundary line unless the completes... Seeing the ball beyond the paint for a throw-in. Well, you tipped them, Jeff. Well, they've got the balance. They've got the balance right. They've not got two to one. They've got one going to the ball receiver, one to the receiver. So they, they, they're getting their balance and their defensive set up really well at the moment. 13 points, the lead to Collingwood, edging towards a quarter time. Throw-in with the pies in attack. Fort beat Cox to the tap. No effective rover, though. Big Mason battles on, roves it himself near the boundary line. His kick is intercepted by Fort back in the field of play. Are you Ruckman ever going to share it? Anyway, it goes out of bounds. No, free kick. Oh, free kick. Yeah, he threw that. Darcy, Darcy Fort threw that. So Bobby Hill is going to get the free kick. Yeah, it was, it was a, a tangle where he lost the ball. So the tormentor from grand final day has already kicked one Bobby Hill. If anyone thought that Charlie was going to go to number 23 in the grand final, it was probably more so Charlie than this guy. Or Normie, should I say. Here he is. A Bobby Hill in the left foot. Snap. He's kicked a second. And Bobby Hill has two first quarter goals. Collingwood lead by 19 points at 4-3-27 to one 2 8. Once again, their, their pressure in their forward 50. Can, uh, yeah. You've mentioned Whitey all over the ground, the pies are on. But in their forward 50, it's Stark to Brisbane. It's bouncing out of there far too easy. But every time Collingwood... If they don't get a shot or, or a shot on goal early, they're able to get the ball back and bring great pressure. And like that one there, Bobby Hill just got an arm in there. Ball slipped out, paid a throw. Their, their pressure all over the ground is outstanding at the moment. And, and, and we spoke about it before with the bigs. They're bringing it to ground. They're not getting out marked. So it's a really disciplined role they're playing on Harris. Harris is mainly the one who, and, and Payne, they're the ones that will take the intercept marks and really cut some momentum. They're not having that at the moment, the Brisbane Lions. And, and Q, while, while they're still making some poor decisions... Their intensity when they don't have the ball, that's what the pleasing thing, and that's what's missed in the first three weeks. So far, the first quarter, it's right on. Back in the middle, McInerney gets it out for Brisbane. It's rowed by Rayner, under pressure again. The handball forward to Bailey, tackled off the ball by Maynard. Another turnover. Pies have it in the corridor with Pendlebury. The run came from Nick Dacos, looping handball forward to Maynard. Clever little tap to the run of Noble. Got around Wilmot, had a ping from 40, top of the square hill. Bobby Hill again. He's taken the mark the Norm Smith medalist. They'll be having nightmares about him north of the border. He'll have a shot 20 metres out. What about that? Just when they clean, when you clean below your knees, it just opens up everything. And how clean I think it was uh, Mitchell was in the centre there. Perfect. 
absolutely great play. Hands off away from goals, straight to the Collingwood player, and then they just the chain of the handballs along. So Bobby Hill, for his third goal, pops it through. The pies are on on Easter Thursday night. 5-3-33 to 1-2-8 late in the first term. Live footy on ABC Sport. Yeah, you're exactly right. Well, you just look at the and the tackles are never anything, but in this game so far in the first quarter, it is 21 to 12. When possessions are, you know, Brizzy 73 to Collingwood 92, but uh, Brisbane just can't stay, uh, slow down Collingwood at all. The ball's just flowing far too easy, and there's nowhere near the pressure that Collingwood have put on Brizzy every time they touch it. Zane Bojack on the boundary. Oh, look, the black and white army, they're not just cheering Q, they're, fly- they're absolutely flying the flag, and they're wearing white shorts, but they're not showing a white flag here tonight. They've come here to play Collingwood. As for Brisbane Lions fans, well, they're in a bit of shock. They can't believe what they're seeing here at the moment. Three goals for Bobby Hill, and we're yet to hit quarter time. Collingwood lead by 25 points at the Gabba. Start of a big Easter weekend of footy on ABC Sport. The 246ers battle in the ruck. Give that one to Cox with the tap. Can he find a rover? Not really. Brisbane's ball on the ricochet. Wilmot hands it to Rayner. Rayner on to Berry. Berry hands to Neil. Neil back to Rayner now. The kick from the bullseye out towards Danaher. Gathers on the half body. 40 out. Swivels and snaps on his left. Bends it back, but not enough. Near side, four are behind to Joe Danaher. Collingwood by a neat four goals, 5-3 to 1-3. Well, the difference is in the conversion, 15, uh, sorry, 14 inside 50s for seven shots for Collingwood at 50%, and the Brisbane Lions, 12 inside 50s for three shots at 25%. Long kick to extract in the path of Mason Cox. Gets it down now to Nick Dacos, scrubs it forward onto the logo. Contest, Harris Andrews, tackled by McInnes. Could have been ping for holding the ball there. It's stuck back underneath him as... It seemed he dragged it back in, but the umpire is going to give him the benefit of the doubt and ball it up just forward off centre wing on the outer side here at the Gabber. He throws it up immediately. Cox belts it back towards the boundary line. Wilmot for the Lions. Handball over the top to Fletcher. It's a floating kick that goes just inside 50. Reading it. Best getting back there. How? Spoiled late by Fort. Let go by the umpire. Handball from McCarthy over to Neal. Curls it around the corner. Oh, good chest mark in front of Danaher, taken by Billy Frampton. And he chips it now to Noble. And the pies are out again. Locking Neal from 30 metres out doesn't make the distance shooting for goal. Goal kicking has never been one of his strong suits. But that was... That was one for the taking there. Quainoa receives it right half back. Kicks to the wing. Off the hands of the pack. Zorko trying to row. Somehow fumbles it to the advantage of teammate Answorth. Hands it around the boundary to Robertson. Robertson hands it to Rayner. Rayner back to Zorko. Here's the kick from just forward of the wing towards half forward. Oh, presenting it. Hits Bailey on the shoulder and ricochets away. Rowed by Pendlebury of Collingwood. Hands it to Frampton. Hands to Noble. Back to Pendlebury in the tight confines. His hand pass is stolen by Zorko, who had nowhere to go. So, like he was across town at Lank Park, he, he jumped over the boundary line and scored a try. He's trying really hard, Zorko. He's giving yeah. him lots of run and moving off half back and up to 11 touches, but just nothing ahead of the ball, not really working for him yet. But it'll open up if he keeps attacking the game the way he is. Quarter time imminent as the ball's thrown in. 50 from Brisbane's goal. And it's the Premiers who have dominated the first stanza at the Gabba. Both teams looking for their first four Premiership points of 2024. And one of the major storylines of the grand final is repeating itself through half an hour here. Bobby Hill in front of goal for Collingwood. He has kicked three of the Magpies' five goals in this first term. Jamie Elliott and Reef McInnes with the others. While for Brisbane, their only goal coming to Cam Rayner. It's the Magpies by four goals at the first break. Collingwood 5-3-33, leading Brisbane's 1-3-3. Nine. Frenetic start to the night. Uh, I'm appreciating your messages. I'll get to a few of them throughout. 0437 774 774 is the number to get in touch. That's 0437 774 774. Uh, Jake listing in Yalgoo in Western Australia who's waiting for the sun to set. Loving the call. Hoping the Lions start his tipping week well. Hello. G'day to Fran from Melbourne, one of our regular listeners. Thank you, Fran. Yes, grand final replay, whatever you want to name it. But we still won the 2023 grand final. Can't take that away. Indeed, Fran. Thank you. Uh, Dave and Irene uh, listening in Tassie by the fire. 
go pies. By the fire? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, <laughs> the weather's not like this in the rest of the country. No, I love that. I just love yeah. it. I love that. Uh, uh, Marcus at Kuroi suggests Brisbane's previous fast starts haven't worked, so better they come from behind tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, Marcus. 0437. 774774 is the number to get in touch. Uh, in other sport tonight, a big game in the National Rugby League between Penrith and the Roosters. That's just got underway. No score as yet. And uh, also, we've got a call on the Listen app if you want to hear Game 4 of the NBL Grand Final Series. Jack Jumpers leading at two games to one. And early in the second quarter, it's the Jack Jumpers 31 leading Melbourne United 27. But here, it's Collingwood by four points at quarter time. This is Thursday Night Footy live on ABC Sport. Hey, want to hear something really funny? Well, of course. The Melbourne International Comedy Festival is back. You ready for a big night of comedy, yeah? With the All Stars Super Show on the ABC, Wednesday night, April 3rd. And if you miss the hilarious gala, catch it right now on ABC iView. Let that marinate there for a second. The Melbourne International Comedy Festival. Have a great festival, everyone. With the All Stars Super Show, Wednesday night, April 3rd on ABC TV and streaming on ABC iView. This is ABC Sports coverage of the 2024 AFL season. Every match on the ABC Listen app. Look for the AFL button. The Goey Rose to Collingwood pumps them inside 50 for the first time. And it's the grand final tormentor again. Bobby Hill marks 20 metres out. His hair could light up the night. We might need it at the Gabba. Bobby Hill kicks the opening goal. Jared Berry. Kicks to the top of the goal mouth and McInerney first hand put it mark. But Rayner Rhodes and snaps over his shoulder to kick the answering goal for Brisbane. Nick Dacos running through the bullseye. Kicks Collingwood into attack. Spews off the chest of the Magpies. But on the follow-up, McInnes robes his own crumb and snaps the goal from 25 metres out. But they're trying to go back to the corridor, aren't they? They're trying to get speed on the ball. Yeah, that, that fast ball movement is making Brizzy defenders very nervous. Clever little tap to the run of Noble. Got around Wilmot. Had a ping from 40. Top of the square hill. Bobby Hill again. He's taken the mark. The Norm Smith medalist. They'll be having nightmares about him north of the border. For his third goal. Pops it through. The pies are on on Easter Thursday night. The 2024 AFL Premiership season. On your radio. ABC Sport Digital. And on the ABC Listen app. Easter weekend begins as many AFL rounds have at this time of year at the Gabba. And it's Collingwood with the jump over the Lions. Magpies leading it by four goals at quarter time. 5-3, 33 to 1-3-9. Quentin Hull and Michael Price calling the action. On my way to our experts, Matt Primus and Jeff White. Please send us your name if you are texting particularly uh, this this is a picture which ah uh, it, it tells a thousand words i'm at the world's irish dancing watching my daughter competing in glasgow one earpiece in listening go pies wow at a dancing competition in glasgow but listening to the footy that's the power of the abc I'm, Listen, I, I love that that's okay tell those that are watching dancing and also listening to footy or doing whatever <laughs> to start this easter weekend uh matt Prime, jeff what have we got here after half an hour well the, the main difference is inside 50 is a 14 each exactly the same brizzy have had no tackles inside 50 from any of their small forwards or any of their players uh, Collingwood have had six, and that, that just automatically tells me straight away. And they've both had opportunities deep inside 50s, equal numbers, all those sorts of things. Collingwood have just come to hunt them early, get at them, move the ball quick. Brizzy uh, hoping that they can mark it, hoping that a forward wins, hoping a, a, a midfielder gets it forward. They're hoping Brizzy, uh, Collingwood are just taking the game to them and are playing with so much more passion. And just a, another little thing, and you're trying to create some atmosphere, Collingwood, because they've been low the last three weeks. Quarter time siren sounded. All their bench that plays ran out to their players who had been on the ground and got around them, where Brizzy are just all dawdling all amongst you know each other and not really getting it. Yeah, yeah. it was just uh, the belief in Collingwood are trying to build some passion in there. They've certainly played that way in the first 30 minutes. Game 200 for the uh, 2018 Brownlow medalist, and Tom Mitchell starts with eight disposals, of which seven uh, four are contested. Uh, and he started on the bench. Two clearances and four tackles yeah. as well. I mean, those parts of Tom Mitchell's game that yep. weren't necessarily a part of what won him, the Brownlow medal. But we were looking for something from... He could just sense, he, he whether it's the 
scenario of the season, the personal milestone, or just going out there and do your job for the team. He started on fire. And they've been clean below the knees, and that's what's really generated. But the most impressive part I've seen about <coughs> Collingwood, excuse me, is their ability to press up. So when the player's got the ball, one presses up, then they press up to the receiver. They're always in front of their face of the Brisbane Lions, forcing them to either kick it or make an error. 24 tackles to 10, just to reiterate. 24 tackles for Collingwood, only 10 for Brisbane. And it's only nine possessions, the difference between the teams, or 10, I think it is. So it's not as if they've had lots more opportunities. Both teams are pretty equal. It's not as simple as that, but there's a hunger stat for you. Second term underway, Michael Price. Back into the middle. McInerney gets it down immediately to Neil. Gets a handball away under enormous pressure. And a pack of players on top of Zorko as he comes in. Dunkley in there as well. And the other one will ball it up. 11 possessions, by the way, for the Zork to start pricing. Well done as the umpire throws it up again. Finlay McRae comes in and immediately he's claimed by both Dunkley and Neil. So we've moved about two metres to the left of the centre circles. That's the end that Collingwood are kicking to this quarter. Off hands now. Archie, handball backwards to Neil. It's on to Lester by hand. His right foot kick is going to be marked on the chest by McCarthy who made a lot of ground to get there. On the boundary, he chips back 45 degrees forward. Now it's with Dunkley. Still 80 from goal. Collingwood have got back en masse as Dunkley goes long to the right forward pocket. Making his way to the front of the pack was Danaher. Off hands, Nick Dacos versus Archie. Archie gathers, gives it to Hipwood by hand, then to Neil. His kick smothered by Howe. The ball falls into the hands of Maynard. He taps it forward for Schultz, who gave the handball to Nick Dacos, who's tackled over the boundary line. They're just looking crisp at Collingwood again as the umpire's going to throw it in at right half forward. But he's the sub tonight, Michael. Oh, too quick for you tonight. Oh, looking crisper? Fabulous. <laughs> Jack Crisp on the bench, waiting to be called into the game from the stoppage. Rove by Neil at right half forward for Brisbane. Hand passes along the ground to McCluggage, 60 out near the boundary. Chips to full forward, placed in front. Pendlebury makes the spoil. Rove by Nick Dacos. Hand pass turned over. Archie has it. He's tackled. Gave it to Dunkley. Hold on, free kick. Must have been a throw. Just Again, got more numbers at the more numbers at the contest. Yeah, Collingwood. another grand ball winner, and they're playing three tools, which to start with Danaher, Fort, and Hipwood, all down forward. So they're not marking the ball; they better be on their bikes. And it was Tom Mitchell again to win the free kick. Chip to Noble, chip to Nikos, Nikos back to Noble, <laughs> Nikos and Jacos. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I'm with you, Q. Noble just forward of left half back. His dad helped build half the list here at Brisbane. Kick towards half forward. Cox takes the mark. Played on. Tackled by Zorko. Holding the ball. Seriously, this bloke's 35 the oldest guy on the list. You reckon some of the younger guys could show the enthusiasm of the Zork? He's the barometer, that's for sure. Handball backwards to McCluggage. A sizzling pass. Hits Neil on the bounce. McCluggage had to go back and retrieve it. He gets the handball. Receive a long kick to half forward. Good fly from McCarthy, brings it to ground. Roving, uncustomary roll from McInerney. Handball back to McCarthy, who chips it into the pocket. Pies with numbers. It went over the boundary line, though the umpire's going to call it back. It will be a throw-in in the right forward pocket for Brisbane. They're trailing this one by 24 points. Only three minutes gone of this second term. Well, the big O had to win that ground ball inside 50. I don't think Brisbane want that to continue. <laughs> He looked all at sea below his <laughs> knees there. He had a crack, though. The throw in off the hands of Fort. Cut off by his opposite number, Hoskin Elliott. Handball back to Nick Dacos. His kick forward. It's spoiled by Dunkley. Well done over the boundary line. It'd be a throw in on the arc of 50 at right half forward for Brisbane. Michael Price and Quentin Hull calling the action. Four goals the lead to Collingwood. You're hearing it on ABC Sport across the country, across the world, wherever you're tuning in. Great that you could start your Easter weekend with us. Three minutes played second term. Cameron Darcy nudges foot over the drop. Kicks mother, though. Ricochets to Dunkley of Brisbane from 50. Snaps to goal. It pitches in the pocket and out of play. Will be thrown in next to the behind post. At least they're locking the ball in. They weren't able to do this in the first quarter. They've been able to get three or four repeat inside 50, so their pressure's up early. Highs by 24 points. Umpire just beside the behind post in the right forward pocket will throw it in. Brisbane in attack. Fort gets it down in front of Cameron. Dev Robertson underneath the pack there for Brisbane. Can't extract it at all. And the umpire's going to come in and ball it up 20 metres out, more or less directly in front. Thrown up again. Darcy Fort brings it down to the feet of McCarthy. He tries to hack it out of midair. It's just oh. it over. It's picked up by Darcy Cameron, tackled off the ball. He missed his foot. 
Crowd wanted ball, nothing happening. And it was with Howe. Handball to Frampton, worried off the ball by Danaher. At ground level, he shuffles it forward. Howe went back to make good and rushed it through for one behind. Crowd didn't like that at all. It is 33 playing 10. Back to a 23-point margin as the Pies bring it in quickly to Maynard. Who's got Nick Dacos running for him in the back pocket. Received the hand pass. Chips the whole Scanelli at all. Hand pass was in behind Nikos there. Lost it. Brisbane's ball. Dunkley picks up. Hands it to Leicester. 60 out. Hand pass to Rayner. 50 from goal. Breaks a tackle. Doesn't yep. go for the big sticks. Chicks it to Neil. Neil marks in the pocket. 40 metres out. You see what Colin was trying to do then, but it was great by Brisbane to be onto that with the handball received to Nick Dacos. Like this distance, Q? Uh, distance not the issue. It's just for a highly decorated and he's looking for options here he's not keen to kick for goal for a highly decorated Brownland medalist he he does not hit the scoreboard it's one of the problems that Brisbane has the midfield does not kick an, enough goals can Lockie Neal kick one here though he wasn't keen to take the set shot but he is a class footballer ha <laughs> ha there you go <laughs> he points to the crowd and kicks a much needed goal for Brisbane his first of the season and the margin is 17 points in favour of Collingwood at 5-3-33 to 2-4. 16, Zane on the boundary. Oh, the Lions fans are up and about after seeing their skipper do that. You just wonder, Q, whether or not he's just trying to uh, look after that hamstring. That's why he missed the match against uh, Fremantle two weeks ago. Maybe he just didn't want to stretch out, but he gave it a, a good follow through there and it went through the big sticks. He was a happy man. He was pointing at you, Q. <laughs> he was, was pointing point. the exact opposite <laughs> way. Uh, Great finish. But I, was... I am not criticising no, Neil know, yeah, at all, but it's a characteristic of his football and Brisbane as a whole. They're not a team... Usually you see really good teams at the back. They've got a lot of goals coming from their midfield. midfield it, yeah. It's something that Brisbane doesn't have. Yeah, and you need to have that, especially when they're going down into the forward line to most of the stop players. You want them to have some scoreboard pressure. So the crowd's awake here at the Gabba with Lockie Neal's goal there as the ball goes back into the middle. Darcy Cameron brings it down. There's a whistle on play. It's going to be a free kick holding. Hugh McLuggage off the ball. Zorko wraps around for the handball from the centre circles. A long kick from the Zork in the hipwood direction. It's fisted away from him. At ground level, McInerney did well. Handball over to Ford, who went backwards to Rayner. He has to go back to the arc and retreat. Handball to McLuggage. He sold a dummy. Ran in from 40. McLuggage sprays it to the left. And again, is he a midfielder not his that forte. Finish? Is he a midfielder that doesn't finish, Bryson? Yeah, exactly. 5-3, 33 to 2, 5-17. Wasted chance there for the Lions after seven minutes of the second term. Well, there's two turnovers, two defensive Efforts from Brisbane, two shots on goal inside their forward line. 16 points the margin in favour of Collingwood. Long inbound from Maynard, looking for Mayacek. Payne does the spoiling, but Mayacek roves to Collingwood at left half-back. Ham passes to the Hall of Fame legend in waiting. Pendlebury at half-back for Collingwood. Fine space. Kicks brilliantly to Elliot. He has time when others don't. Elliot marks chips infield to Mitchell. And Mitchell's on a heater tonight as well in his 200th. Coming up for possession 10. Chips it short to Maynard. Slowing it up on halfway, the Magpies. Now the quick entry from Maynard to full forward. Out the back. Chance for McCreary in the goal mouth. It's kicked off the ball oh, by McInnes. Did it get rushed through first? No, free back. kick. Push in the back. Darcy Wilmot got nudged. One hand four, other hand four in the back of his jumper. Free kick for Brisbane at fullback. Chicks it to Berry. Berry marks and gets the lines out of trouble. Well, it's a long kick towards the wing. Darcy Fort does well from the back position. Got his hands to it. Row front and square by Bailey. He delivers a kick up the ground to Charlie Cameron. Yes, he is playing. He gets up just forward to centre wing. Gets around Jeremy Howe. Long kick inside 50. Hipwood was the target. Spoiled by Maynard. Ball falls around Maynard's feet. He goes back in and has a crack. Towed out of the pack. And just, oh, just roving on his own. It's Tom Mitchell. Must stink. Nobody around him. He just handballed it to Pendlebury. He sauntered out of defensive 50 and delivered a lovely pass to Will Hoskin Elliott. That was too easy out of defence for the Pies as Hoskin Elliott goes laterally back to Pendlebury. Matt, can you look if somehow Fly McRae's created Pendles playing loose? I don't think he's got a man at the moment. Or if it is, I mean, he's, he's sort of playing a half-back role and taking Lincoln McCarthy to waters he doesn't want to be in. He's getting some blocks too. Yeah? He's getting, mm. creating some blocks through the midfield to try and get their best 
receivers or best kickers to receive the ball. 16 points the lead to Collingwood. Chip mark to the wing. Lipinski now kicks the half forward. My check presents can't mark. McInerney has the raving for Brisbane. Hand pass to Rayner. Had a fumble. Got it back. Had another fumble. Dugowie crashes oh. through. Tackled. Lost it. Holding the ball. McCarthy. Got to go quick. Gets the free kick for Brisbane on the wing. Kicks it to Neil. Who'll mark in space. 60 from goal. Right half forward. Kicks it to the goal mouth. Hipwood's got two to beat. And he takes two juggles. Can't mark. Play on. Picked up by Brisbane. Cameron in the pocket has a snap. And he can't curl it to the desired point. That's it twice now. Hipwood's just... Yeah, they can't mark it. it. The tools can't mark it inside 50 at the moment, can they? And that, that's a bit of an issue for them because then the ball's coming to ground and Collingwood are winning that battle. Across the face miss from Charlie Cameron. 2 6 18, trails 5 3 33. It's a 15 point margin as John Noble back into the side this week with his 14th disposal plays on. It's a long oh. kick, just short of centre wing. Boy, that's a good grab. Reef McInnes has made his way down at the field and he's taken a very good mark. He's done some important body work on Harris Andrews up forward as well. He plays on. The run again came from Noble. He received the handball kick long to Mason Cox. It was Lester flying over the back that spoiled at the ground. Elliott couldn't quite get there. Mitchell could handball over the top to McRae, but it's a free kick. It's going to come back to Brisbane. So we're going to go to Josh Dunkley, who yeah, he, got had, high. he copped one in that uh, contest. Okay, so he chipped it towards the boundary line to find McCluggage. He lays the slipper into it and goes long to half forward. A 2 on one Darcy Moore from the back spoils. But Barry Rose, handball to Hipwood. Handball inboard to Bailey. Inside attacking 50. Double team by Frampton and Darcy Moore holding the agate. It's a free kick to the Pies. And their tackling is enormous. 32 tackles to 15 at the moment. And they're landing them. They're, not, they're getting both arms, pinning both arms. So it's Frampton at right half back for Collingwood. Kicks long to the wing. Danaher and Cox flew. Neither mark. Rove by Josh Takos. His hand pass around the boundary line doesn't create off hands. Out of play. Collingwood led by 24 points at quarter time. Brisbane's kicked the only four scores of this term. 1-3 to nothing. It's Collingwood 5-3, 33 to Brisbane 2 6 18. 11 and a half minutes played. Live footy on ABC Sport from the Gabba. Fort beats Cox for that tap down on the wing. Rove by Robertson of Brisbane. Short kick intercepted, though, by Jacos. Nah, it's Nikos. Nick Dacos has got it at half back. Chips looking for Mitchell in the middle of the ground. Has two against him. Scored by Archie and Neal. Hand pass goes to Zorko. Hands it off to Rayner. It was on the bounce. Lipinski makes the tackle. Umpire says ball up. They're taking that risk, haven't they? Collingwood yeah. tonight, more than what I've seen them. And Brizzy are onto it, but they just haven't now. But they're, they're, they're still yeah. going. They're yep. still taking it. Absolutely. They'll, they'll continue to do it. Eight scoring shots apiece, but the pie's up by 15 points. Umpire throws it up in the middle of the ground. Dev Robertson at the foot of the pack. He's laying on it. Of course, he's going to get pinged. Dacos and Lipinski conspiring to get a holding the ball decision. Lipinski's the one who gets the free kick. Just behind the centre circles. He looks out left and finds... Quainer, Quainer to the commentary wing to Maynard. Now they're taking their time, just possessing the ball, taking a bit of sting out of the game. Maynard now directing traffic, pointing long. It's a high air ball towards left half forward. Andrews for the Lions got their first spoil. It was rowed by Fletcher, immediately tackled by three Collingwood players. Yes, three. And the ball held underneath him. It's going to be a ball up at left half forward. They won't show a lot of stats, but the bigs for the for Collingwood have been outstanding tonight down the line. Ball tossed up at half forward for the Pies. Cox taps boundary side. Too hot for Mitchell. Couldn't get to it. Over the line. Throw it in. Quentin Holt, Michael Price, Jeff White, Matt Promise with you up in the box. Zane Bojack on the boundary. I can tell you that uh, Craig McRae has been absolutely loving what he's been seeing, even though the lines are coming hard. If you listen to his press conference last week against St. Kilda, he talked about having more numbers in the contest wherever the ball was. That's what his side's doing tonight. Numbers on the screen or something along those lines. Yeah, black and white everywhere tonight. Wilmot wins the rove. Brisbane clear from right half back from the boundary throwing. Kick to the wing. Frampton spoils Danaher. Ball on the deck. Moore's over it for Collingwood. Hipwood's over him. Ooh, no prior. So the two big number 30s will get up. Yeah, they've out- outnumbered really well, Collingwood. And, you know, the start of the quarter, 8-1 to one inside 50 is to Brisbane, but they're only one shot on goal, or one goal. Right beneath us in the ABC Sport commentary box. The ball up. Robertson hands it to Fort. Fort's kick smothered by McRae. Hands it to Lipinski. His clearance. Well, ricochets to Hoskin Elliott. Gives to Mitchell. Mitchell kicks it off the out of boot. 
and out of bounds on the full. Free kick will go to Brisbane and Zorko's closest to it. And he'll take possession 17. 17, Pricey, with an inbound chip to Leicester. He gets it to Froggy. Froggy goes backwards now to right half back to find Harris Andrews on the point, basically, of the centre square. Plenty of pies in front of him. Floating kick just gets up to the wing. Just marked there by the youngster and Jasper Fletcher immediately plays on. That's a bomb of a kick. A long bomb. It goes to right half forward. Darcy Ford in the best position. Couldn't mark. Road by Deb Robertson. Hooks it to the goal square. Danaher flies. More spoils. Road by Bailey. Couldn't pick it up. Now ah. Nick Josh Dacos threw his head back. Crowd didn't like that. I'm not sure whether... It was a free kick. He chips it over the head of his brother Nick, who almost made good. In fact, he did. He kept it in. Crowd didn't like that either. They're firing up as the free... Sorry, the kick is cut off by Ryan Lester. Now he goes back and kicks it long inside 50. Lines with a chance through Danaher. Off hands. Maynard in best position. Slaps it forward. Bobby Hill made a long way down. Gathers. Handball cut off by Dunkley. Handball back out to Darcy Wilmot. He plays on. Chips the ball to the top of the square. Big pack off the hands of Hipwood. Front and square Mitchell for the Pies. The handball towards the boundary line. They're out through Noble. Who rushes a kick towards the wing beyond the pack. Free kick. She's a frantic pace at the moment, Col- isn't it? Yeah, Collingwood free wow. kick against Payne. They're, they're handling Brisbane's heat. Brisbane ringing heat, but Collingwood are handling it really well at the moment. Meyer check at right half back. Chips to Josh Dacos. Chips to Mitchell. Magpies conservatively with two kicks off the free kick get to halfway. Mitchell infield on the pass to Maynard. And Maynard happy enough to hold it up between right half back and centre wing. Collingwood hasn't scored in 16 minutes of this turn. But they still lead the game by 15 points. Maynard with a long kick to centre half forward for Collingwood. Andrews flies. Fifth in the pack to knuckle it down. Rovers on Neal's got two around him. McRae and also Majacek do the tackling to lock up the dual Brownlow medalist. And we'll see a ball up at centre-half back for Brisbane, centre-half forward for Collingwood. 17 minutes gone, second term, Pies by 15. Cox puts it inside 50. Jared Berry got there first. He was taken high, the crowd liked that one. He gets the free kick, the true centre-half back position as Brody Majacek argues the point with the umpire. The crowd's calling 50, and it was actually a Brisbane <laughs> player that didn't throw it back to Jared Beveridge. Crowd's Very. on edge here on an Easter Thursday night queue. Their side uh, had uh, the ascendancy of inside 50s and just can't convert. As Zorko's racking up the touches, goes out wider to find Leicester. The veteran kicks long down the line, chips to, down the line, I should say, to find Bailey. Bailey now goes to half forward. Right on the boundary is Darcy Fort. Untouched, he gathers. Kicks it to the pocket. Darcy Moore. Too easy. Gets rid of Eric Hipwood and takes a beautiful defensive mark and holds play up for the Pies. There is a symmetry here. I know his name's Darcy, but at times in the game we have 30 on 30. Uh, Darcy on Darcy in the ruck and 46 on 46 yep. in the ruck. Be that what it may. Kick towards the wing. To Gowie the road for Collingwood. Magpies lead by 15 points. Foot race. Bobby Hill's leading. Overran it. Ball evaded him. Picked up by Starsevic of Brisbane. Hand pass to Zorko. He is having a night to Zork. Kicks to the middle of the field. Marked by Archie. Chips to half forward. Cameron presents and marks. That's Charlie. Too far from home. Kicks it to the pocket. Danaher in the cage. One on one. Frampton does enough to spoil. Ball to the boundary line out of play. Yeah, they just can't mark it. They, they had no. lots of opportunities, but the Collingwood's tools are just doing a great job whenever the ball's in the air. And they're bodying up there and they're... they're they're um, attacked to defence. They're yep. doing it really, really well. Hipwood and Danaher, one mark between them, and that went to uh, Eric Hipwood a little bit earlier. It's the Pies by 15 points. 37 tackles to 17 shows the tempo of the game from their perspective as the umpire balls it up. It's rowed by McCarthy. He shoots a handball towards McCluggage, who escorts the ball over the boundary line for a throw-in just next to the arc of 50. 18 well, and a half minutes gone. Sorry, Price. While Q, uh, Zorko's having a lot of the ball, uh, uh, Collingwood won't have to do anything about it if the scoreboard doesn't start hurting them. 26 inside, 50 to 16 in favour of Brisbane, yet the Pies lead by 15 points. So the umpire throws it in across the arc of 50. Short throw in taken by Cox back towards the boundary line. We'll do it all again 70 metres out. Three goals to Bobby Hill in the first quarter. Collingwood has not scored in 19 minutes of the second term. Mind you, Brisbane's only eaten into nine points of its 24-point deficit. 15 the lead to the Pies. 
Throwing it right half forward for Brisbane. One by McInerney of Brisbane. Hands it to Fletcher. Fletcher's rush kick into attacking 50. Beats the pack. Taps to the boundary line by McCarthy, who roves. Doesn't shoot oh. the goal. Oh, very, very unselfishly. Kicks across the face of goal to Charlie Cameron. Give the gargling juices to John Denver. <laughs> because Charlie Cameron's about to have his first set shot of the night. 40, make it 35 metres out, slightly left of centre. Don't under, understand how how awesome that kick was there from Mick McCarthy. He had two guys on him bearing down, and to be able to spot it out there was an unbelievable kick. Well, I think the crowd needs this lift as well. It's the, the undefines of being at the footy. Cameron, Charlie for Brisbane, kicks a goal. Single figure margin in the grand final rematch. And here we go. Happy Easter, everyone. From John Denver to you. If you're driving on the holidays, here's a bit of music for you. Who would have thought the footy would be road trip music? <laughs> 3 6 24, trials 5 3. 33, 20 minutes played second term at Primus and Jeff White. They, they're getting a reward for their work. They're, they're smacking them in the contest. They're smacking them inside 50s, 13 to 2, but Collingwood's defence had really stood up. But eventually, if you keep asking questions, you'll get the scoreboard to tick over and they've got, they're getting their reward and their nourishment for a lot of hard work and their pressure is lifted and denying the pie some easy movement. So game on. So the music's gone, but the crowd now a cappella across the gather. And they just won't stop. As the ball goes into the middle, McInerney gets it down to Neal. A handball off to Wilmot. Wilmot kicks inside 50. Charlie Cameron at the back of the pack. He's beaten by Jeremy Howe this time. The ball spills to McCarthy. He gets a handball away to Zorko. There's a Jared Berry now. Shrugs a tackle and then kicks it out of bounds. So there you go. They were getting excited for a second round of uh, Country Road there. Fair to say, a football game broke out of through pub choir there. <laughs> <laughs> they just keep lingering with that now. Frampton's going to get the free kick for Collingwood in the right back pocket. Pies need to show something in this second term. Lions clawing back into this contest. Long kick of the wing, out the back. It's McCreary roving, bouncing. Oh, the bounce beat him. And then he got tackled by Wilmot. Lost the ball over the boundary line. Throw it in. And they're into him. They are into Bo McCreary. And this 33,000 plus at the Gabba starting to really let the atmosphere pump through your speakers on ABC Sport. Great to have you with us at the Gabba. Taking you to the heart of the action on ABC Sport. Lockie Neal from the throw-in. Tackled by Josh Dacos. Close to the boundary line up, lets them play before he then says, not mine. We're starting to win those one-on-ones now, Brisbane. It, it's woken up this game, has not it? Yeah, that was, it was clearly in favour of, of Nagpies in the first quarter. Umpire throws it up on the outer side, just forward to centre wing for Collingwood. It's cut off by Neil. His handball cut off by Josh Dacos, and then he turned it over. It's Zach Bailey who chips it forward. Now Danaher on the left point of the centre square. He wheels around onto that long left foot and bombs it over the head. Oh, Charlie Cameron flew. He brought it to ground, though. Quainer on top of him, Darcy Moore holding up. The ball stuck underneath as the umpire circles and says we'll ball it up 15 minutes out. He flew high on the shoulders of Darcy Moore. Oh, yeah, Quite that would have ride. a massive mark if you got that. Umpire throws it up 15 metres out for the Brisbane goal off the hands of Danaher. It hits the deck. Quainer tackled into the ground by Danaher over the boundary line, in fact. The umpire says we'll ball it up right on the boundary line, not a throw in. Although he took a massive fly, Charlie Cameron... Joe Danaher, he, he doesn't circle very quickly. No, too slow, Q. Yeah, it That's was one-on-one right. on one there, Matt, yep. wasn't he? Cameron, he just put it on his head there and hoped for the best. It was the second Magpie defender that got back in time because the entry was too slow. Boundary throw in Brisbane in attack. Goes beyond the two ruck combatants. McCarthy kicks it out of the air for the Lions. No great timing. Pitches in a dangerous spot. Top of the goal square. Cameron Rhodes! And snaps too far across with his left boot. Charlie kicks a point. Eight points to lead to Collingwood at 5 3 33 to 3 So the crowd just murmuring now as Jeremy Howe takes it out of the D 
defensive area for the Pies. A long kick towards the outer wing. Good position by Darcy Cameron. And they blocked. He takes the mark, but it was a block. Yeah, they blocked the big O from getting making the contest. Now I saw it. He threw the big hands up, received the ball back, and now he plays on. Lays the big slipper into it. Darcy Moore in the rear position, double fists it towards the boundary. And it's rowed by Berry. Handball to Bailey. Bailey chips the ball back into the middle, off hands. Bobby Hill a long way back in defence. Helps now, gives the handball to Quayna off the outside of the boot. It's cut off by Stasevich. He went over the top of Elliott, gathered the ball back internally to Hugh McLuggage. 70 metres from the Brisbane goal. He's got Cameron on the lead in the pocket. Dummies around, Elliott on the mark. Kick towards the goal square. Off hands, pies with numbers. Ball slung out. McCarthy cuts it off. Handball back to Fletcher. Off a step, the youngster kicks a goal for the Lions. Brings them to within two points. Contest on here at the Gabba. 25 gone in the second term. Oh, just winning ground balls, which they weren't able to do in the first quarter. They haven't been able to mark it, but their small forwards are getting front and centre a lot better. Harassing, they won the ground ball there. Some good hands and a, and a beautiful finish. But it's just chalk and cheese, first quarter to second quarter. But outstanding response. I just would have loved to have seen Darcy Moore. Maybe the talk wasn't there for him the to just go for Mark. Absolutely. He would there have was, done that last year. There was a one-on-one and he came and then he double-fisted. Like, take the mark. Inside 50s, second quarter. Brisbane 17, yep. Collingwood 2. Uh, 17 to 2. And it started in the centre queue. They got they, they weren't, they, they didn't come to the game. They weren't prepared for the first quarter. What? Clearance is 11 to 2. Yep. Brisbane's way. Collingwood still out tackling the lines, but Brisbane getting into it. So, three goals, four to nothing in this term to the locals. Two points to the lead to the Premiers. Centre bounce, Lockie Neal with the clearance for Brisbane. Tumbles the ball wide towards the half forward flank. It pitches favourably for Archie. Gets on his right boot, kicks Brisbane deep into attack. Targets Rayner, couldn't mark. Deb Robertson rows out the front. Tackled by Quainer. Play on, ball spills free. Maynard picks up. Hands to Josh Dacos under pressure. Gave to Frampton. Frampton tackled over the boundary line. Kick In out. fact, Ooh. he kicked it over the boundary line. Out of bounds on the fall. And, the, and there's a scuffle. Not far away from the ball. Danaher's played on, kicks in field. Doesn't find the target of McCarthy. It was a half volley. Degoe picks it up. Kicks it clear for Collingwood. Back out to where the wing uh, is there. And, and Andrew sees it over the boundary line. Zaino, help me out. What's going on, ringside? Yeah, it was Rayner and Frampton. And they were into a queue. They were wrestling on the ground. It was better than WWE. But no punches thrown. But there's plenty on in this second quarter. You can see the intensity lifting. The Pies led by 24 at quarter time. They lead by two now late in the second term. Throw in on the outer side. McCreary gets there first. Tackled off it by McCluggage. Off his hands and goes over the boundary line, but the umpire's going to call it. Who has been held. Holding free kick to McCreary. Feels like a grand final rematch now. It does. Oh, yes. It's just instantly gone up a notch or two. And a positive from Brisbane to fight back because the games they've lost, they've started really well, but then they haven't been able to claw them way back. McCreary goes long. Harris Andrews, a commanding mark in the middle of the pack, and he slows things down at left half back for the Brisbane Lions. Yeah, the, the, the big scoreboards come up on the bench. Oh, oh. Oh. Oh, laterally goes to Wilmot, who dropped the mark under pressure from Hill. He <laughs> gave the handball back to Zorko. He immediately went to the boundary line, and he found Wilmot played on. Sorry, Dunkley, who played on to Wilmot now. Now at the point of the centre square, he goes long down the wing. Looking for Darcy Fort against Darcy Cameron. Went off the hands of both of them over the boundary line. Will be a throw in. Left half forward for Brisbane, trailing by two points. Very pricey. Both teams were holding up the two-minute sign, and... They played a little bit slow, but they messed up their kick and nearly cost themselves in Brisbane, but they got out of trouble. Collingwood 98 seconds away from going scoreless through the term, Matt. Wow. Yeah. Minute 38 left in the quarter. Boundary throw in left half forward Brisbane. McInerney thumps cleanly, but no rover. Gains 10 metres for his team over the paint for another throw in. A little bit closer to Brisbane's goal. Shot on the big screen of Craig McRae hollering from just beyond the bench. He's down... On the side of the Gabba, a place where he won three premierships as a Lion. Boundary throw in. Neil Roves, brilliantly. 50 out for Brisbane. Kicks deep to full forward. Maynard keeps his foot in. Spoils the pack. And Fletcher Rhodes and snaps and misses to the right of the major opening when he perhaps could have done better from close range. It's a point to make it one the difference. 32 plays, 33. 4-8. 
to 5-3. Pies in front, close to half-time. Three goals, five to the Lions in this quarter. The Pies yet to register a score in the second quarter. They have the ball in hand. It's with Pendlebury. He plays on from the goal square. Goes long, just short of centre wing. Majacek gets there. Off his hands. It's to Josh Dacos. He goes down the line and reading it best. Floating back there by himself is Brennan Stasevich. Immediately attacks the corridor. Centrally gives it to Zorko. Handball to the run of McLuggage from the centre circles to right half forward. Fort spoiled by Moore. Then at ground level, Hoskin Elliott's handball turned over. Fletcher gets involved. Caught Moore over the ball. He tapped it out to Pendlebury at left half back. Pies with some running. The handball cut off by Dev Robertson. Hacked out of midair inside 50 at the feet of Darcy Cameron. He gathers. He's tackled. That's holding the ball. It will be a free kick to Brisbane. 45 metres out more or less directly in front. What a tackle from Cam Rayner. The Lions are gathered around him. They're giving it to the Pies players as Rayner will go back and have a shot from 50. Dev Robinson was just outstanding on the penalty handball. He just took that ball and made it his when two Pies guys were hoping to come towards him. The Pies lead the tackle count 41-21, to 21, but that was the best of them for Brisbane. If he takes his allotment, he'll shoot for the lead after the half-time siren. The Lions trail by one point. They've dominated this quarter. Three goals, five for the quarter, and they trail by the point. The Pies yet to register a score. Cam Rayner. From just to the right of centre. As the siren goes for half time. He traverses the 50. Cam Rayner puts the Lions in front at half time by five points. That is a 29 point turnaround from quarter time. They have kept the Pies scoreless in the second turn. 5 8 38 to 5 3 33. Well, uh, didn't it wake up Zane? Oh, look, I tell you what, they are loving every bit of this, the Lions supporters. But just keep a look on the monitors at half time, guys, because I know that the doctors here for Collingwood were looking at an incident off the ball where it looked like there was a bump from Dane Zorko on Bobby Hill. Just see if they replay it at half time because I know the doctors were looking at it. I don't know whether it was necessarily high, but it was a long way from the football. And every time the Zork is involved. It heightens tensions in that regard. Collingwood quickly jogging towards the race where the old social club used to be. And the Lions are getting a, a raucous applause from their supporters down at the western end of the ground as they enter the rooms with a lead at half time. Brisbane kicking four goals, five to Collingwood's nothing in that term. Four, five to Nort. Magpies led it by four goals at quarter time. And now it's the Lions by five points at halftime. Brisbane, 5 8 38. Collingwood, 5 3 33. With Rayner doubling up to become Brisbane's first multiple goal kicker in the game. Singles to Neil, Cameron, and Lester. While for Collingwood, as it stood at quarter time, three goals to Bobby Hill and singles to Jamie Elliott and Reef McInnes. Lions lead it by five points at halftime. How did it happen, Matt Primus and Jeff White? Purely based on the, the toughness of Brisbane, they, they won the contested possession count 43-32, to 32, which was flipped over from the first quarter. I think we spoke about it during the quarter. The clearances turned Brisbane's way. But then the inside 50, so yes, Pies only had two. But in the first quarter, Collingwood had six tackles inside 50 to Brisbane's none. That quarter, Brisbane had five inside 50 tackles to Collingwood's none. I, I know they only had two inside 50s, but Brizzy just got to work. They obviously got a rocket from their coach, and then they knew their standards weren't acceptable. They got at Collingwood, took away their time and space, locked the ball inside 50, and then eventually they overwhelmed the last five or six minutes. They created a lot of shots, and hence why it's game on. Chalk and cheese. First quarter, Collingwood dominated. Brizzy were asleep. Then Brizzy woke up. They got their ball going with their centre bounce and clearance work, and then their small forwards got to work, even though Brizzy couldn't mark the ball. Neil, five possessions in the first quarter, 13 yep. in the second They just quarter. got busy, didn't they? Yeah, and, absolutely. And, you, and, and Pricey spoke about, oh, Collingwood still leading the tackles. That's because they were chasing. They were chasing Brisbane. That, Brisbane turned it on its head in that second quarter. They, they, were winning the, they were winning the clearances. They were getting first to the ball. Their connection, they were coming back into the corridor. They're using the ball extremely well. 
<laughs> oh, I've just got a follow-up text, which is gold, from our person list at the Irish Dancing Contest. <laughs> she, she texts, I think the ABC app is not working in Glasgow. It's saying Brisbane is in front. Zero four three seven 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 four seven seven four. A few more in a moment. But, uh, Jeff, Matt, as I thought you I said something um, wrong then. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. Uh, but they... They just want, and they spread as well. They had no run and spread, as we spoke about when, when Collingwood kicked that goal from a stop play in the forward line. They were flat footed. Nah, not in that that quarter. That second quarter, they were on the move. And there's something they obviously spoke about at quarter time. Hey, we've got to keep moving here. We've got to get some. We've got to get some energy here. We've got to get some flow. You know, if Rayner showing aggression in the forward line, and like you said, they were getting the turnovers in the forward line. Just would have liked to have seen Darcy. We spoke about it, Darcy Moore just. Just clunk a few. Instead of trying to punch it, realise that you got you know you're two on one. It's an advantage for you. Take the mark, use the ball, try and wear them out a little bit. Own possession. Uh, but what a quarter! What a game this has turned out to be. And, and both coaches w- would love the intensity that their teams are showing, but only for a quarter each. And th- that's the doubt coming into them. They're both second guessing themselves a little bit. Who can keep bringing that intensity when they don't have the ball for the next two quarters? Will win this game of footy. Yeah. Uh, Thanks, gentlemen. Five points to lead to Brisbane at half time. After Collingwood led by four goals at quarter time. A few of your messages before we get to, to regular commitments. Uh, the Ellers, family of six North supporters, are headed to Melbourne from Canberra for, for Good Friday footy. So that uh, cues me to give the news of selection tonight if you've missed it. No changes to the North team that lost to Frio last week. Uh, but big ends for the Blues. March Bank. Weedering and Hollands back into the team. And um, when I say Hollands, that's uh, Elijah Hollands. Hollands, yep. So uh, Marshbank, Weedering and E. Hollands in for the Blues. Uh, Young and Kemp admitted, cutting him out with a calf injury. No change for North. So Corby and Kelly will be there for the call at Docklands for the Good Friday game tomorrow. And then our team in the West will bring you Fremantle against Adelaide. No change for the Dockers who are 2-0. and oh. Two and, oh. and uh, for Adelaide, who are 0-2, oh uh, James Borlase and Lockie Scholl come into the team for the dropped Sam Berry and the ankle-hampered Jordan Butts. So two changes for the Crows. So both of those calls coming your way on ABC Sport tomorrow. Around the grounds in the National Rugby League, uh, second half is underway between the Roosters and the Panthers and the reigning Premiers leading there. It's Penrith 14 over the Sydney Roosters 4. In the fourth game of the NBL's Grand Final Series, Jack Jumpers win tonight. Then they've claimed the title. They're trying to defend the island. Uh, what are you? What are you pointing at? It's three points of difference in the third quarter. Yep, that's right. Jack Jump. Jack you you want to do the? You can do it, Jeff. No, well, yeah. Jack Jumpers are on top, fifty-five to fifty-two. Looks like at the six. Is that the six-minute mark of the yep. third quarter? Well done. Yep. Jeff. No, it's it's even now. So they've just scored a three. A three Melbourne point. United. Well, and if, Melbourne United. If, I know Jeff. White's commentary is really good, but if you want to hear the whole game, <laughs> you can hear Chris Robottom and the team calling it on the ABC. I don't want to steal their thunder. Listen, app. Yeah, by the way, probably one of the highlight pieces of Sporting Vision of the week. Yep. That, that game clinching shot. Amazing. Yeah. I know you love your hoops, Whitey. He, so, he shot that from Werribee. Was it? So far away. Uh, I, I'm not as au fait in basketball as I should be. Jack Wiley, was that? I think, yeah, I think, I think, I think so, but yeah, just how far I, it was, nearly half court. Apologies, I've, I've got that wrong. Um, so that's what's happening around the ground. A couple of more texts. And, and thank you. Um, Thursday of the Easter weekend, I, I know it's not technically Easter Thursday, Holy Thursday or Maundy Thursday. Yes, a couple of texts. Thank you indeed, but uh, colloquially, the Thursday of the Easter weekend. But thank you for your messages in that regard. Um, where are the others? Uh, oh, and a couple that still... A slow to get on board with the uh, John Denver stuff. Um, an Essendon supporter text, Brisbane can't even sing an original song, go the Victorian teams. I can't believe that's an Essendon supporter wanting Collingwood to do well. Uh, Ken from Sandringham, one of our texts regularly. Hi, what's the go with the rubbish country road? Why does it keep getting played? Very annoying, says Ken. I was with you early on. I'm starting to come around. It's only taken me two seasons, but, yeah, it's different. Um, Steve from Darwin says, please stop calling them Brizzy. That's a message for you, okay, Matt. No problems. Okay. The Lions or Brisbane. Yeah. <laughs> and Q, you keep bagging out Lockie Neal and the Lions. Just one word of advice, mate. Scoreboard. I don't think I'm bagging him out. I'm just saying for he, he doesn't kick a lot of goals. 
in a midfield group that doesn't kick a lot of goals. I wouldn't call that bagging out. I'd call that an assessment of the way that they go about their football. Yeah. But then he kicked the goal when you said it. Yeah. So that was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's on fire here. Long weekend ahead. And a great game of footy as well. Brisbane have turned it around the second term. Five points the difference going into half time. Let's take a break and be back. ABC Sport at the Gabba Newsroom coming up. ABC News with Glenn Lauder. Australian wine will soon be back on the shelves in China after Beijing lifted tariffs. Here's political reporter Stephanie Boris. The crippling penalties were imposed in 2020 amid a diplomatic stoush between the two countries. Beijing claimed the tariffs were targeting anti-competitive behaviour from the Australian wine industry. But both Labor and the Coalition were always adamant it was an act of political retribution. At the time, Australia was exporting just over $1 billion of wine to China a year. Today, China's government announced it would lift the tariffs on Australian wine offering a potential lifeline to an industry which has been struggling with low prices and global oversupply. The tariffs will be lifted from tomorrow. More than two years after its first hearings, the Royal Commission into Defence and Veterans Suicides has wrapped up. Commissioner Nick Caldas has closed proceedings by saying there's an indisputable link between military service and suicide rates and that the Commission's outcomes shouldn't be ignored, like the reports and inquiries that preceded it. The Commission's final report will be handed down in September, and if you're a veteran or serving member and you or your family need help, you can call Open Arms on 1800 011 046. Tasmanian Senator Tammy Tyrrell has announced she's resigning from the Jackie Lambie network. Senator Tyrrell says she's not being kicked out... But Senator Lambie has suggested that she go her own way. She says she wants to continue to see Jackie and the party succeed and will sit on the crossbench as an independent. The Northern Territory government says police will have the power to intervene if a child's found in the Alice Springs CBD after already being dropped home or to a safe place. The government's imposed a nighttime curfew for people under the age of 18 in response to extreme violence in the town this week, sparked by feuding family groups. The NT Police Commissioner Michael Murphy says officers don't see children on the streets often, again after engaging with them in the first instance. Most children want to get a lift home and they want to go somewhere safe. And once we separate some kids from ringleaders, um, you know, they, they welcome that and actually go back home. And sometimes home might not be the best place for them, so we need to find another safe place. And that's the work that Territory Families have been helping us, the police force down here, with the co-responder model. Investigations are continuing into what caused a container ship to bring down a major bridge in the US city of Baltimore. Here's Thanmai Navada. Salvage crews and accident investigators are working on the scene at the Patapsco River where the Francis Scott Key Bridge once stood in Baltimore. Chair of the National Transportation Safety Board, Jennifer Homendy, says crews have been assessing the damage. They did a walkthrough of the vessel, including the bridge and the engine room. Divers have recovered the bodies of two workers, but the recovery mission doesn't come without challenges. Sonar scans show the vehicles that contain the remaining four bodies could be encased in concrete concrete and other bridge materials. Divers will only return to the water once the debris has been cleared. A tradesman believed to be in his 30s has died after being electrocuted in a roof space in Sydney's north. Police say the accident happened at Manly. Paramedics treated the man at the scene but he was unable to be revived. The death has been referred to Safe Work New South Wales. Jetstar Asia has announced direct flights between Broome and Singapore will restart in June. The Silk Air flights were previously launched in 2018, but ceased shortly afterwards because WA's tourism industry had experienced a drop in spending by overseas visitors. Last year, the Broome International Airport sought Commonwealth support to recommence the flights, the primary barrier being the establishment of border services. Tickets for the new route are on sale, with special one-way fares starting at $145. The Weather Bureau is forecasting fairly settled conditions for much of the country this Easter long weekend. Perth, Adelaide, Melbourne, Canberra, Sydney and Brisbane will see maximum temperatures in the mid to high 20s with plenty of sunshine, while temperatures are expected to be in the low 20s in Hobart. Showers and thunderstorms will continue across the top end, 
Senior Meteorologist Dean Narramore is expecting good weather for the most part. It's going to be a mild to warm and sunny Easter long weekend for much of southern and southeastern Australia. Though there's a chance of showers and thunderstorms across several locations, mostly much of the NT, western and northern parts of Queensland, northern South Australia and western parts of New South Wales, particularly into the weekend. And you've been listening to the latest from ABC News. Time for the family road trip. 98. The big prawn. Ah, yes. Oh, yes. yes. 99. The big mosquito. <laughs> it's a real one. Isn't it? And 100. Easy. The big, big listen, listen app. Of course. Cool. The ABC Listen app has a big array of road trip ready podcasts, radio, audiobooks, music, and sport. Something for everyone. I guess it has to be big to fit in all those podcasts. Aww. For a big selection of audio entertainment, really does. listen big. Download the free ABC Listen app today. This is ABC Sports coverage of the 2024 AFL season. Every match on the ABC Listen app. Look for the AFL button. Lane, a 50 from goal. Breaks a tackle. Doesn't yep. go for the big sticks. Ticks it to Neil. Neil marks in the pocket 40 metres out. He wasn't keen to take the set shot, but he is a class footballer. Ha, ha, ha. There you go. <laughs> he points to the crowd and kicks a much-needed goal for Brisbane, who will be, fortunately, remembered on grand final day. For a couple of 50 metre penalties that he gave away, doesn't go for goal here. Hacked out of midair inside 50 at the feet of Darcy Cameron. He gathers, he's tackled, that's holding the ball. It will be a free kick to Brisbane, 45 metres out, more or less directly in front. Cam Rayner traverses the 50. Cam Rayner puts the Lions in front at half time by five points. That is a 29 point turnaround from quarter time. They have kept the pies scoreless. The 2024 AFL Premiership season. On your radio. ABC Sport Digital. And on the ABC Listen app. Great to have your company to start the Easter long weekend. Quentin Hull and the team for ABC Sport at the Gabba. Collingwood led by four goals at quarter time. But Brisbane kicked four goals, five to nothing. In the second quarter, and it's the Lions leading by five points at the long break. Brisbane 5 8 38 to Collingwood's 5 3 33. Story of the night Bobby Hill lighting up the first term. Deja vu from grand final day. He kicked three goals for the Magpies in that first term, only for Brisbane's hunger and tackling to win their way back into the contest. The inside 50s in the second quarter. Brisbane 21 to Collingwood's. Two clearances to Brisbane in the second quarter. Lions 13, Collingwood 3. So there's a couple of the choice numbers as to how the Lions have fought their way back into this one. Magpies have just re-emerged from the rooms, having taken the message from Craig McRae at halftime. Here come the Lions as well. I'm calling alongside Michael Price, former number one draft pick Jeff White, former port captain and coach Matt Primus, Zane Bojack keeping you updated from the boundary couple of numbers as we roll into this imminent third term at 35 years of age Dane Zorka continues to be such an important player for Brisbane he leads all comers with 20 disposals 20 possessions for the Zork Lockie Neal has 19 and 12 each for Brisbane's Wilmot, Berry, Dunkley and McCarthy Collingwood's uh, Tom Mitchell went cold in that second term uh, well he had 8 possessions 8 of 16 that probably doesn't you know, numerically that's not cold but he was very influential in that first quarter and was probably doing more mopping up because of the trend of the game Matt he still leads the way with 16 Noble's got 16 uh, Nikos, Nick Dacos with 14 Jacos has got 13 and Pendlebury 12 overall disposals Brisbane 28 more at 198 to 170. Contested wise, Brisbane plus three. Uh, and the inside 50s, 35 to 16 across the two quarters in favour of the locals. Yeah, it's a, a stark difference, isn't it? And, and Brisbane uh, slowed the game down, a stoppage game, a territory game, and took away the run and stun of, uh, of Collingwood. And as you mentioned with Mitchell's first quarter cue, he, he was doing some mopping up because the ball was just flowing up and down the ground. It wasn't a stoppage game, but Brisbane were able to force it. Sorry, not Brisbane. Brisbane 
or the Lions were able to force it into a, into a stoppage game and that took away any of the run and the, the carry that Collingwood had in the first quarter. So I'm sure Craig McCray will be talking to his players and saying, especially their midfield group, we need to win some of this ball uh, inside and take the strength away from Brisbane and yeah. give our forwards an opportunity because they, was, they were starved there and uh, there wasn't any flowing movement of Collingwood in that second and, quarter. And what was dangerous for, the, for Brisbane too was their half-backs. The half-backs came off. So the exit was away from goals but they had that support, running support. So the forwards for Collingwood just have to sharpen up there because they got a lot of exits from the back half of their centre mm. circle because purely because our half-back's coming off the line. Keep your texts coming on 0437 774 774. Please send us your name and where you're texting from. Love this one. Hey, guys, I'm listening all the way from Hungary. Loving the broadcast. As a Cats fan, can't say I'm not happy seeing Collingwood hopefully going (laughs) 0-4. Might surprise you to know that we actually have a footy club here. The Budapest Bats. What a name. Cheers from Zoltan. What a name. (laughs) Zoltan Zoltan. from Hungary, a member of the Budapest Budapest Bats. Bats. (laughs) Great logo, that one. What would they thought their song be? That would be song (laughs) be. It's one of those great bits of... You know, European oh, sort of yeah. geographical trivia. You can make yourself sound smart if you say, "Oh, that they were, they were two countries originally, uh, two two cities, Buda and Pest, and they came together to form the one city. So they called it Budapest." Learn something new every day. There you go. I, I did not you. know that Buda and Pest had the merged entity of the cats <laughs> playing for them. Good on you, Zoltan. Um, Dean text go Brisbane. Dockers fans are looking forward to the 2024 number one draft pick, courtesy of the upcoming Wooden Spooners, <laughs> Collingwood. Oh, Getting to that point of the season where draft manipulations and where picks are going and all that type of stuff. Okay. Five points to lead to Brisbane as we start the second half of this highly important round three game where the Premiers are 0 3 and the team they beat are 0 2. Michael Price. Mason Cox versus Oscar McInerney. It falls in the path of Cox. He taps it down to Dago. He immediately shunted off the ball. It was Dunkley who dealt with him. The ball spilled into the hands of Mitchell. He's tackled into the ground, and the umpire will come in and ball it up just adjacent to the centre circles. Throws it up now. Cox gets it down clearly, but it's cut off by Dunkley. Handball out to Archie. Onto the boot immediately to half forward. Hipwood plays the role of spoiler. Roving beautifully. Neil gave the handball to Charlie Cameron. Just outside attacking 50. It spills towards the boundary line. McLuggage gathered. Turned it around the corner. Cut off by Frampton. Good defensive mark on the arc of 50 and the boundary line. He's hemmed in. He's Dunkley. Had nine contested possessions for this game already. He's been outstanding. Frampton kicks to the wing. Goes beyond the pack. On the deck, Andrews picks up for Brisbane. But he's tackled over the line by Elliott of Collingwood. Throw in on halfway on the outer side. And they needed that lift in the second quarter, Q, and that's where they got it from. Lockie Neal's had 11, and Dunkley's had nine contested possessions. Brisbane's won the last four games between these two teams at the Gabba. As the 246ers go at it, Cox taps it back, boundary side, McCluggage tackles McRae over the paint. So we'll see another boundary throw in. Oh, Mitch Turner out. New man out west has sent me a text with the Budapest Bats logo. Oh, you... it's it's a Brisbane well. Heat version of of, of Batman. Oh, oh, oh. It's, it's teal. <laughs> Off hands, Lockie Neal kicks it towards half forward. Eric Hipwood drops a put, but it's made good by Bailey. Handball back to Zorko. Little nine iron cut off there by Darcy Moore. Not the distance. The handball into the corridor. Dugowie. Noble into the centre. Under pressure now, McCreary. Now running up to half forward from 55, McCreary. He goes through, goes all the way. Pies back in front by a point early in the third quarter. 6 3 39 plays 5 8 38. Live footy on a Thursday night here on ABC Sport. That's where they want to get the turnovers in the half-back line, and they got it then, and that was because of the balance and the spread that they had, Collingwood, and then the wave that they nearly stuffed it up with that hand pass to the middle, but the McQuarrie was able to get it off his toes and a great finish. Yeah, the kick from Brisbane needed to be deeper, didn't it? It yeah. was just that little chip kick, and Darcy Moore read that beautifully. He was very happy, hands in the air when they scored that goal. He started that movement. Zane Bojack on the boundary. Yeah, Bobby Hill's had some problems with his fingers. The medicos have just attended to it. He actually had some tape that they've just cut. Okay, keep a close eye on it. And Hipwood takes that mark. They don't, they don't have that rush. He's got to clunk those. He's got to clunk those. Taking one mark for the evening, Eric Hipwood. Yeah. 
Pies back in front. That's their first score since the 29-minute mark of the first term. Centre bounce. Rumble's defensive side for Brisbane, then towed to half forward, but only Pendlebury there to tow it back towards the wing. Beautifully gathered by New Pie Schultz. Hand passes to Hoskin Elliott on the wing. He kicks forward, but Andrews at the front of the pack. He's too tall for McInnes and Elliott. Takes the mark, kicks it close to the boundary, but Berry takes the grab before the paint. He's beyond left half back. Jared Berry kicks to the wing. Rayner takes the grab in space. Plays on. Left foot chip. Not a great kick. It rolls along the deck. Danaher picks it up. Frampton accosts him and makes the tackle. No prior ball up. That was a great tackle. What a sensational tackle. Ball they had a man on too. 60 from Brisbane's goal at left half forward. I thought he ducked his head into that too, Joe, as the umpire throws it up. McInerney and Cox in a tangle. The ball lands between the two of them. It's like two praying mantis in a tangle and the ball will be thrown up by the umpire. Lockie Neal and Mason <laughs> Cox pushes Neal out of the way to, so the umpire can access the ball. Now the two big fellows again. Cox fists it forward. It's cut off there by Zorko. Immediately tackled into the ground. Ball stuck underneath him. Violent tackle by Dagoe. Violent but fair. The umpire will come in and throw it up. The story of Mason Cox with his eyewear, he needs a guest appearance for the Budapest Bats. <laughs> <laughs> it could work out that way off the fist of Cox towards the boundary line. Once again, Zorko gets in front of Dagoe. He gathers the ball beautifully. He caught one for his trouble too. He'll get a free kick. A rarity for the Zork. 45 degree kick finds Jared Berry on the logo. Handball back to Zorko. Knocked over as he kicks forward to Danaher. Marks it 55 out. 45 degree angle to the left. It's in Joe's wheelhouse. He comes back. We're right behind it in the commentary box. The importance of Zorks too. Yeah, they, they, those first two stoppages there, the Collingwood to continue to leave Zorko off the back of the stoppage. So they're backing in their game plan early in the third quarter. But it's a common out. You know, we, we've seen Zork off the half back line so many times, Kieran. And that's what they're using him tonight. They used the ball so well. Joe Danaher, only the five disp- disposals this evening and the one behind. Comes in from 55. He chips it forward, trying to pass off hands of the pack row by Berry. Tackled. He did a 360 holding the ball. That is great awareness from Collingwood right there. Yeah. Great awareness. And John Noble comes up with the free kick. He spent so much time around this footy club with his dad, David, responsible for bringing the likes of uh, Lockie Neal and Charlie Cameron to the club. He's kicked it out in the full, though. <laughs> kicked it out of bounds on the full, and it will be a free kick to Jack Payne of Brisbane between wing and left half forward. A big man from Noosa. He's going to kick Brisbane back into attack. Kicks it to the pocket. Oh, there's about eight that fly. McInerney's juggling, claiming the mark nonchalantly, and the umpire agrees. <laughs> I reckon everyone had a piece of that, but the big O must have had first and telling pieces, or all thereof. He's been paid the mark, and Cox is now standing the mark a couple of metres in from the boundary, 30 out in the left forward pocket. They had all their four towards. They're Ruckman and their three tall forwards there, and he was still able to claim the mark. He plucked it, didn't he? Oscar McInerney to kick a goal this year. Needs to kick a score to either level or put Brisbane in front. He tries for the set shot on the right foot. It's going across the face, lands in the opposite pocket off hands. Dacos the road, that's Nick for Collingwood. Hands it to Maynard. Under pressure, toes it along the deck. Crowd want no intent and the up says ball it in. Out of play, Brisbane still in attack. It's definitely a tactic, the, tall, the tall, three tall forwards. They're just bombing in on their heads and then getting numbers there and trying to lock the ball in and, and stifle Collingwood's run from their forward 50. It's the Pies by a point. Early in the third term, the throw in 45 out from Brisbane's goal. Cox versus Fort. Cox just slaps it straight up in the air. A second hit into the path of Archie. He fists it forward. Rayner, handball out there to Bailey. Tackled across the boundary line by Howell. Oh, holding the it. ball. Well, it, he, his intent was nothing else but to go towards the boundary line and how help him there. He has the free kick in the left back pocket for Collingwood to relieve some pressure. Wheels around onto his right. Kicks just short of centre wing. Cox at the front of the pack. Couldn't take it. Rode by McInerney. Tackled by Cox. Thrown to the ground. Ball underneath the pair of them. And they hair off. Free kick. Looks like. No, no any it's just time. a it's any max time. mass exodus towards the uh, interchange benches that the umpire is going to throw it up. Yeah, stoppage near the gate. So about three changes. Collingwood by a point. 
Ball up on the outer wing. Rove by McRae of Collingwood. Toes at the half forward met by Payne of Brisbane. Kicks it back from whence it came. But straight to Noble of the Pies. Hand pass to Nick Dacos. Hands it to Pendleby. Pendleby chips short to McRae. Finlay McRae for the Pies in the centre square. Chips infield marked by Maynard. Kick and a half from goal but right in the corridor. Maynard goes short with his kick to Pendlebury. Pendlebury marks it and kicks it to left half forward. Marked by Quainer. 65 out. Very short pass, just gathered by Elliott, 50 from goal. No play on, says the umpire. Elliott does, gets on his left, kicks to the pocket, looking for Majacek, goes beyond that contest. Hold on. Free kick, Majacek being held. Free kick, Collingwood. Andrews, the offender. That was certainly something they didn't do in the second quarter, Matty, where they, when they won the ball back, they took some poise, yep. and they did that just then. Even though it was a chip out to Elliott outside forward 50, Outside, uh, outside the forward 50, and he did mark it. Still, they had the, they had the poise to chip it around and own possession. Setting up for the right-footed snap punt. Majacek from 40 out returns Collingwood to a seven-point advantage. Magpie, seven goals, three, 45. Lead Brisbane, 5-8. 38, nine minutes played third quarter. Zane Bojack on the boundary for ABC Sport. Yeah, Jack Crisp has been activated. And from my understanding, Craig McRae was pointing at John Noble. And John Noble's being told by the coach now, yep, he's he bit you're out, mate. Sorry about that. He's 19 touches to half time. I thought he's been, yeah. he's been pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, doubting Zaino, but that is interesting. He's, he's the leading possession winner for Collingwood, John Noble. Maybe they... It's cri- it's crisp. Crisp. He's gone back. He's gone straight in the centre. So maybe they need a, that bigger body. Wanting to break the lines. Zaino? It's McRae. He's, he, McRae. Okay. In fact, Finley McRae's come on to the back bench. Yeah, thanks, Zaino. There you go. We're back into the middle. Cameron versus Mac- McInerney. McInerney got it down to Neil. Tackled by Pendlebury and holding the ball. They're back on the pies. They flick the switch again at the start of this third term after a scoreless second quarter. Scott Pendlebury has the ball just in front of the set of circles. Wheels around onto the left, kicks it into the man on the mark. Goes out to the hands of McLuggage, into the face of Lockie Neal, in fact, who's still down on the ground. McLuggage kicks it to right half forward, holding free kick to Charlie Cameron against Maynard. 60 out, O'Neill, uh, sorry, Lockie Neal is back up, but jogging, he's limping. Holding which is not ankle. good news yeah. for the Lions as Charlie Cameron has an 80 from goal. Chips it to the arc of 50. It was a floating telegraph kick to McLuggage and Dugowie dealt with it. Punched it over the boundary line. Zane Bojack's down there. Oh, Lockie Neal, he's in all sorts of hurt out there. Pricey, he can't hardly run, but he's trying to, to stick it out. He's trying to get some feeling back in that ankle. I reckon he's rolled it and run oh, it out. Yeah, rolled yeah. ankle when he's trying to spoil it. So he's trying to run a bit of feeling back into it. Dunkley Rose 60 out for Brisbane. Kick to the forward line intercepted by Howe with Collingwood. Gathered on the bounce hands to Quainer. Quainer kicks to right half back and Hill marks in space. The Magpies fans get excited at the Gabba as Hill chips it to the wing for Elliott. Two of the forwards well downfield to get the footy for the Pies and that's where the momentum just dies down for a moment. Elliott decides to conservatively kick back so Quainer takes the mark, kicks it around the edge of the centre square to Crisp, who has been injected into the game for Finlay McRae. Jack Crisp, ex lion Been Collingwood for a long time now. Kicks forward. Cox in the chop. Couple to beat. Couldn't do so. Ball to ground level. Lester Roves. Three pies around him. Wrap him up. No prior ball up. So Finlay McRae subbed out and Jack Crisp subbed into the game for the Magpies. He's playing his 218th consecutive game for the Magpies as well. Jack Crisp, the former line, as the umpire throws it up immediately, it's stuck under several players. And Will Hoskin Elliott throws it back to the umpire. He'll throw it up 40 metres out from the Collingwood goal. Off the hands of McInerney, Jared Berry kicks it forward. Running with the flight, Dunkley was a great mark, Jeff White. Handball to the runner, Berry. Down the line. It advantaged Darcy Moore. Brilliantly done by Fort, who flicked it forward by hand. Now it's roved by Devin Robertson. Handball back there to Bailey. Now it's flicked back from McLuggage to Bailey. Under pressure. They're under heaps of pressure. Robertson tackled by Dugowie, but breaks the tackle. He goes for a 1-2. Desperate stuff. The handball now goes to Darcy Fort. He palms off. His uh, opponent in Quaynor. The handball out wide to Bailey. Then to Neal, still battling on. 
flicks it forward by Hannah McLuggage, tackled to the ground by Jeremy Howe. The ball falls for the Pies. Nick Dacos drills one to Bobby Hill on the wing. Oh, oh, trying this, to get it long, but this, he couldn't. This tastes better than any treat you're going to get over the weekend. It's humming now at the Gabba. To start Easter weekend on ABC Sport, Pies lead by seven points. And Pendlebury and Zorko were having a go at each other a moment ago. Neil's marked at 70 out for Brisbane. Hand pass to McCluggage. He hits the chest of Danaher. Marks at 40 out. And just in the periphery of everything that's going on. And these two teams really going at it at the contest. 35-year-old Dane Zorko was having it to do with 36-year-old Scott Pendlebury. You reckon they've been around long enough? That shows you what it means if you're 0-2 and 0-3. And Absolutely. And both teams were gassed then. It was just whichever one had the best composure. Brizzy on the third occasion I have, have the best composure going inside 50. Gives Danaher a shot on goal. One of those Joe moments at the Gabba. He'll either lift or deflate the joint with one kick. From 45 on the left. Up, 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 she goes! Danaher's first of the night. A point for difference. Collingwood 45, Brisbane 44. 14 minutes played, third turn. Yeah, sometimes it's a game of inches, isn't it? Bobby Hill had that mark right on the boundary line. Excuse the kick just a little bit, and Harris Andrews cut it, cut it off. Elliott was clear on the half forward line, would have just gone over his head, would have gone in an open goal. Turnover and great kick there from McCluggage inside forward 50 to Danaher, but goal umpire didn't move then, did he? Big Joe, leading goal kicker at the club. Last year played every game, and that's now five goals for the season. And this one's living up to the expectation. Hope you're enjoying it with us on ABC Sport. Yet another lead change, and the Lions one behind Collingwood on 45 to 44. We're back into the middle. McInerney slaps it forward. Dagoe retreats, gathers the ball. He's taken high by Dev Robertson. No umpire says fair tackle. He'll come in and ball it up just forward to the centre circles by about 10 metres towards the Lions goal. Off hands, McLuggage Rove kicks it to the arc of 50. Beautifully read by Braden Maynard for the Pies. Immediately he wheels out to the left wing. He looks for Josh Dacos, spoiled by his opposite number in Jared Berry, who dives on the ball. Dacos dives on him, holding the agate. Umpire will come in. Too keen to get there. Dacos played it beautifully. Handball off to Noble. Noble traverses the boundary line. Elliot flies. Starshevich spoils. Crowd wanted out of bounds on the full, but it will be a throw in 70 metres out from the Collingwood goal at left half forward. Both teams are bringing the heat. When they don't have the ball, both teams are on like the first and second quarter, but they're both giving it everything in this first 10 minutes. Matt Primus with you at the Gabba. A point the lead to the Collingwood's Magpies, the Premiers here. Looking to run a, uh, end a run of outs at the Gabba against Brisbane. Neil hand passes backwards from the stoppage to Rainer. No creative handball. That's out of play. To the man, I, I just look at him now with a shaven head and playing across half back for, for Brisbane. There's shades of Martin Pike about Brandon Stasevich now. He's kept it, didn't he? Yeah. He's shaved it and he's kept it. Playing his 100th game, he's made his debut back in, in 2018. When others were leaving, he came because Uncle Craig was here and he stayed. Brandon Stasevich, originally out of the West. Boundary throw in Collingwood and attack, no clearance. And we'll do it again. Listen, looking at the vision a little bit earlier on, he was handed his jumper on the first game by Jamie Charman. Wow. A couple of good-looking good, good looking young roosters there. One point at the margin, the, fl- uh, the Pies lead this one. At left half forward, it comes off the hands to Jared Berry. He overruns it, goes back and has another crack at it. Joined by Wilmot, crisp for Collingwood. Tumbles it by, ha- uh, by foot. Towards the top of the square. Zorko tapped it in the path of Fletcher. Immediately, he's under pressure. Kicks it towards the wing. Beautifully handled by Quainor under pressure. And then he let loose the handball. Still in Collingwood's favour. Crisp handballs it over to Josh Dacos. 70 from goal. He kicks it to the top of the square. Harris Andrews, one hand, taps it down. Rove by Schultz, the new pie. Gets it to Hill. Hill from 20 metres. Hooks it around. That's not his fourth goal. It's one behind. Two points the margin, 46 plays 44 in favour of the Pies. Zane Bojack's on the boundary. Yeah, Lockie Neal's gone down into the, the rooms. Obviously, uh, that ankle's got the better of him. He's getting a bit of treatment. He stayed out there a long time. Keep an eye on it, Zane. Oh, Fletcher marks the inbound. He's at D50 left, half back for Brisbane. Chips it short to McCluggage. Two goals, one to Collingwood this quarter. One goal to Brisbane. 
two points to lead to the Pies. McCluggage down the wing. Andrews flew, couldn't mark. How road, but tackled. Oh, Somehow got a hand pass clear to Noble. Looks in field. Now gives the hand pass to Degoe. Degoe punches it back to him without taking possession. Very cleverly done. Noble with an underground hand pass to Majacek. Wobbly kick to the pocket. Somehow it stayed in. And Hill takes the mark. How did Collingwood conjure that? Hill chips it around the boundary line. He's got a man free. And it's marked in the pocket by Lipinski. They're yeah, turning their heads here, Lions. There's so many walking around. They've got to be on their toes. Well, sheer creativity from the Magpies on the wing. Found a way to get the ball forward. And now Pat Lipinski, who was the sub in the grand final, but played most of it because of Lockie Murphy's concussion. On his left, snaps around the body near side for a point. And at the 19-minute mark of the third term, Collingwood lead by three points at 7.547 to 6.844. It's the Lions scoreless in the last few minutes as well. Collingwood bring the ball. Sorry, the Lions bring the ball back in. Collingwood intercepted. It's towed forward by Josh Dacos. Majacek couldn't pick it up. At ground level, Lipinski taps it back towards the boundary line. Both Majacek and Josh Dacos take it over and will be thrown in about 40 metres out <coughs> from the Collingwood goal at left forward pocket. Collingwood by three points, 19 gone in the third term. It's live footy on ABC Sport. Both Ruckman make their way inside, attacking 50 for the Pies. Darcy Cameron for Collingwood and Darcy Ford for the Brisbane Lions. Cameron in front for the Pies, taps it into the path of Elliott. Beautiful handball over the top to Lockie Schultz. He drops it. He's under pressure from Jasper Fletcher. The ball spills out in front of Bobby Hill. Once again, Starsevic involved. It's towed out of the pack there by Crisp. Into the hands of Schultz from 35. He hooks it around the body on the goal line. Has that been awarded a mark against Harris Andrews? They'll review this, I think, to was see Maya... whether it was controlled beyond the line. Well, it was Majacek who took, uh, put the diving effort in, but there's I a think conference it was over on the line. Yeah, clearly a behind, isn't it? Yeah. Umpire has signalled that it is a review, and we'll have a look at that at the moment. It looks pretty clear. Oh, he's... Well, the, the boundary oh. and goal umpire are in the perfect position, and they've got a better view than the camera angle. Well, if he hasn't juggled it, it's a chance. But his feet are... Yeah. The, the boundary ump is two metres away. The goal umpire is three metres away. He's taken it in one and, and this, and you can, Yeah. If, if two it. sets of human eyes employed to do this job can't do this better Reviews than the camera... Looking at this angle, we can see the ball is marked before completely crossing the... So they've paid it a mark. Oh. So it wasn't juggled over the line. And if we have a look at on the replay, that's a fair call as well. The ball obscured by the posts and is the body of Brody Majacek. So he's going to have a shot at goal. He's going to be taken all the way to the boundary, a couple of metres from the behind post. He turns. The goal is to his left. He's back to the boundary line. He curls it around. He kicks his second. The Pies get their eighth. They extend their lead. They're back to a nine-point lead here at the Gabba. 21 gone, third term. 8-5-53, play 6-8-44. Zane Bojack's on the boundary. Yeah, Majacek kicked that goal while Lockie Neal was off the field. He's just run back on and back in the middle. Let's see how that ankle is. Thanks, a -Note. Good work by Lockie, Lockie Schultz then. He had an opportunity where he fumbled it, but he stayed in the contest. He was the one that able got that left, left foot snap that ended up with Majacek marking, but he stayed in the contest. He kept his feet. That's what they want. They want that when it's in the Collingwood forward line, they want that pressure from their small forwards. Uh, absolutely. Nine to five inside 50s, and, and Collingwood have been able to lock the ball in because their midfielders are giving them better s supply than what they did in the second quarter. Jeff White, Matt Primus with you on ABC Sport. Collingwood 0 and 3. Only one team in the AFL era has made finals from 0 4 or worse. They're a pretty good team. Collingwood, but history's again them if they can't win tonight. Centre stoppage, clearance to the Magpies. Cox gets a boot to half forward, but Leicester gets under a floater to take the mark for Brisbane. Kicks it to right half back. Fletcher marks in space. He's got Answorth running from the pocket in support. Gives the hand pass. Kick to the wing. Hold on. Pushing the back. Pushing the downfield. back. Downfield. I was following the footy with the binoculars, so that's obviously oh, no, taking it back. It's, it's going to go all the way back to Answorth. On the right half back flank, Noah Answorth. Only played the four games last year. 
Didn't play in the grand final. Kicks to centre half back for Wilmot. Marks and completes the switch to left half back where Andrew saunters to space to mark. Chipped it to the corridor for Archie. Marks it near the bullseye in the cricket pitch area of the Gabba. 33,000 plus in the house tonight. Hand passes to Andrews. Andrews kicks wide. Marked by Stasevich forward of the wing. Slow and deliberate build up for Brisbane to go forward. Stasevich kicks for Danaher. Had his arms chop. Oh, no free kick. Frantum did enough to get that spoil out of play. Hey, I thought he could. There, there I call it as I see it. No, I think sometimes he can play for him, Joe, but I thought yep. on that occasion there he was definitely taken out of the contest. Well, as he was putting his hands to the ball, he couldn't get them there. So the umpire is going to throw it in 40 metres out from the Brisbane goal. Left forward pocket. They're trailing by nine points, 22 and a half gone in this third term. It's a short throw in. Slap down in front of Danaher. It's going to fall to Archie. Got the handball at the Rainer taken high. No, they called for it. The umpire said no. Quainer picked it up. Kicked it around his body. It's cut off by Harris Andrews. Forward to the wing. Handball to McInerney. Then over to Dunkley. Retreating to Payne. Back on the wing to Andrews by hand. Now forward to Stasovic. He took him on. He took Josh Dacos on. He tackled him over the boundary line. Me thinks that was prior opportunity. Should have been holding the ball, but it will be a throw-in just forward of centre wing. Their forward pressure on getting up to the receiver is what they had in the first quarter. They've got it back again, the, the Pies. Jeff White with you. Boundary throw-in. Rolls towards the boundary line. Neil looks like he's running on that uncle OK now. Gathers the ball, hands it to Dunkley. Dunkley tackled by Crisp. Turnover. Picked up by Mitchell of the Pies. Gave it to Dacos. Infield kick is pinched by Rayner of Brisbane. Launches a long ball to fall forward. Off the pack. Ball goes to Dick. First to meet it is Nick Dacos of Collingwood. Finds a path. Kicks to the middle of the ground. Big two on two here. Payne, Payne makes the fist. Pendlebury the road. Pendlebury kicks to the advantage at half forward. And McCreary had it. Lost it under the pressure of Leicester. Who right. comes again? Great tackle from Froggy. That, oh. That's the best one on one contest all night. Leicester forces a ball up on attacking 50 for Collingwood. He was out then, McCreary. He's what a kick from Pendlebury too. He's got the pace, McCreary, but the veteran just kept up with him. I don't know how he did it, but he did. This is going to be a hotly contested ball up here on the arc of 50. In fact, the umpire's going to hold it up because the Ruckman was still going at each other. He throws it up. Off hands, McCreary again. Was he taken high? He was. The tackle slipped up there by Big Payne. And Bo McCreary's oh. going to have a shot 40 metres out, 45 degrees to the left. Definitely high. Definitely high. It was Darcy Wilmot with the right hand that slipped up. Not Jack Payne. But once again, Pricey, the movement. When they're in, on top of their Ford 50 or when they're inside their Ford 50, they've got movement. McQuarrie again. We saw it in the first quarter, didn't we, Matty? Just on the move. Yeah, just, mate, mate. Just generates that, that movement. Makes defenders and midfielders nervous, and that's how they got the free kick. He's got 1-1 one, one with his five disposals, Bo McCreary. Comes into the hoots of the Gabba crowd, releases from 45. It's a good-looking kick. That's a goal for Collingwood. Extends their lead yet again. It's out to a 15-point margin. 26 gone in the third term. 9-5-59 plays 6 8 44. Zane Bojack's on the boundary. Yeah, Jack Crisp had to run off the field. He had blood pouring out of the bridge of his nose, and the doctors are still attending to him now, but uh, they've been able to stop it. They're just trying to patch him up. He had a head clash down here on the, on the, on the wing with Dunkley. So we went to tackle Dunkley's head, hit the back of Dunkley's head. That's where that blood reel came from. But once again, Collingwood on the move with those stop plays. But what about the effort from McQuarrie? Not only did he with Leicester have that one-on-one -on -one contest that was absolutely brilliant but on the move with the, with the uh, s secondary stop straight away if you've got a ticket at the school end you're dudded tonight score going to the western end <laughs> yeah. 13 goals to the school end 2 <laughs> Collingwood couldn't kick a score going the other way in the second term but they're back to their ways of the first quarter where they kicked 5 well, they've now kicked four in this quarter and lead the game by 15 points. Centre bounce, Collingwood clearance. Nick Dacos coming off half-back, picks it up. Boots a high ball to the wing on the head of Elliott. Spoiled away by Wilmot. But uh, Dugowie roves. Hand passes to Mitchell, 55 out. Hand pass to Elliott, 45 out. Elliott shoots and scores! And the Magpies! The Magpies have kicked five goals to one in the third turn. And you mentioned it, Q. 
Nick Dacos off the half-back line. He was the one that set that up then. He came in off the half-back line. The, the exit came off the backside of the of the circle. And away they went. Great clearance from the pies. Great finish from Elliott from the pocket. Jamie Elliott now has two goals. And the, the chant rings around the Gabba yet again. Magpies 10-5, 65, Lions 6 eight, 44. Similar to the grand final. It's such a seesawing. Pies got up, Brisbane came back, Pies got up. It's just a great game, this. Well, Collingwood are taking away Brisbane's strength. 12-6 to six clearances, and they're kicking their goals from stoppages rather than general play like they were the first quarter. They're, they're taking it away and giving Brisbane what they don't want. Has Lockie Neal been hampered while momentum's changed? He's still out. He's out there, so... Leading question. Yeah, I, I, I think... Well, no, he had... He had time off the ground with his ankle. Yeah. 21 points to the margin. The Pies leading it. Umpire with a secondary bounce in the middle of the ground. Cox picks it up. Tackled by McInerney. He lets loose the ball. Enter Bailey. Gave the handball off to Danaher inside the centre square. He tumbles his left foot towards half forward. Hipwood fell over while Howell dealt with the ball. Got the handball out to Dugowie. Dugowie hampered there by Dunkley. Still got the left foot towards the wing. That's a really good defensive mark. No, it's not. The third juggle was dropped. Umpire let it go. It spills in the path there of Bailey. Gave the handball back to Jared Berry. He kicks long inside 50. Through hands of Charlie Cameron. Spoiled by Darcy Moore. Great. Through the goal. That was a great spoil by the skipper again. And the Lions have to settle for another behind. 20 points the margin. 65 plays 45. Three minutes left in the third term on ABC Sport. Thursday night footy from the Gabba as Darcy Moore runs beyond the goal mouth. Long inbound for Collingwood. On the head of Maynard, punched away by Payne of Brisbane. Cox roves, but the big mace can't get clear. He's tackled by McInerney, and we'll see those pair go at it in the ball up. Share it down. Neil under the contest, jumped on by Pendlebury. Was it in the back? Nope. I'm really loving Mason ball Cox. Up. Every time he's gone to a stop play, he's punching it forward. Getting it out in the circle. He did it just then. He's done it several times. This time McInerney gets it to his toe. Kicks Brisbane into attack. Hold on. There's a whistle at the stoppage. Play and, down. And Lockie Neal is down. Zane, what did you see? Uh, I feel like he collided with Scott Pendlebury, but I haven't seen a replay yet, but he's, he's feeling at his ribs. It's the back of the stop play where the replay was. Just trying to see. And it's a short, sharp jab to the guts. I didn't see that. Here it is. Anyway, ball's gone into attack for Brisbane. Roving McCluggage. Hand pass to Charlie Cameron. Fumble. Regather. Gubber needs this. Brisbane needs this. Cameron misses. To the left. In a scenario where he would have kicked a goal on many other occasions just to behind. 19 the margin in favour of Collingwood. Yeah, it, probably a fine. It was all a flat from a week, but it was just a little tap in the gut. Oh, oh Pendles, he was in the Zorko a moment ago, so he's, Wasn't he's a targeting fist, the senior though. men, isn't he? Yeah. Wasn't a fist, though. It was a, it's a palm into the stomach. Yeah, to a judo chop. As it goes from yeah. Jeremy Howe, long kick towards centre wing. It's got free kick. It's going to go to Collingwood. It's going to go to Reef McInnes at the front of the pack. He's pointing. He's going to go long. He's just wide of the logo. He doesn't go long. Deceived everybody. A little chip short to Jordan Dugowie. There's only a couple of minutes left of the quarter. The sign's being held up on the Collingwood bench. I don't know whether the number two sign was for the minutes or kick it to number two. Right. <laughs> Dugowie's there, kicking it inside 50. Wide to the pocket. Who's on top of it? Cox hand passes it out from the scrimmage to McCreary. Snaps from the boundary. Oh, good effort. Not enough curl on it from 40 out. It's a behind. Pies back out by 20 at 66 to 46. And oh, wow. Scott Pendlebury is given... Lockie Neal's abs a high five. Yeah. Yep. Or a low five, as the case may be, or a mid five. It's one of those little base of the palm smotes into the stomach. Long kick, exiting kick. It's going to be a free kick, and it's going to go to Collingwood. He's pointing in that direction. It's going to go off the ball. A bit of lack of discipline here. Well, it's a world of semantics, but that was off the ball, and whether he's got a fist or a palm, he can't do that. Yep, that's true. Billy Frampton was the recipient of the free kick forward of the wing. Now he kicks long. Into the pocket, off the hands of McInerney, straight over the boundary. We'll get a throw in. In the left forward pocket for Collingwood. They're leading by 20 points with 32 and a half minutes gone. The Pies are happy with that. They just kick it with a skinny oh. side. And the Hall of Fame legend in waiting, Scott Pendlebury, is getting booed. 
as his image um, appears on the big screen at the Gabba. Gee, things can get funny when you see grand final teams come up against each other again. One of the great likeable guys of all times getting booed. Boundary throw in, Collingwood in attack, Bailey with the clearance, but he's ushered over the line by the tackle of McCreary. Boundary throw in at left half forward. About 40 seconds left in this third quarter. Collingwood, having entered at five in arrears, now lead by 20, having kicked five goals three to Brisbane's one goal two. Throw in, left half forward. Off the hands of McInerney, it's taken by Neil immediately into the ground by Schultz. Ball spills away from the pack. Lipinski through his hands. It's travelled about a metre, still plenty of bodies all around it. Deb Robertson now extracts a handball. It's cut off there at ground level by Dugowie. He gets the handball out to Noble. Tackle as he tries to kick the ball. It just slewed off his foot over the boundary line, but it will be a throw in as it hit the ground before the line. About 70 metres from the Collingwood goal. I just saw it, I can lip read, I reckon, and Scott Pendlebury <laughs> just apologised profusely to Lockie Neal. I don't think that's going to help him <laughs> when the, the match review have a look at it. But he is a nice guy, isn't he? Boundary throwing, close to three-quarter time. Neal tackled off it by Schultz. Degowie wins the crumb. Ineffective hand pass is tapped back towards the boundary line. And that is it for the third term. And Collingwood will turn for home. Looking for their first four points of 2024. Leading by 20 points. Before I give the score, I've just got to put the binoculars up one more time because... There's a couple of hoots and hollers, sets of players here. Harris Andrews is having a chat to Brody Meyer. Check. There's a little bit of a bump and you know, chat going on. And yeah, there's some feeling out there, that's for sure, at three quarter time with Collingwood leading by 20 points. The Magpies, 10 goals, 6, 66. Lead the Lions, 6 goals, 10, 46. Three goals for Bobby Hill, all coming in the first quarter for Collingwood. Bo McCreary has two. Brody Meyercheck has two. Jamie Elliott has two. Reef McInnes has kicked the other goal for the Magpies. Why for Brisbane? Cam Rayner, the only multiple goal kicker. He's got a couple. And singles for Joe Danaher, Lockie Neal, Charlie Cameron and Ryan Lester. The two teams that fought out one of the great grand finals of modern times last September, both looking for their first premiership points of the season to start Easter round on this Thursday night. Brisbane 0-2, Collingwood 0-3, but it's the Magpies leading by 20 points at three-quarter time. Big finish coming up. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to Live Footy on ABC Sport. For all those yearnings for truly outstanding entertainment... I have an idea of what might cheer you up. You'll find a trove of Academy Award winning and nominated films on ABC iView. Let's play. Like Imitation Game. It's beautiful. American Sniper, Her and Spotlight. There's a story here and I think it's an important story. Brooklyn, Carol and so many more. Bon appétit. Always free, always outstanding on ABC iView. This is ABC Sports coverage of the 2024 AFL season. Every match on the ABC Listen app. Look for the AFL button. Zorko, little nine iron cut off there by Darcy Moore. Not the distance. The handball into the corridor. The goey, Noble into the centre. Under pressure now, McCreary. Now running up to half forward from 55, McCreary. He goes through and goes all the way. Pies back in front by a point early in the third quarter. Play on, says the umpire. Elliot does. Gets on his left. Kicks to the pocket. Looking for Majacek. Goes beyond that contest. Hold on. Free kick. Majacek being held. Majacek from 40 out. Returns Collingwood to a seven-point advantage. Off hands McCreary again. Was he taken high? He was. The tackle slipped up there by Big Payne. Comes into the hoots of the Gabba crowd. Releases from 45. It's a good-looking kick. It's a goal for Collingwood. Extends their lead yet again. To Gowie Rhodes. Hand passes to Mitchell, 55 out. Hand pass to Elliott, 45 out. Elliott shoots and scores! And the Magpies! The Magpies have kicked five goals to one in the third term. The 2024 AFL Premiership season. On your radio. ABC Sport Digital. And on the ABC Listen app. Five goals to one in the third term to turn a five-point halftime deficit 
into a 20-point lead at three-quarter time. Hope you're enjoying the start of the long weekend. At the Gabba on ABC Sport, Quentin Hull, Michael Price calling the action alongside Matt Primus and Jeff White. Zane Bojack down on the boundary, and it is the Pies by 20 points before our experts set us on a path towards the final term here. Around the grounds, the NBL Grand Final Series is headed to Game 5. Melbourne United has defeated the Tasmania Jack Jumpers 88 to 86. Melbourne United 88, Tasmania Jack Jumpers 86. Deciding game five, 2 2. And uh, the. Uh, I'm not sure when that game five is going to be played, but uh, they forced the deciding game, Melbourne United. Uh, Zaino, when are they playing that? Sunday. Sunday, thank you. Uh, meanwhile, in the NRL, Penrith. 22 lead the Sydney Roosters 6. About 10 minutes to go in that game. Panthers 22, Roosters 6. Huddles formed here. Three-quarter time. Momentum with Collingwood. What say you, Jeff White and Matt Primus? Well, just a great response from Collingwood. I'm sure at half-time, uh, the Collingwood coach would have said, to mainly Collingwood's midfield, Brisbane just got on top of us. They dominated territory. Didn't give our forwards an opportunity, and you put our backs under far too much pressure. You guys have to lift, and they did. Contested possession was equal. Clearances just slightly in Collingwood's favour. But because Collingwood are slicker with ball in hand, if they can have enough of the ball, which they did in that quarter, they win the inside 50 count, and they certainly look more dangerous going forward when they don't get pinned. So will the game swing back the other way? I'm sure Fagan will be saying to Brisbane's midfielders, hey, you've got to give us more use. We need more inside 50s, more clearances from you. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to hit the scoreboard where... McRae would be saying just give us the same with the midfield there. Our back line will look after itself if there's pressure on the ball and our forwards will be able to be more dominant against Brisbane's backs. If you want to send a message excuse me, 0437 774 Make sure you send your name as well. But this is a good one. How is there any difference between a fist and a palm? A slap can do as much damage as a punch. Dirty act from a champion past his prime. No one should accept the argument it was an open palm, not a fist. That's in relation to Pendlebury. 100%, and it was mm. 10 metres off the ball. Yeah, so the ball was nowhere near it. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and another one here. If, if, if that's not reportable in today's game, I don't know what yep. is. And so... So strange for us to be talking about Scott Pendlebury in, it is. In, in, in that respect. I, I feel like he'll get off one of those uh, earlier on in the year with a fine as well, where he just uh, returns serve with a yeah. tap in the comic cuts as well. So, I think it, it shows, you know, we don't talk about Scott Pendlebury in that regard ever in his career, but it shows how much is on the line for this game. Uh, yes, yeah. not an act you've seen him, but yep. how much he's riding on and how much these teams want to win. Yes, you don't want to see him doing it, but that's what it means to both teams here. Uh, inside 50s. Brisbane 45 to Collingwood's 29. Yet Collingwood go into the final term with a 20-point lead. Enjoy it with us on ABC Sport. Here's Michael Price. Perfect bounce from the umpire. Darcy Cameron beaten for it by McInerney, but Pendlebury gets there first. His handball's loose. It's a shark there by Rayner. He weaved through traffic, kicked it to the forward pocket. It went past both Moore and Hipwood, and it ricocheted off the shins it looked like of Lincoln McCarthy over the boundary line 40 metres out will get a throw in but it is in the forward 50 for the Brisbane Lions trailing by 20 points ball hoiked in McInerney to the front palms down for Brisbane rove by Nick Dacos he dragged it back in he's tackled umpire says ball up luckily Tom Mitchell jumped on it as well in the the drag back in remember when the Swans did that about 15 years ago and they changed the rules Ball tossed in the air. Ruckman go at it again. Ricochets out the back to Neil of Brisbane. Hands to McCluggage. Hands to Berry from 55. Oh, a speculator okay. to the goal mouth. Was he taken out? I'm hearing noise in the background. Play on to advantage. Jasper Fletcher's in the goal mouth. He's not going to be allowed to take the kick. Now, what happened there as I followed the fly? I thought Sarah? it would have been... Play. I thought it was after the play. So I thought it would have been a uh, relay free kick, but they've taken it back. Very it's loose high. high contact yeah. from Bo McCreary. Yeah. What is, and I should probably know, is it, what is the actual downfield rule? When does it get paid down? Well, it's after the ball. It was yep. deemed during when he had the ball. Barry kicks it to full forward. On the head of the pack, goes to ground level. Quayner picks up for Collingwood. Hand pass of age, Schultz. He goes and gets it, Schultz. Oh. Gives the problem to Crisp, and the pies are out. Crisp hand passes to Lipinski in space at left half back. Kicks it to the wing through the hands of McInnes. Dropped the mark he should have taken. 
Picked up by Andrews of Brisbane. Hands it in the air to Dunkley. Gathers and hands it quickly to Fletcher. Runs to half forward for Brisbane. Puts the lines back into attack. Hip it flies. Can't mark. Road by McInerney. Oh. No look hand pass over his shoulder to Bailey. What a party trick. And it keeps the lines in it. As Bailey goals from point blank range. Talk about the Osho. <laughs> Big Oscar. With the dexterity. Beautiful hand pass to Zach Bailey. 14 points the lead to Collingwood. Is at 10 6, 66 to 7, hand 52. Sorry, Q. McGuinness mark here. Yes. Through his hands. They were out too, but what a sensational hand pass there. And he nearly got run down. Finally, <laughs> nearly got him. Took he his got time, a bit didn't relaxed he? there. <laughs> But a, a, a repeat inside 50 that shouldn't have been, as you mentioned, Whitey, but a, a repeat inside 50. That's what Brisbane were able to do in the second quarter when they scored lots of goals and got back into the game. Can they replicate that again, or will Collingwood be able to get their run game going? So what's the goal score now? If it, oh, if to that set, end. To that end. 14-something? 14 to 2? It's ridiculous. All bar. Uh, one. Two. Yeah. All, all bar two goals have been two. kicked to the other end. Immediately, it is fisted forward out of the contest towards the arc of 50 for Brisbane. Cut off there by Nick Dacos. He went the 1-2 and got the handball back. The pass to Pendlebury with the booze. He runs past again, Nick Dacos. Receives the handball. Kicks inside 50. Oh, he's falling to ground, Schultz. As he was going to ground, tackled high. It will be a free kick to Collingwood. And Lockie Schultz will have a shot, 45 out more or less directly in front. Jeez, Brisbane's got to be on to Nick Dacos. They're starting him on the half-back line, but they're trying to use him as much as they can. He was used three or four times there. Well, exactly like Zorko off the other end of yeah. the game, isn't it? So Jack Payne, who's a good foot taller than Schultz, just didn't get low enough in the tackle. And with only his fifth disposal of the game, the former Frio player, Lucky Schultz, from inside 50, from 45... It's a nice looking kick, but it hits the post halfway up. One behind. 53, pla- sorry, 52 plays 67. It's back to a 15 point margin. The Pies lead. 0 2 and 0 3. Neither grand final team has picked up a victory to start this 2024 campaign. So much at stake here at the Gabber as Wilmot plays on. Kicks long towards left half back. Frampton makes the pack to spoil it for Collingwood. McCreary roves without much geography to work in. Runs it over the line for a throw in Zane. You just said 0 2 3 Q. I thought you were talking about the grand finals these two sides played. Oh, very good. There is symmetry there as well. Zane Bojack on the boundary. 33,000 or thereabouts in the house. 15 points the lead to Collingwood. Ball tossed in. Jared Berry is tackled. Held onto the ball. Ump says. Ball up. Pandlebury apprised the clamp to keep it in tight there. I still don't understand how that's not holding the ball. If, the, if yeah. you've only got one arm available to handball it away and you can't, it's ridiculous. Off the hands of the ruck when it goes forward for Brisbane. Bailey now under pressure. Tumbles one to centre half forward. It's ill directed. Jeremy Howe had all the time in the world. Handballed it off to Crisp, who's off to the races. Chips it to the wing. It favours Lipinski, who gathered well. He retreats with pressure from Fletcher and goes nicely inboard to the wing to find Maynard. Maynard now plays on. They're booing everybody now. A long kick inside 50. McGuinness the target. In with the flight was Harris Andrews. Gave away the free kick. McGuinness will have a shot at goal from around about 45 degrees. Uh, Sorry, around about 45 metres out, but he's on a very tight angle to the left. You'll have to face in board and curl this one around, he thinks. That's taken a bit of the air out of the Gabba crowd too, Whitey. Yeah. 15 points the margin now, the Pies lead. Six gone, fourth quarter. It's a good kick too to, to be aware that Harris Andrews was coming up. Reef McInnes. The crowd letting him know about it from 40. He hooks it wildly, out of bounds on the full. Still 15 points the margin, Lions free kick from the right back pocket. And it's Zorko pumping it out towards the left half back flank. Bounces to the advantage of Rayner. A little in and away to get rid of Josh Dacos and chips perfectly to Answorth. Lovely football. Answorth marks. Nice bit of open field skill there from Rayner. Answorth kicks towards half forward. McCarthy takes the grab. 
Kick and a half from goal for Link. Uses his right, spears it to full forward. Cameron's got two to beat. Spore made by Hoskin Elliott. Ricochets though to McCluggage. Hands it back to Cameron. Goes to his knees. Somehow found space to give it back to McCluggage. And McCluggage kicks the goal from 20 metres out. Charlie Cameron made Superman putting on a cape in a phone books look ordinary with his work in tight there. How did he do that? And once again, Hoskin Elliott. It was two on one. He could have marked it, double fisted. But then just the ability to get it off the ground, clean it up, keep his feet. The kick inside. Turn too, around. Oh, yeah. yeah that what about Zorko's kick from half back? Yeah. Just out, out, and then Rayner to spin back in the middle. Both these sides are trying to own the corridor as much <laughs> as they can, can't they? Yeah, exactly. They're both trying to own the corridor and play quick through there, yeah. which is going to create some turnovers and an outstanding finish to come, I reckon. Uh, nine points of the lead to Collingwood at 10-7-67 to 8-10-58, Zane. Yeah, Kyle Lomans out there now, Q, and Jasper Fletcher's been um, given the, uh, the, the bib. Back into the middle. Cox versus Fort. Fort gets it down. It's shark by Dagoe. Fends off Bailey. The long right foot kick towards half forward. Goes straight towards the boundary line. They want it deliberate, but <laughs> seriously, let's get on with it. Throw in. Right half forward. 55 out from the Collingwood goal. They lead by nine points the margin. So now, that ridiculous stat. What is it? So all but two goals. I think it's 16 of 18 goals. Kick to that uh, western end. From the ball up, attacking 50 for Collingwood. Somehow, Crisp gets a boot to it. Crisp, he's kicked a goal. From the scrimmage at the stoppage, Jack Crisp comes up with a much-needed major for Collingwood. Pies back out by 15 at 11.773 to 18.58. Gave the fans something to cheer about down that inch, too. (laughs) So that's what... 19 goals in the game. 16 of, of 19 goals have been kicked to the other end. What I really like from this, there was a stop play there. Cox again, punching it forward. It's just almost... It's almost like they, they, they've, they've said, right, you try and hit it out, we'll try and get some movement on the ball. Every time they've had a, a stop play, forward to centre, he's tried to hit it out of that circle. Oh, Instead okay. of just dropping it, just punch, oh, I'm loving this. Yeah, uh, Absolutely probably loving it. Takes it away from the locky kneels and those types of the inside, doesn't Correct. it? Makes them turn around and face the goals. So the ball up in the middle of the ground. The clearance with Bailey. Just scrubs it forward. Pendlebury retreats. Tackled by Lohman. Still out there. Handball now. Goes out to Bailey. Bailey chips into the 50. And finds Link McCarthy. He's pointed that he will have a shot. He turns his back on everything. Which indicates he will certainly do that. He'll have to release it from just outside the arc of 50. Slight angle to the right. Definitely has the distance. Usually a reliable kick. 162 goals, 86 over his AFL career to attest to that accuracy. Lincoln McCarthy, the Lions desperately requiring this. And he answers that plea. Kicks it straight through the middle. Game back on. Nine points the margin. What a ripper here at the Gabba. This is a cracker. This is such a great game. That Both are just... The, the arm wrestle of those contested footy at the moment is what's... And how whatever side's clean is the one that's getting that forward motion and getting that connection going going forward. It's a, This is a great game. So, actually, Dev Robertson, who's been subbed out of the game for Brisbane, Kai Lomans into it. Zaino? Yeah, I was just about to say, it was Dev Robertson that's on the back bench. Sorry about that, boys. No, thank you, Zane. Nine points of the lead to Collingwood. Three goals to one to Brisbane in this term. Yeah, both teams are efficiency. When they get the ball inside 50, they look like scoring all the time in the last quarter of the game. He's starting to open up whoever can get yeah. the ascendancy forward of the ball. And change the angles too, the way they kick it. They're not just trying to go towards goal. Gabba, Gabba fans haven't seen back-to-back losses for their team since the final series of 2019 when they went out in straight sets to Richmond and Greater Western Sydney. Collingwood hasn't won here the last four trips to play the line. Centre bounce, Chris with the clearance for the Pies. Hand pass in tight, got it to McCreary. Rush kick to half forward, not effective. Goes to deck. Over the top of it, uh, Berry for Brisbane. Applies the pressure to lock it in on McInnes. 
and we'll see a, bound, a ball up left half back for Collingwood right half forward for Brisbane nearly 12 minutes final term Fort beats Cox at tap time road by Schultz of Collingwood hand pass into attacking 50 three against Hill gathered by Zorko tackled brilliantly by Elliott and Elliott earns the free kick coming from the back blocks to make a wonderful forward 50 tackle and earn a shot at goal for the Magpies small forwards of both sides have been unreal tonight just brought the heat pressure the balance haven't rushed at the player but that he he had to go then Elliot because Zorko was out well he knows a big moment goal doesn't he Jamie Elliot <laughs> absolutely this one is well of of relative simplicity for a man of his class 40 meters out no angle Jamie Elliot for his third on the right boot he's got it Magpies by 15 points at the Gabba Elliot's third Collingwood 12 7 79 Brisbane 9 10 64 13 minutes final turn a you know, Ford 50 tackle 14 to 6 Collingwood's way we, we just saw the stack come up and it was uh, it was even at half time they, they've certainly brought back their heat that time there and Paul Zorko didn't have much opportunity. He had to win the ball, spin out of the bump, and then got laid with the tackle. But Collingwood are certainly up and about with their pressure here. And can Brisbane respond as it's it, been in this third quarter? It doesn't show in the stats, but McQuarrie, Schultz, Elliott, those, and, and Bobby Hill, just the pressure, just in that forward 50. And the balance. They haven't had two go to one. They've had one go there, balance. Okay, I'll nail you. And that's exactly what happened then. So it's the Pies back in front by 15 points. 13 and a half gone, final turn. Another perfect bounce in the middle. McInerney gets it down, but it's rowed by Nick Dacos. Toes it forward. It rolls to the arc. Wilmot tapped it into the hands of Zorko. His handball forward. Cut off by Dagoe. He wheels around onto his left. Inside 50. Good defensive mark. Taken by Ryan Lester in front of Jamie Elliott. For the Brisbane Lions. His back is 30 metres away from his defensive goal. He goes laterally out to the right back pocket to find youngster in Jasper Fletcher. He's standing the mark, Bobby Hill. He's looking left and right and decides he has to go long down the line. Darcy Fort, the target. But cutting across in front, Eric Hipwood. He takes a mark. His second for the evening. The sweeping handball to McLuggage. Inside 50, the target, McCarthy. It was punched away from him by Frampton. Loman Rhodes got the handball to Rayner, off his hands McCarthy, he curls it around and misses to the left <laughs> one behind, 79 plays 65 it's a 14 point margin in favour of the Pies. Still heaps of time left, 12 minutes left in the game the crowd just takes a moment to gather their thoughts as Nick Dacos walks out of the goal mouth to the right back pocket, inbounds for Collingwood with a long right foot drop punt to the southern wing. Beyond the pack, who's first to meet it? Wilmot's tackled by McCreary. Great work to lock it up. Just that pressure. That pressure has been outstanding from McCreary tonight. Ball up near the interchange area. Still slightly attacking side of halfway for Brisbane. Out on the outer wing. Cameron gets the tap down to Lipinski. Clearance Collingwood. Lipinski hands it to Crisp. Crisp from the wing, kicks the pies into attack, bounces in vacant territory, first to meet at Leicester of Brisbane. Dumps a hope of clear. It's a bouncing ball. Hoskin Elliott first to meet it for Collingwood. Taps to his own advantage. Oh, and then from 60, curls a brilliant kick onto the chest of Elliott, who marks in the left forward pocket, 30 out. And he's not preferred, mind you. Thought of playing on Elliott, but he, he's going to go back. But Will Hoskin Elliott assessed that brilliantly. Didn't take clean possession first time. But when he did, on his non-preferred, Jeff, finds Jamie Elliott. He's getting... He opens up the angle, Elliott. Curls it perfectly. He's got two in a row. The Pies lead by 20 points. 16 minutes final term. And Elliott goes bang, bang. After Brisbane got within nine. It's now the Pies by 20. At 13 goals, 7.85 to 9.11.65. And Elliot now has four goals for the night. So we're talking about that balance inside forward 50. That loose ball that went inside forward 50 for the Pies there, 
Bobby Hill could have gone at that, but he let his man chase it down. He held, so it forced the Brisbane Lions player to kick it, and that's where Hoskin Elliott yep. intercepted. Zane on the boundary. 34,022 people here tonight, Q. Interestingly enough, when they posted the crowd numbers, it was in black and white. Oh, there he goes. 20 scoring shots apiece. 20 points the margin in favour of Collingwood. Good kicking is good footy. 17 minutes gone, final term. Live footy on ABC Sport. The clearance with Brisbane. It goes out to the wing, the outer wing. Diving on it. He's going to get in. Jasper Fletcher. He dived over it. And Josh Dacos just leaned over and collected the free kick. Then gave the handball back to his brother Nick. Long kick inside 50. Harris Andrews nudged out of it forward of the ball. Lockie Neal gathers. Handball to Rayner. Tiptoes around his opponent. Gives the handball off to Darcy Wilmot. Long kick straight down the throat of Darcy Moore. Wrong team. Plays at centre half back for Collingwood and kicks out to the outer wing. Now with the white headband after he had the black one earlier. Kicks to McCreary. Marks on the wing. Bangs deep for Collingwood to attack. Huge fly. Elliott in the two on two. Couldn't mark. On the deck. Oh, he roves somehow, Jamie. Hand pass in field. On the head of Schultz. Passed away by Lester. Road by Mitchell, though. Hand passes to Nick Dacos. Sells a dummy. Kicks deep to Meyerchek, who marks it on the goal line. And the magpie army go nuts at the Gabba. Brody Majacek will go back and compose himself and try and snap truly from the left forward pocket. He's taken away all their time and space, the Collingwood forwards. There's just no easy ball. The hat kick comes out and then Collingwood sweat on that. And that was spoken about. Their decision-making inside 50 is elite and it has been this last quarter. Well, they came here on the Green Mile. The premiership defence of the Magpies. Oh, my, oh. my check's kicked it into the man on the mark. That was a great smother from Zorko. Plays on. Zorko kicks it off the ground to half back. Rayner picks up. That's tackled by Quainer holding the ball. That's that balance again. Has it been unreal on that? Quainer plays on and. Oh, not allowed to. Not allowed to. He kicked it to Dugowie. <laughs> and it's actually going to be Mitchell's free kick. It was a, it was a dual tackle. So Mitchell chips short. And Nick Takos receives 60 out at left half forward for the Pies who lead it by 20 points. He signals long and then kicks it to the forward pocket against the boundary line. Juggling Mark Majacek. The second grab inside the boundary. He's 30 out, but he is over the boundary line. He's going to be facing inboard and curling it around with his right foot from around about 40 metres. Yeah, Fletcher needed to go then. He sat back and watched and, and thought the ruck would be able to spoil the ball, but it didn't fly and his man went. Brody Majacek, he kicked it into the man on the mark just a little earlier. He wheels it around. Oh. It's perfect. Three goals to Brody Majacek and the Pies are marching on here at the Gabba. 14-7-91 plays 9-11-65. It's Collingwood by 26 points. Wow. Uh, one of the most impressive parts, Pricey, when the ball has gone, there's been a high ball and they've been in contest, is they've always had numbers. I know it's a basic thing in football, but front and centre. Collingwood have always had someone front and centre. Ball's come to ground. They've been there. They've had two, three. They've outnumbered. Uh, Brisbane, especially in this last quarter when they needed that run. There's a moment there where the ball came in. Nick Dacos was in the centre circle, ran to front and centre, got the hand pass and away they went. In the old days, Joff would be getting the gold jacket out, wouldn't he? That's game over, isn't it? Uh, well, the way Collingwood's mids are on top of Brisbane's, yes, because they're not going to give themselves enough opportunities, Brisbane's midfield. 26 points is the lead to Collingwood, and that's as... As big as the lead has been for them all night. Yeah. It's a game-high 26-point lead. And we've now got eight and a half minutes of playing time left at the Gabba. Ball tossed up. Cox with the tap for Collingwood. Coming off the... Oh, is it, no, Wilmot. He had it and got... Uh, he got rid of it and lost it. Ball kicked into attack for Collingwood by Crisp. Payne was underneath it, though. Off hands. It's locked it up for Brisbane. There's that punch from Cox yep. we're talking about. Just... Clearing it out, giving Brisbane no opportunity to win it in close. Ball up, 40 from the Magpies goal. Cox clean possession here, got it to his boot, not an effective kick, cleaned up by Archie of Brisbane. Hand pass to Neil. Neil hands it to Answorth. Answorth to Archie as they run to half back. Archie kicks Brisbane to the wing. Frampton's in front of Danaher and Marks. He played well tonight, Frampton. Big Joe was nowhere near that. And Frampton takes the grab for Collingwood right on halfway beneath our commentary position here. 
on the Vulture Street wing. Pies by 26 points on ABC Sport. It's a long kick to left half forward from Frampton. Spoiling was McInerney. Front and square was Rayner. His handball inboard to Dunkley was a ground level. He overran it. Chris didn't. Gave the handball off. It's Schultz. His kick to the goal oh. square. Oh, my goodness. It was dropped there by Will Hoskin Elliott. He gathered, though, went backwards. Clever. Found Majacek with a kick that was barely the required distance. But Majacek will line up. About 45 out. He's on a tight angle to the left, but not as tight as the one he just nailed. Yeah, the pressure on Fletcher again. It was a grand ball, but he had pressure on him. He fumbled, second grabbed it, and Collingwood were able to get the ball back, and that's resulted in the shot on goal. Harris Andrews looks exasperated, standing the mark. Just put his hands on his head as Brody Majacek comes in. From 40, tight angle, he's tugged it left. It's only a behind, 92 plays, 65, a 27-point margin now with 22 and a half gone in the final term. Zane? Yeah, just been watching uh, the physio try and do some work on the hip of uh, Jamie Elliott on the right side. Also, um, he's been off for a fair while now, Scott Pendlebury. I think he's cramping badly. He's been into the pickle juice. Okay, thank you, Zane. Wilmot takes a couple of bounces. Chips to Neil, marks it right half back for Brisbane on the inbound. Infield on the 45, trying to create something with the kick to a contest. Dunkley Rose for Brisbane. Hands it to Rayner. Hand pass goes to deck, cleaned up by McCluggage, just forward of half back. McCluggage finds a path. Kicks to Ford, who's in his face, 55 out. Marks and kicks to Lohman in the pocket. Lohman taken out by the late arriving spoil. Illegal that from John Noble. Free kick to Kai Lohman in the right forward pocket to Brisbane. The but you think one. even now it's it's beyond well, time, Matt? Yeah, six minutes to go, but it was the first time they've been able to play quick, wasn't it, from coast to coast? They had a bit of poise then too. So yeah. Kai Lohman wearing the, the number one for the Brisbane Lions. Facing back-to-back home defeats for the first time since the 2019 final series, the Lions. Lohman tries to minimise the damage and does with a fine set shot. Slices it through, 21 points. Well, dare we go back to the great premiership coach of these two clubs, Lee Matthews, who says, minutes left, goals difference. Goals difference, less than four. Minutes left, five and a bit. 21 points to lead to Collingwood at 14.892 to 10.11.71. Well, it goes without saying, this last quarter, Brisbane have not been able to get any dominance in the centre bounce and therefore not get any dominance with territory. The next five or six minutes, they're going to have to do that, try and take some risk, but also start with the centre bounce win, see if they can give their forwards a one-on-one look, because at the moment, Collingwood's defenders are all over when the ball's trying to come out of their back half. I like Oscar Big O just to jump into Cox instead of... Going into that quarter, they're going to make it a boundary ball up. I don't like that. I run it. Yeah, I want him to come off. Jump into him. Hit it forward. Just don't go to that boundary throw in, ball up sort of stuff. Back into the middle. Another good bounce from the umpires as McInerney slaps it down. Well done by Mitchell, who retrieved it for Collingwood. Great handball into the path of Schultz. He just gets away from Zorko, kicks long. Reef McInnes at the back, skims his knuckles over the boundary line, throw in right forward pocket for Collingwood. They're leaving this one by 21 points. 25 gone, final term. Just what Collingwood needed, a bit of territory, see if they can waste a couple of minutes down this end of the ground if they can't score. The throw-in's a good one. McInerney versus Cox. Cox taps it to himself, throws a boot at it, misses, picked up by Archie. His exiting kick, it's going to be a race on. It's Bobby Hill versus Darcy Wilmot. That is fair to two speedsters. Hill did beautifully to pick it up, but Wilmot on his hammer as they carried it over the boundary line. It's going to be a throw in 70 metres out, left half forward for the Pies. A little over five minutes left in the game. 21 points the lead to Collingwood. The reigning Premiers, who haven't beaten Brisbane here their last four starts. Not many people tipped them. But there's a flicker about this Premiership defence. Jeff White tipped him. He's letting me know here in the box. Clearance <laughs> Brisbane. Dunkley hands it to Zorko. Zorko's kick is smothered. A Lohman comes in to pick it up, though, but Maynard puts him a metre beneath the cricket pitch turf in the Gabba with a tackle. <laughs> Ball it up. Boy, a young fellow knows he's been tackled. Just oh. quietly, Nick Dacos has crept up to 28 disposals and a game-high 637 metres gained. It's punched forward for Collingwood. Bobby Hill over the top of the ball. Umpire says play on. 
coming out of it was Wilmont. He let go the ball. Lipinski now. He lets get go, and it's picked up by Bobby Hill. The umpire's going to come in. What's happening here? He says, oh, no, Neil just going to break it up. <laughs> Neil and Tom Mitchell are tangling. Just having another little tater tate behind the players that's tapped down into the path of McLuggage. Handball forward to Hipwood, who's had a disappointing night. Long kick inside 50. Danaher spoiled by Frampton. It goes towards the boundary line. Danaher kept it in. Now it's picked up by Josh Dacos. Oh. He's tackled. Umpire says it was in the back. Crowd didn't like that one. Wanted holding the ball, but probably a fair decision as Josh Dacos will take the free kick for Collingwood and take his time. they got a man up here, Brisbane, because they'll try and chew up the time now, Collingwood. Long kick to the pack on the wing. Actually goes beyond everyone, rolls towards the boundary, and Andrews can't keep it in. So Collingwood. So many questions asked about them. They'll head to Adelaide next week to play Hawthorne. Brisbane to gather round to play north. But it looks like the Magpies will get the first four premiership points of their flag defence here at the Gabba. 21 points the lead to Collingwood late in the game. From the throwing on the wing, McCluggage wins the stoppage. Hand passes to Dunkley. Dunkley hands it to Archie. Rushes a kick inside. 50 and coming from the side. Leaping link takes a nice clutch. Good grab from McCarthy. 30 out. 45 degree angle to the right and he realised time's on the fly the interest and then Collingwood put a spare behind the ball playing seven backs Brisbane went and manned it up so they were playing seven forwards to allow no one to be able to drop off and it worked on that occasion McCarthy kicked a, a brilliant set shot earlier in this term gave Brisbane a sniff at that point narrowed the margin to nine well if he kicks this one narrows the margin to 15 but time's running out McCarthy misses near side anyway which won't help the cause of the locals and 28 into the final term. 92 play 72. Collingwood on route to their first win of the season. It's a pretty pensive uh, Brisbane coach, Chris Fagan, on the big screen there. As Nick Dacos just got better as the game progressed. A little sand wedge to Jeremy Howe. But it's Sydney, I'm just going to kick it long, flat over here, and he kicks a little short one to take another 20 seconds out of the game. And Very smart. Best actor, Oscar, as well there, as he <laughs> signalled what he was going to do and did the opposite. Love that long kick down the line. Off hands, it's going to go into the interchange benches. In fact, it was out of bounds on the full, so it's going to be a free kick to Brisbane. Oscar McInerney. Long kick inside 50. Darcy Moore at the front of the pack. Danaher flies through his hands. It's rowed by Lohman for Brisbane. He's tackled into the ground. Bodies descend on him, including Maynard, Pendlebury, and last one up with the ball was actually Jeremy Howe. So it's going to be pulled up 40 out from the Brisbane goal. Cameron got it down to McCarthy. McCarthy, a flying snap. Quainall read it best. Gathered, handball to Frampton, got it back to Quainall. A high ball to half back for Collingwood. Meyer checked down there, rode beautifully, handballed it to Goey. He flicked one out to Crisp. He flicked it out there. As well to Mitchell, tackled into the ground. It's going to be a free kick as the ball spilled out. And it was Lockie Schultz. No, Mitchell comes back. He that was pick- tackled into the ground and around the neck at the same time. That pickup from my check was outstanding. Well, you want to question hunger? 81 tackles to 49 tonight yep. for Collingwood. They've answered yeah, that'll it. That'll do me. It's only one number. But it's a pretty important one. When people were questioning whether or not the black and white had had their fill after drinking from the cup last September and all summer long. But they've tackled their way back into the 2024 fight for the flag. Long kick towards half forward and at the foot of a pack of players will see another ball up. Yeah, that's that's a huge stat, isn't it? From the Magpies and efficiency inside 50. Brisbane's had 12 more inside 50s. Yet Collingwood 14-8 to Brisbane's 10-12. Darcy Cameron's wrapped up at the stoppage by Noah Answorth, and we'll have another ball up. It's been an outstanding team performance from Collingwood. Well done you, Jeff, for picking it. The backs to the forwards. And the chorus heard around the Gabba and around the land. You know what that means. Another stoppage, 40 from goal. That pricey probably says more than what I could tell you about the scoreboard. Yep. When the opposition are taken over the crowd here at the Gabba, they are stunned. Out of the ruck, it's taken by Darcy Cameron. He lays the slipper into it to the goal square. Harris Andrews takes the mark. 
couple of Collingwood players, Maya Cech and Reef McInnes, bundled out of the way. It's chipped now to Berry, then over to Lockie Neal. Onto the boundary, he wheels around, kicks it straight up the middle. At front, it was Hipwood who juggled a mark, laying on the ground when he accepted the second grab. Running pass was Berry. He gave him the handball. Berry to the lead there. Nicely taken just beyond centre wing by Ryan Lester, who's moved forward. Nobody to kick it to up forward. He has to come uh, laterally into the corridor to find Hipwood again. Now he wheels onto the left, looking for Rayner. Through his hands, spoiled. It was a great defensive effort in the end there. Well done by Maynard. Took it over the boundary line. It's going to be a throw in about 40 metres away from the Brisbane Lions goal in the left forward pocket with Collingwood leading by 20 points. What a tantalising night for the narrative of the season. At 0-4, would have been really hard to construct an argument for Collingwood having a, having a foot in this race to defend the flag. But they've been terrific at the Gabba tonight. Throw in with Brisbane in attack. Ball sprawling towards the goal mouth. Leicester tries to kick it out of the air. And somehow the Magpies keep it in while Frantum's thinking, will I stay alive? Yep, he does audaciously from the last line of defence. Kicks it to right half back beyond the pack and out of play. And the base, they've done the basics really well tonight, Collingwood. The, the one percenters, the smothers, you know, the balance of, of tackles. They've laid their tackles. They've just really got back to basics tonight. It's been an outstanding effort. 20 points to lead to the Magpies. Late in the game, boundary throw in. No clearance there. Oh, no, there's going to be a holding the ball decision. Going Collingwood's way. McInerney was over the top of it. And Lipinski will come up with the footy. So now the questions will turn on Chris Fagan and his Lions. The beaten grand finalists are 0 and 3. But the Magpies, for the first time since grand final day, can sing the song at the end of a game of footy. They came north with their premiership defence on tenterhooks. But they'll go back to Melbourne full of gusto, beating the Lions by 20 points. Side by side, they stick together to uphold the magpie's name. See the barricades are shouting as all barricades show. All the premierships are king. Well, the early spark was Bobby Hill. He kicked three goals in the first quarter. Collingwood led by 24 points a quarter time. Brisbane kicked four goals to nothing in the, the second quarter to lead by five points at halftime. And then the Magpies led by 20 points at three-quarter time. Brisbane got within nine, kicking three of the first four of the final term. But the Pies kicked three of the last four of the game to win it. 14-8-92 to 10-12-72. Those expected to kick goals did kick goals for Collingwood tonight. Jamie Elliott with four, Brody Majacek with three, Bobby Hill with three. The Norm Smith middle is kicking all of his goals in the first quarter. Bo McCreary kicked a couple, and singles also to Jack Crisp and Reef McInnes. While for Brisbane, Cam Rayner's two was the only multiple for the hosts, and singles to Loman Danaher McCluggage, Neil McCarthy, Cameron Bailey, and Lester. So for the first, first time in their, their last, well, they, they'd lost their last four at the Gabba uh, to, to Brisbane had Collingwood. And the Lions, th this gabatoire, this fortress, for the first time since the final series of 2019 of Brisbane suffered back-to-back -to -back defeats at home. And the Lions are 0-3 heading to gather round while the Pies are 1-3. and three. Love to hear from you. Send the text messages forth on 0437 774 774. Please include your name and where you're texting from. That number again, 0437 774 774. Former port coach and captain Matt Primus, former number one draft pick and Melbourne club champion Jeff White to tell you 
how it unfolded. Well done to you, Whitey. I'm going to start with you. <laughs> Not many tipped the pies tonight, but you did. Kudos to you. Yeah, I just thought that they played good in patches of the games that they had lost. And, you know, the, the reigning premiers, backs against the wall. And often sometimes when you go away from the, the bubble that you are in Melbourne and you go away as a team, you you actually have a bit more of an incentive to win on the road. And, and Matty would Matty would test this too, is that when you, they're, they're always a special win. So you always feel like, hey, it's us against them and the crowd. And so I just thought that, you know, I watched them play last week and they, a few patches, they just had, if they could tidy up a few areas, they would be on. And especially their ground ball, I thought Tagoe was from the outset just a just a bull in there. He was clean below his knees and they were using the ball really well. But the most impressive part I noticed with Collingwood tonight was their balance around the play. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's one to actually go at the ball and have two-on-one, but actually hold back and then make it a one-on-one contest and then force the opposition to kick it. And that's what they're able to do. Yes, Brisbane got a run on. They're always going to come at them. It was a cracking game in that second quarter, but it's a lot of effort to do what Collingwood did, and it showed how fit they are. They are they are fit. You know, there was question marks over their fitness and all that sort of stuff. They squashed all that tonight. They played. That's the brand of footy that they're renowned for playing for the last two years. They brought it away from home. They brought it on a on a track they haven't won here for a long time, as you said, Q. And they played outstanding football tonight, and it was across the board. You know, we look at the stats and go, yeah, Nick Dacos had thirty and. And, and, and Mitchell had 20, 24 and started on the bench, but it was a team effort tonight from Collingwood and they played outstanding footy. Yeah, good summary, Whitey. I, I think the most pleasing things for the, the coaching staff and the fans, they, they won ugly tonight. Yeah, we, we love watching them play and the way they move the ball and the way they defend, but they didn't get that right tonight, some of that stuff. Yeah, they did in periods, but not all night, but to actually get smacked in inside 50s, um, to get beaten just in clearances, but to the arm wrestle in the second half, they actually outbeat Brisbane in the tough stuff, and they won it in the trenches, and I think that would be the most pleasing thing because that, that has gone missing. Their other stuff will come as they get going, but if you don't have the basics, the fundamental, what you do when you don't have the ball, what, what you've got to do when the ball's in dispute, they did that a lot better than Brisbane tonight, and that's the basis of their game plan. The other stuff will slow off that. Really good win by the Pies. More messages to come. Rod from Hobart texts, have the Lions been flat and losing the grand final? Have to climb the mountain again. Thank you, Rod. Uh, Bill texts, Lions, big game lacking again. Um, Michael from Windenbale texts, exactly what I've been waiting for from Collingwood. Great pressure, great efficiency. We saw tiny little bits last week, but tonight we put it together for a full performance. I'm so happy and relieved. Michael from Wyndham, thank you, uh, from Wyndham Vale. Uh, Brandon from Hobart text. That is something like last year's pies. There is still hope. Uh, 0437774774. Tim texts from Newstead in Queensland. Q, the Gabba losing its aura. Australia lost their first test cricket there for ages and the Lions are struggling. <laughs> Good on you, Tim. Well, they've lost two cricket tests here of recent times to India and to the West Indies, of course, earlier this way. Chris is an optimistic Suns fan from Adelaide. He texts, the mantle of top Queensland team is making its way to the Gold Coast. His little brother watches big brother getting beaten up. <laughs> he's an he's a Adelaide-based Suns member for 11, uh, uh, from, uh, for 11 years, he texts. 0437 774 774. The Lions have made their way from the Gabba. Having handed out Easter eggs to a number of the fans is what they do at the start of this, this round. And the Collingwood players are about to show respect to the 2018 Brownlow medalist and one of their newer members, Tom Mitchell, who reaches game 200 tonight in a career individually highlighted by that Brownlow medal in 2018. Collectively highlighted by winning a flag in his first year at the Pies. And the son of Barry, son of a gun, who started in Sydney, went to Hawthorne and now is a premiership pie who is fettered by winning the game's greatest individual honour. Tom Mitchell chaired from the ground in his 200th game as a winner for Collingwood at the Gabba. And I know I'm going to give you a run in here, Zaino. Sometimes, you know, the assessment 
can be one black eye, one white eye in there. I know you're pretty keen to call your pies in, Zano. You were worried as the rest of the Collingwood Army were coming north. Haven't they shown something tonight? Oh, four points, never in doubt. Q, Tommy Mitchell's getting high fives from everyone after being chaired off. Jordan Degoe, how happy is he? They're making their way in here. Philly McRae, he got subbed out, but he's still very, very happy with this first win here since 2019 at the Gabba for the Pies. How, how epic was Bobby Hill tonight? He's just picked up some water. No doubt he's going to try and spray everyone. Craig McRae, he can't believe he's finally got the first win. He's got a huge smile. He's like a Cheshire cat. Seriously, he's hugging everyone, embracing. Big Mason Cox. They're just forming into a circle queue. Won't be far away. The water's already being sprayed, and they haven't even got to the song yet. There's Darcy Moore. Nick Dacos, he's excited. They're about to start. Oh, they can't do it without Pendles. Here he comes. He's in there now. Here we go. First time this year in 2024. The silence at the start made it even more epic, and I can tell you, Q, the men they teared off, Tom Mitchell is who we're about to speak to. Good on you, Zane. We will stay close. Collingwood, 20-point victors at the Gabba. The Magpies, 14 goals, 8.92 to the Lions, 10, 12, 72. Uh, Stumpy from Launceston says the Pies have played four good sides. Easier games to come now. Yep, um, there's... Keep your messages coming, 0437 Quick word on the lines before we get to Tom Mitchell, gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're off. They're, they're only just off, but you, in this competition, if you are just off, um, you're, there's just not any consistency in the way they're playing. It's a quarter here, a quarter there. Um, it's not, you've got to do three and a half quarters. Brisbane, uh, Collingwood actually won the second half and Brisbane weren't able to, apart from the second quarter, they really weren't able to get themselves into the game. They played really good footy in that second quarter and you're right, they're just a little bit off but you, you don't have to be much to, you know, to be zero and three in this competition. It's, uh, you have that 5% off and just felt, you know, the forwards, they just, you know, hit wood, dropped a couple early, you know, it just could have turned it. Is they protect this ground, don't they, Kim? <laughs> yeah. uh, let's get back into the, the Collingwood rooms, eh? Tom Mitchell, you've done some amazing things in your career. You've won a Brownlow medal. You've uh, won a, a premiership medal. But coming here to Brisbane when you're zero and three and getting the four points for the first time since 2019, is that up there? Yeah, it's a it's a really special win. You know, we've been under pressure, under the pump, and you know to respond up in Brisbane. You know, we we're saying during the week that playing Brisbane in Brisbane is as tough as it gets. You know, we respect that opposition so much. They're such a great team. And, yeah, just really proud of the boys for showing up, put it in um, four quarters of tough effort to get a result. I know you're an unselfish player, but it looked like out there you, you were just on fire in your 200. Did it mean anything to you, or was it just the situation you guys are in? Oh, it meant everything just to go out and try and get the win. So, you know, I felt as though we were really connected on the field tonight. Everyone, um, yeah, sacrificed and played a role, whatever that was best for the team. And, uh, yeah, it's crazy. You know that how you know how we get a great result when we all buy into that into that as well. Yeah, last week we saw your, your coach um, Craig McRae talk about he wanted more numbers in the frame. He, he wanted numbers at the ball. I think it was eighty-one to forty-nine. The tackle count was that talked about how you just needed to bring that intensity with the tackling. Yeah, we always want to be a strong pressure team. So we probably haven't bought our best pressure for the first part of the year so far. And. I think, yeah, throughout tonight we saw some of our best pressure, which was really pleasing. All right, well, I'll throw you up to the panel. We've got Quentin Hull, we've got uh, Michael Price, we've got Matty Primus, and we've got Jeff White. Hey, Tom Mitchell, Jeff White here, mate. Well played tonight, you know, 14 contested possessions. Uh, really was really outstanding with your mids, just the ability to win it clean and then be able to spread. But just tell me about, about big uh, Mason Cox. Was there a set play to try and hit it out of the centre? We, we commented on it a few times. Particularly at stop plays, you just try to punch it out of that inner circle. Yeah, well, with his height, you know, it, it's such an advantage for us. And Oscar McInerney is obviously a great ruck as well. But if Coxie can get his hand to it and get a little bit of territory from centre bounce, it's a really good play for us. So we saw that a few times. And 
you know, at the same time, um, you know, him and Darcy Cameron compete really well around the ground when it, with our hits that are more predictable. So I thought both boys were great tonight. Uh, Tom, Matt Prime is here once again. Well done on 200 games. Uh, I thought your midfield in the second half were outstanding. You, very good first quarter, second quarter, Brisbane were all over you. But for the whole second half, I thought you guys not, not, not dominated, but you held sway when there was an arm wrestle. You really got enough of your ball to give your forwards a really good look and allow your backs to defend the way they like to defend. I, I, I would be interested what the message was at, at half time from your coach um, about what you needed to do in the second half to get the win. Yeah, it was pretty simple for us. You know, we just wanted to bring uh, maximum effort. And, uh, you know, I feel as though we've, we've spoken a lot about structure and getting little things right, but none of that really means a lot if you're not bringing uh, maximum effort and pressure. So it was a pretty simple focus for us. And I felt as though, you know, Brisbane came at us, um, you know, multiple times in the game with momentum swings. And for us to be able to hold that and then, um, you know, hit the scoreboard again and get momentum back in our favour was really pleasing. Tom, it's Quentin Hull here. Congrats on the, the 200. I'm just wondering, the, the dynamic of the review, when, when you've looked at the last three weeks, what are the areas that have been picked up? Well, there's, there's so many things that haven't been going right. So, you know, it's hard to identify one thing because normally one issue leads to ripples and other things like that. So we've really stripped it back to basics. And I'm sure you'll probably hear Fly talk about it, but we've stripped it really back to the foundation of our DNA and how we want to play and you know that's um, you know with bringing uh, real effort and pressure and it was a really simple focus going into the game I thought your pressure was outstanding tonight and and Tom those those uh, those wins away how, how special does that feel yeah they're really special you know it's uh, always a hostile crowd when you get up to the Gabba and uh, anywhere interstate really and you know it feels as though it's the 23 players out there against uh, 30,000 um, you know, we have a lot of great Collingwood fans who do travel, but, you know, clearly uh, when you're on the road, it's always a bit tougher. So for the boys to dig in, uh, it was a really great result. Well played, Tom. It's uh, a milestone night for you and a really important night for the club. Uh, dare we say a confidence-boosting win for the reigning premiers, but uh, at 0-3, it probably fits that category. Well played. Thanks, boys. Appreciate it. Strange to say it, but they needed a confidence booster, didn't they? They did, and, you, you know, you... It's funny, this game, sometimes you're only a one win away from actually the, the table's turning, aren't you, Matty? And, you know, they lose this and they're 0-4 and, and then there's more micros, you know, the, the microscope's right on them. But the way they played from the from the get-go, I know they had that arm wrestle with, with Brisbane and Brisbane are a great side and they showed their, their true colours in that second quarter. But for Collingwood to finish off the way they did, they've really lacked that in the first start of the, the start of the year. Uh, GWS, you know, ran away with it in the second half. Sydney ran away with it in the second half. Haven't been able to, you know, St Kilda did it to them last week. And and for the way they finished off tonight would give them, the whole group, uh, tremendous confidence. I, I, I could give the score again, but the one that Collingwood fans want to hear, 85 tackles to 53. I mean, you can, in a sense, the, the margin is one... Thing, Matt, but the question wasn't whether they could win. The question was whether they had, had the hunger, had the appetite. And, and look, it's only one game of footy, and it's a foot, game of footy where they're in strife at 03. But if that can be if that can be replicated, it's a pretty good starting point to to remember that you, every season starts at naught. Exactly right, and, and in the end, what what our game comes down to, as you heard Tom say, that the coach stripped the game plan black and, yep. and takes it away from your structures and your position and your run and all those, strip it back, we're easy to play against. That's what Collingwood have been in the first three rounds. We're easy to play against. And uh, difficult at times, but not for long enough. Tonight, apart from the second quarter, they were very hard to play against. And they, then their talent and all their structures and all that stuff comes on top of it. But when you strip it back, so now for the review, it's radio play. We talked about stripping it back. This is what it looks like when you do this. Then you get the outcome. Then they can build from that if you have the basis of that hunger. And that'll be determined, can they bring that hunger next week in Adelaide against Hawthorne and then the week after that and get some momentum rolling. But it, it, sometimes it's a complicated game. Sometimes it's very uncomplicated. And tonight, Collingwood showed that. And we spoke about it at half. Rainey kicks that goal on the siren, half-time mm. siren. And we spoke about it off air. Oh, uh, yeah, Brisbane's got this now. They came out. They Collingwood showed us why they are the reigning premise. And they their third quarter was outstanding. And they also showed, I mean, Lockie Neal had 35 possessions tonight. 
But they just went at him. And outside of Lockie Neal, the question continues to be, against the good teams for Brisbane, who's going to stand up in the midfield? If it's not... Lo- and poor old Dane Zorko at 35 years of age, a guy that took a while to get a contract for this year, he's still the guy that's doing most of the heavy lifting to keep them in these big games. And it, it even... Like the, the tactic is so blatant to a point. You've got a guy like Scott Pendlebury blotting his, his copybook and, you know, whacking a guy in the guts to, to take the wind out of him. But I think also that the tactical side of those stop plays where Mason Cox... Lockie Neal likes it in and under. All of a sudden, he's turning around the other way because Mason Cox was hitting the ball out of that centre circle, or those stoppages. And I felt that that was a really strong tactic tonight. Uh, it's something I've never seen from him for a, while, for a long time. Uh, and I, I thought that that matchup with Oscar McAnoon was going to be a cracker. And it turned out to be in favour of Collingwood. It worked out that way. But, yeah, you've got to get other synergies right around the ground. But I thought Zorko was great off half-back. And they, they've used him so many times in the past about that. And, and 30 possessions for yeah, Zorko and, tonight. And he filled in for Coleman. He's, you know, we know with that, with the injury and stuff like that. But, um, you know, they just, uh, I don't know. what. I think it's still the tall forwards, you know. Okay, for the forwards tonight, what have we got? Danaher, eight touches, one goal. Hipwood, eight touches. Uh, did he score tonight? No. 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 Um, and Charlie Cameron, 11 touches, one goal, three. And full credit to the Bucks, Collingwood. Yeah, and, yep. and, and that second quarter, I forget. I don't know if you can get it, the stats up a channel, just the second quarter mm-hmm. cue, but if the, the inside 50s that Brisbane had, you know, they had 56 for the game. Um, so, And they had 30, 21 of them in that second quarter, 21 so to 2. 35 for the rest of the game. And when they're playing three tools, that, that's not enough supply, not enough damage to be done. And, uh, and Collingwood then took advantage of that. OK, if you arm wrestle, we're not going to allow you to have the dominance that you had in the second quarter. And then that came unstuck when you talk about the possessions of the tools they weren't able to have enough contests and ability to impact the game because apart from the second quarter there wasn't enough inside 50s there so that bit them on the backside a little bit and that's a credit to to collingwood's pressure all around the ground that we well, mentioned quite you, a few you spoke about that. it in the in, um when the ball did go inside their forward fifth they couldn't keep it in there um yeah. uh, brisbane whereas on the flip side collingwood when it was a uh, uh, how many marks did harris andrew oh, look i don't think he had too many intercept marks tonight uh, if you Andrews, want to go, that's his strength. That's his one wood. He had seven marks tonight. Not sure how many were In a, yeah, intercept well, marks. But basically, that was one of the stories of the grand final where they played Frampton as the decoy. Yep, and yep. Andrews didn't get a go until really the last quarter of the game in the grand final. It wasn't quite the same tonight. Yeah, but then you put Frampton down back, who played but, outstanding on, on Danaher. But isn't it coaching done, 101? Yep. Take away the one wood of your opposition. Collingwood know how to neutralise Lockie Neal and neutralise Harris Andrews. Yep, yep. And they, they keep doing it. And the Bigs did a fantastic job. You know, they won't... My check and when Cox and Darcy were down there, they won't get a stat for it. But what it actually allowed for is the Elliots. You know, the Bobby Hills, the, the Lockie Schiltz, McQueary. When he hit the ground, they were straight onto it. You know, what about a tackle that Elliot laid? Yep. On Zorko. Start of the last Just game. a balance, you know, to, to hey, I'll, hey, I'll trust you to, to, to match him. I'll hold him. He's my defender. And we'll force a kick. If not, we'll tackle him. It's just brilliant balance inside 450. You can keep your uh, messages coming on 0437 774 774. Jack and Jesse are travelling um, on the road. Enjoyed the commentary. Dang it, Brisbane. Zorko coverage so good. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> And I think that's more of of a concern for Brisbane that Dane Zorko is the guy standing up in these games. Surely hasn't he done enough? Question without notice, gentlemen. Zorko is often the barometer for Brisbane. Is it because he, for his size, has the most mongrel in him? And is that the secret ingredient of the herbs and spices missing out of Brisbane? Well, there is a, te- a little bit of mongrel. They're a team without chilli, aren't they? Mm. To put it mildly. What's your what's your thoughts, Jim? I, I think I think the connection through the through the through the back half and through the midfielders, you know, they played in the premiership last year. They're a really good side. For me tonight, and I think so far this year, it's just a connection inside Ford Fifty. Um, you saw it with Melbourne last year. We were able to win it, and then our connection inside Ford Fifty wasn't there. There was a few times there they got the ball, they took a mark inside Ford Fifty, but Lincoln McCartney's having to set shot from the boundary line. 
So what's their work rate like? How are they working together? Are they working in synergy? We didn't see enough of that tonight, did we, Pricey? We're, you know, kicking off the line because there was no options. And, yet that's also Collingwood's ability to zone off and defend really, really well. But also, I think their work rate together. They've got to try and tidy that up a bit. Collingwood, 14 goals, 892. Brisbane, 10 goals, 12, 72. A bit of a seesawing game. Until the last quarter, all the goals were kicked at one end. Uh, Collingwood by four goals at quarter time. Brisbane by five points at half time. The Magpies by 20 points at three quarter time. And that was the winning margin in the end. Both teams kicking four goals, two in the last quarter. So Collingwood has Hawthorne at the Adelaide Oval next week. Yep. And Brisbane plays North Melbourne at Norwood Ooh. in the so-called gather round, which is more of a spread around because they're <laughs> sort of spread around all over the place in, uh, in Adelaide. In the uh, NBL tonight, we're going to game five in the grand final series. Melbourne United has beaten the Jack, beaten the Jack Jumpers 88 to 86. So game five Sunday. And uh, in the NRL... Penrith 22, defeating the Sydney Roosters 16. Um, now, just I'll go through the rest of the individual numbers. So Nick Dacos ended up uh, leading the way for Collingwood with 30 disposals. 24 for Tom Mitchell, 24 for John Noble. Really happy to see John Noble. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, we've got a little bit of a soft spot. Obviously, David spent a lot of time here, one of the great guys in footy and he was one of the hard luck stories last year. John Noble, what, played yeah. 23 games, I think, and, and missed the grand final. Um, so uh, he, he had 24. Pendlebury with 21. What does he get? Hip pocket lighter for the, the whack in the guts on, on Loggy Neal? Yeah. Yep. I, I think the AFL set a precedent. And there's been two of those punches this year. There was Loggy Neal's one. Yep. And there was... Wasn't there a Carlton player, but it was a slip? Uh, yeah, there was one early in there Come where they, the shoulder? they both gave that fines to. So I yeah, think yeah. they've set their precedent that it's going to be a fine. So, yeah, they don't want it and you've got to stamp it out by giving a suspension or yeah. or you, you set the precedent of a fine. And if it becomes a pandemic of it all, then you probably have to do something else. But Yeah, but and that's... Yeah, they, they, they had the chance to, yep. to really... Set the agenda straight Set up. the agenda. And you've got to... You know, game's on the line, and you got a midfielder. If you open palm him into the into the guts and only get a week, and you don't even you don't even get a week, um, just see if we've got more. Uh, actually, we we can hear from him because he spoke to Channel 7's Abby Holmes after the game. So let's give you this uh, audio of Scotty Pendlebury. Pendle's a little bit of a love love tap with Lockie Neal there. Do you think there's anything to worry about in that one? Yeah, well, he said he got a fine for a similar thing afterwards. After the game, I said sorry to him. I didn't mean to get him quite there. And he said he did it last year and got a fine. So uh, what will be, will be. Retaliate always gets caught. Mum told me that and I got sucked in tonight. Well, you, you hit him in the guts and you slowed down a midfielder in a tight game. I didn't mean to hit him there. I wonder where oh. he meant to get him. I told her. you I could read lips. He did apologise to him. He, he, yeah, he literally did walked up and during always the game. Always happens after the game, yeah. It, it, it's going to be a fine. Yep. Yeah. Simple. But what Matty said... But the thing is, I mean, there's... Uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead, Jim. Well, well, what Matty said about the fact that, yeah, that's uncharacteristic by Pendlebury, but it just shows you how important this game was for the Collingwood Football Club. The players, um, they had a, a real... Which shows you how exploitable the... The AFL match review system is. Yeah, in, in saying that. But I think for him to to, to do that, um, you know, they were tuned in tonight. They were tuned in. Oh, they wanted it. They And they showed that they wanted it. And again, you said it before the game, Matty Primus, as the, well. Everybody's at the elite the, level and their skill level's that far. It's the want. Let's let's go. I, I just wanted to, to try and dissect this a little bit for, uh, more. So... Are we now dealing with an AFL match review system where the difference between a clenched fist and, a, and an open palm into the solar plexus with force off the ball? You can do that with your palm and get a fine, or if you do that with your fist, you get a week. Oh. That is the dumbest set of circumstances if that's what we're living with, and I think that's what we are living with. Well, if you're... you're hitting with the fist in the guts, that's a week. But because he didn't use a clenched fist, I mean, we are getting played by these guys. The game is getting played by these guys if the difference between the sanction is a clenched or open fist. Well, I mentioned that, and the, the, we had someone text in and say, yep. "What's like?" It, that's what I exactly, exactly what you're saying, and I reacted to that. 
That's a still a hard part of the uh, body, that, that base of your palm there. Absolutely. If you cop one. 100%. So. But he's 10 metres off the play. That's yeah. the point. Miles off That's the play. That's the point. And, and takes the player out of the next couple of plays That's because he's, yeah. it was well directed right in the spot where it wended him. Yep. But, yeah. I, did, I, I know we've, we've spent the week talking about, you know, Other Peter in? Wright running into yeah. um, Harry Cunningham, Cunningham. Yep. And, and getting four weeks. But at the same time... You know, but then Lockie Neal... And with, I, I say this so. with the greatest respect to Co- Scott Penderoy, who I call, you know, the Hall of Fame legend in Lovely. waiting. Yes. We love him. He's yep. an absolute champion. But he's smart enough to know the difference between what's going to get him a week and what's going to get him a fine. Yeah. And if the difference between a week and a fine is opening his palm, that's a bad system. Yes, that's a system that can be played. Yeah. Not a good week for the AFL and their systems. <laughs> mm. Really. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, where was I up to? The stats. Um, Pendlebury had 21, by the way. Dacos, 20. Uh, that was Josh. Dugowie, 18. Howe, 17. For Brisbane, Neil, 35. Zorko, 30. McCluggage, 29. Dunkley, 26. Rainer, 21. And 20 each for Bailey and Berry. So, overall, Brisbane had 37 more disposals. They had 13 more inside 50s. They had... Eight more clearances, but kicked 10, 12 to 14, 8. It'll be interesting with those individual stats who Whitey gives his votes to. Well, the connection of the inside 50 was a very, very good point from you two about Brisbane. They've they've won more of the ball. You know, the only stat that they really got beaten on was was the tackles. Collingwood 85 to 53, and that's the big number we've been talking about. Collingwood's tackled their way into their premiership defence. Collingwood... Converted shot at goal accuracy that 43 inside 50s that they had 20, into 22 shots at 51.2 percent. Wow. The Lions went at 37.5 percent with 21 shots out of 56. The AFL average is 43, so the Lions well down on that, and Collingwood well up on that. Yep. And then they're not been able to mark the ball, Brisbane this year in yeah. inside 50, as Whitey mentioned before. But that's been a story of their first three weeks, and then when the ball's hitting the ground. It's bouncing out of there. Apart from the second quarter, it's bouncing out of there, and that's what happens in the first two weeks too. Yeah. So they're the areas they need to, to fix up on. That's what's costing them games. And, and Cheryl's texted in. Yeah, so Quentin Harley, she texts, Lockie Neal dropped easily after Pendle's open-hand slap, and you failed to mention that. Mm-hmm. Who is this commentator? Very biased and unlike ABC objective. No, I'm, I'm being very objective. It's, it's what happened in the game. And, you know, it, the, the question is not so much, you know, we're, we're not questioning Scott Pendlebury, if anything. No. We're lauding the smart man, knowing the system. The question is about the system. Yeah, does, the AF, does the AFL, and, you know, we might say a jumper punch or a love tap is soft. You know, people argue that, but does the AFL want to be viewed that that's a part of the game? Well, yes, does, no. does the AFL want to accept that a palm into the stomach with force is different to a fist into the yep. stomach with force? Mm, yeah. And that's their, their decision. Where they can have the whole... I know it's sort of based on, uh, you know, what, medium or, you know, low, medium or high impact, where it's all happened. Yep. And, and the, But I don't think there is a, a natural sort of... It's almost been written out of the rules, but it, it, it hasn't fully. Anyway. Yep. Yeah. Be, but yeah. thanks for your text, Cheryl. Yeah, it's just, uh, it, it's just an interesting one, uh, particularly with the way that the game continues to look at uh, key midfielders and, and the, the, the tactics of, of taggers and, and, yep. and so forth. Hasn't been a lot of, a lot of, a lot of tagging this year so far mm. in most of the games I've seen. A lot of yeah, be interested to see what run, Sam run Mitchell with. does next week because he, he started off last year, didn't he? Or at the end of the year, who did he put from Hawthorne Mitchell last year and just tagged Dacos? Yeah, the whole time. Out yeah, of the yeah. game and I really like the way they use Dacos. They start him in the middle, then he went on the half back okay. line, then he went wing. back in the middle, and then he was yep. on the wing. So used him really, really well tonight, Collingwood. Uh, kick the kick still going on here at the Gabba. Might I say that one of the mm-hmm. security guards here at the Gabba, when one of the young gentlemen from the school end actually jumped the gun, jumped the fence a little early and started heading into the middle, you would have wished that this fellow was at the Adelaide Oval last week because dead set, he's taken <laughs> off. It was a 100-metre sprint. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the young fellow who was only 20 metres away from the fence almost got jagged. 
by the security guard. So whoever he was, the blonde one, sign him up and send him down for <laughs> gather round. Gather round. <laughs> they need that in Adelaide. <laughs> they can literally run into the hills at the spread around. Good actually. point. Good point. <laughs> Depending on where you're playing. Well, right. there's a there's a few games playing in the hills at the spread around, aren't they? <laughs> um, tomorrow's football. North Melbourne plays Collingwood. Fremantle plays Adelaide. Uh, the Good Friday game under the roof. The Kangaroos are unchanged despite their loss to Fremantle. Carlton bringing in three big names. Elijah Hollands, uh, Jacob Wiedering and Caleb Marchbank coming back in. So Lockie Young and Brodie Kemp have been dropped. Uh, David Cunningham's out with a calf injury. So three changes for the Blues, no changes for North. And for the game out uh, west, no changes for the Dockers. Uh, for Adelaide, James Borlase and Lockie Scholl come in. For Sam Berry, who's been dropped, and Jordan Butts, who has an ankle complaint. Uh, is it time for the votes? I think it is, before we get into... Uh, yeah, Other Jeff. matters across the weekend. No, Jeff White, no, Matt you're, you're, Hold on. You got the pen out. So our dueling ruckman, one always takes the tap, the other goes hiding in the forward pocket. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, who's, rotate, who, rotate. who's hiding in the pocket tonight? Uh, oh, yeah. Jeff, Jeff's hiding in the pocket. Jeff, yeah. Jeff's gone down forward for a rest and Matt's, Matt's at the coal face. Yes, and normally I, I'm, I'm not into the numbers um, as much, the, the, the impact on the game, but I, I, I'll give one vote uh, to Mitchell. I thought... His ability, yes, he, he's an inside, and sometimes he quite often gets subbed out of Collingwood games when the game's turning into a running game. But I thought he was really influential tonight um, when the game, when they, Collingwood had to win dirty, and he loves that style of play. I thought he was outstanding in the clinches. I gave two to Zorko. Um, I thought he, he rebound off half back, his ability to keep trying and penetrating and, and running and carrying the ball, and also defending when he had to defend really hard because he had quite a few ball coming his way. I gave him two votes. And I, I thought Dacos, not not because he had the 30, but I thought the way he used the ball, um, Whitey mentioned, he kept on changing up his position all the time. And in the second half, he gave a bit of class to Collingwood's toughness inside. Nikos or Jacos? Uh, Nikos. Nikos. And I want to do, give a special mention. He had a lot of pressure yep. on him this, this week, to oh, yeah. I thought to, he had, uh, I think he had 10 contested possessions. Didn't have the massive stats that he normally has yep. and stuff. But the way he played tonight was outstanding for the pressure that he was under all week. And uh, a quick shout-out to, to Goey. Yeah, Elliot's second half was, was outstanding. In the yeah, their forward line was really good, uh, my check. And yeah, and uh, they, they had you know their small forwards early when they are on fire, kept them in the game also. But uh, yeah, I thought those three were the most influential guys on the ground. Yeah, and, and interesting that Dane Zorko gets the two votes. Uh, first time that we've seen him... Uh, playing that role since Kitty Coleman went down, obviously played out west. But there's a there's a problem for Brisbane, as I say. If if Lockie Neal and Dane Zorko are still the two guys that need to, you know, the, the questions are start are going to start to come more of a guy like Hugh McCluggage to step up, or whether that's just his role. Josh Dunkley, Zach yep. Bailey, uh, Zach Bailey, Cam Rayner. Yeah, you know the, the, the this was the group that dare we say it, the football world expected the natural improvement to see Brisbane take the next step from getting to the last dance to winning the Cup. And on a night like tonight against the Premiers, those guys were lacking. And this is where, you know, you spoke to him before we went on, we went, uh, before the game, Ashcroft. Will Ashcroft, gonna, yeah. Gonna, Who, by the way, is targeting a mid-season return. Yeah, so... His ACL. And you're not going to expect him to have 20, let alone 30 possessions when he first comes back, but he's just going to add that extra spite and he's so clean with his hands in the middle and... You know, we'll add, uh, you know, that rotation with Lockie Neal, give him a bit of a breather. Mm. Uh, game you're looking most forward to for the rest of the uh, the weekend? I'll go through them. So, uh, North Carlton tomorrow, Frio Adelaide, Essendon and St Kilda on Saturday, then Port v Melbourne. I reckon that's the one mm. for me, Port versus Melbourne. Uh, Doggies versus West Coast, Richmond versus the Swans. And the Hawks Geelong on Easter Monday is always good. Oh, there's but a, I think Port, Port versus Melbourne, that's the, after, after tonight, which was the sort yes. of the big one to st- set us up, I think Port Adelaide versus Melbourne was the other big one, really yeah. big one of the weekend. Absolutely. Well, yeah, you, you, you correct you. Even Fremantle, Adelaide's a big one. Fremantle continue yeah. their win streak and Adelaide could be zipping. Well, uh, after the coach has been re-signed, they could be 0-3. 0-3. Adelaide. But and yeah. Longmuir signed their, ca- uh, Fremantle signed their coach. And that yeah, and that's, that's a <laughs> yeah. good contrasting story, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah. the other one, I, the other one I'm looking, yeah, of course, uh, Port Melbourne, but um, after the way Hawthorne played last week against Melbourne, 
the scrutiny they've been under, and Big Hawks three fifty uh, on Monday. Easter Monday, yeah. Actually, Easter, that that game is always a cracker. Even the doesn't Haw- matter where they are on the ladder, that game is always a cracker. The Hawks' first two weeks have been disappointing. Yeah, uh, they're under the pump. Yeah, yeah. So you would think Sam Mitchell have something. Well, the way that they sort of moved the ball was so weird against Melbourne in the they first went so, quarter. They went wide. We forced them wide, oh, but they went wide. We being wide. Melbourne, Jeff. Yeah, we. <laughs> <laughs> I was cheering, of course. But, um, yeah, Melbourne forced them wide, and they they just didn't have the targets down the line to, to you know, to hold it in their forward line. They spent too much time attacking Clayton Oliver off the ball. They should have concentrated on getting the agate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, thanks for your time, gentlemen. Plans for the rest of the weekend? Uh, going to see my dad, actually. He was listening tonight. Oh, lovely. Hi, Dad. Gazza. Uh, going to see him at Russell Island for Easter. Okay. Good. Nice. Enjoy. And thanks for your thoughts, too, on on Kalani as well. It's an interesting time with, you know, Sean Smith coming out and saying he'd wonder, you know, it's obviously the story of his his boy, but, yeah, your uh, your openness was, was much appreciated, Jeff. No. What about you, Matt? Southport, they got a week off or they're doing something? No. Footy? A couple of trailer loads of soil on my grass tomorrow. Oh, well, here uh, we go. Yeah, then, Easter, we, Easter chores. Yeah, got to, then I've got plenty of chocolate after that. And then, yeah, we're playing Saturday against Werribee. Um, so that's our one. And then some more Easter eggs Sunday and Monday and watch lots of footy. Yeah, okay. Well, enjoy. Thank you. I will. Matt Primus and Jeff great White, Easter. always great to have uh, their company. What about you, Pricey? Uh, just uh, chocolate eggs and a little bit of sleep, mate. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically it, and more footy. Watch the Blues tomorrow? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, great to have Michael Price alongside me. I was saying, oh, we, yeah, we've, got, yeah. we've got some more footy to work across Look at the that weekend. Oh, 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 hold on. I've just turned around, and there's a blinding light that's hit me. <laughs> it's the it beam from Zane Bojack's face. <laughs> he was he having it. just been in the Collingwood room. He, it wasn't as dark as he was before <laughs> the game. Oh, he's smiling. He, 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 you could, you could hear this, like, <laughs> coming up the corridor when he came into work today. Now we'll be tiptoeing through the tulips back to the car park. Oh, you're going to love it, Jamie. And Jamie Elliott kicked four goals for you too, ain't I? Oh, that's his, he's his favourite. <laughs> he's his favourite. Uh, thanks to Aaron back in the studio, to Aussie on the faders here, and to you for your company. Uh, stay safe across this Easter weekend. We will be here throughout with the footy. Two games to bring you tomorrow. North versus Carlton. Fremantle versus Adelaide. But the Pies keeping their Premiership defence flickering here. It was an important night for them. Collingwood winning by 20 points. They're 1-3 and three, and the Lions are now 0-3. Good night from the gather. To Goey Rose to Collingwood pumps them inside 50 for the first time and it's the grand final tormentor again. Bobby Hill marks 20 metres out. His hair could light up the night. We might need it at the Gabba. Bobby Hill kicks the opening goal. Jared Berry kicks to the top of the goal mouth and McInerney first hand for the mark. But Rayner Rose and snaps over his shoulder to kick the answering goal for Brisbane. Clever little tap for the run of Noble. Got around Wilmot. Had a ping from 40. Top of the square hill. Bobby Hill again. He's taken the mark. The Norm Smith medalist. They'll be having nightmares about him north of the border. For his third goal. Pops it through. The pies are on on Easter Thursday night. Who will be, fortunately, remembered on grand final day. For a couple of 50-metre penalties that he gave away. Doesn't go for goal here. Hacked out of mid-air inside 50 at the feet of Darcy Cameron. He gathers. He's tackled. That's holding the ball. It will be a free kick to Brisbane. 45 metres out, more or less, directly in front. Cam Rayner traverses the 50. Cam Rayner puts the Lions in front at half-time by five points. That is a 29-point turnaround from quarter time. They have kept the pies scoreless. Zorko, little nine iron cut off there by Darcy Moore. Not the distance. The handball into the corridor. Dugowie, Noble into the centre. Under pressure now, McCreary. Now running up to half forward from 55, McCreary. He goes through and goes all the way. Pies back in front by a point early in the third quarter. Dugowie Rhodes. Hand passes to Mitchell, 55 out. Hand pass to Elliott, 45 out. Elliott shoots and scores! And the Magpies! The Magpies have kicked five goals to one in the third turn. Bouncing ball, Hoskin Elliott first to meet it for Collingwood. Tap to his own advantage. Oh, and then from 60, curls a brilliant kick onto the chest of Elliott, who marks in the left forward pocket, 30 out. Opens up the angle, Elliott. Curls it perfectly. He's got two in a row. The Pies lead by 20 points. So now 
the questions will turn on Chris Fagan and his lines. The beaten grand finalists are 0 and 3. But the Magpies, for the first time since grand final day, can sing the song at the end of a game of footy. They came north with their premiership defence on tenterhooks. But they'll go back to Melbourne full of gusto, beating the Lions by 20 points. Side by side, they stick together to uphold the magpie's name. See the barricades are shouting as all barricades should. This summer, have a safe one by learning your ABCs. A is for action plan. Having an action plan means you know what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. B is for be safe. Be aware of the hazards you may face in the local area. C is for connect. Connect to abc.net.au slash emergency for the latest emergency information. During an emergency, listen to your local ABC radio station.